Welcome back for a second consecutive race day here at Sepang Circuit. Another four hours of Sepang in this deja vu four hour double header <laughs> series, Ollie. Round two of the Asian Le Mans series will be getting underway in just about half an hour's time. Uh, we come to this race, though, Ollie, after real action, real drama at the end, weather related drama yesterday. Yeah, it was. It was action packed, actually, right from the word, from lap one, turn one. We had some incidents, multi-car accident there, turn one into turn two. Did take a couple of the GT runners, the hotly contested GT class. A couple of key runners were taken out almost on the spot, which is a great shame. The GT class was pretty much dominated by the Audi yesterday. They've had a little bit of an adjustment, though, for today. And um, I think we're going to go to the calendar here. Sorry. We are. Well, well, here we are. This is the second round here in Malaysia. Uh, great to be back for the first time since pre-COVID in 2020. Uh, so round one done and dusted. Round two it takes place in just 30 minutes time. And after that, we go for a triple header in the UAE. One race in Dubai and then a literal double header in Abu Dhabi, Yas Marina. So before we get under race action, let's take a look from on board one of these GT cars. And Oli takes us around a fast lap of Sepang Circuit. With the Aston Martin Vantage GT3 here at Sepang, 15 turns, coming down here into turn one, hard on the brakes, ABS working really hard through turn one, about 60 k's mid corner. Then looking to flick it back left here for turn two, gonna need to get a good run off of here as you drive up through this long sweeping right hander through turn three, winding away uphill into the brake zone into turn four, which is aided by this elevation, hard on the brakes, have to spot the apex curve there on the right, but then be careful of track limits here on the left, a little bit of a bumpy exit curve there as you drop down here, downhill here to turn five, sweeping through left, and then setting up for right, you've just got to be careful, a little bump there on entry, apex curve, and then being careful of track limits on exits, winding down into turn seven here, very tricky corner, got to thread it through, be careful of track limits on the exit of both seven and eight, running off there all the way up into the top of fourth gear, and then hard on the brakes down to about 60 k's an hour again. Careful of that apex curve there, that's bumpy, unsettles the car, power down, early short shift there through turns 10 and 11. These Michelins are really screaming by this point, really loaded up, a lot of tyre degradation here. Just sweeping through down into turn 12, fast left hander. A little bit of apex curve there, I've got to be careful track limits on the exit. And then another very tricky long right-hander braking and turning at the same time. Spotting the apex here very nicely at turn 14. Really good runoff of there. Getting the power down nicely, very smoothly. Working your way up through the gearbox. And then thinking about spotting your brake point for the all-important turn 15. Very tricky to get this corner right. Hard on the brakes, it's off camber. It's a wide entry and then slingshot on your way off and through. Great traction there, a little bit of exit curb, and that's finishing a lap here at the Sepang Circuit. That was the action around Sepang Circuit from Ollie, and uh, that was in full dry conditions. We didn't get that yesterday. Cars now on the grid. Now, Galapier there from Cool Racing, and the Pure Racing crew uh, getting ready to go as well. Well, here we are. have that lap that we've just seen on board. It's split into three sectors, and this first sector is predominantly straight, and then that heavy braking into turn one and winding through turn two, and then into three. And then you head uphill in that second sector, uh, which is predominantly that, uh, that turn four, and then the faster sections of five and six, and then through into it coming into seven. But that sector there is, is dominated really by that turns five and turn six, losing the downforce of all of these cars have, whether that's in GT, P2 or P3. We've seen quite a lot of action there as well in that turn section of five and six. But then the final section, this is really where you're working those Michelins very, very hard. Certainly at turns 10 and 11, you're really loading up that left side and then you have a short break as you come down into that left-hander of turn 12. But then you're asking a lot of the tires as you brake hard for that 13, 14, and then before you head off down 14 into 15, uh, that short, uh, long acceleration down there before heavy braking into turn 15. 
And uh, certainly this is a challenging track and one that we saw a lot of action on, uh, quite a few incidents, but I think it made for great racing. It does. I mean, Sepang Circuit uh, does seem to suit uh, mixed class racing. It's delightful to be back. I know the circuit and the local fans here are delighted to, for, that we are back. It is, of course, free to get in today. Uh, if you're local to Sepang Circuit, come along. Free tickets uh, are on offer. Come along and watch the Asia Le Mans series this afternoon, as well as F4 Southeast Asia. Dorian Pan just took a win. Oh, she did. She did from the Iron Dames uh, this afternoon. Wonderful stuff from there. Uh, that turn 12, 13, 14 combination, that's caused problems both in the dry and in the wet. Yes, yeah, certainly has. We saw it in qualifying that we saw a, a number of GT cars just running a little bit too wide there at turn 12, and that fired them off to the left um, and, and caused some problems in qualifying for them. But then he also in in the racing trying to everybody squabbling over that little bit of tarmac there at 13 and 14 multi-class racing is tough in that section of racetrack yeah down on the grid now pure racing uh, and there Porsche 911 GT3 R remember GT3 spec GT cars from here on in in ATO rules racing either in pure GT3 spec as we've got here in the Asia Le Mans series and with a new LM GT3 spec we'll explain that as we go on this is the Herbeth Motorsport car one of the two cars Ollie was talking about earlier on uh, they were in trouble at turn one two and Terrace out really unlucky yeah. to come along somebody else's accident uh, yeah I think that they were really in with a really very strong shout yesterday in GT but yeah, Bill Bamber there on the right-hand side. Indeed, Ron Reichert from the uh, AMR, uh, the agent in Southeast Asia here, but he's also, by the way, the team manager, of course, uh, Ferrari in European and global competition. But uh, Earl here with not just uh, in his role as a driver, but also as a team owner yep. with two of the EBM Porsches and uh, both in action this weekend. Barton Brothers on the number nine get speed car. Another car that was strong yesterday and they just... Uh, sort of faded away a little bit towards the end there. I think they might got caught out with the rain and uh, some of the conditions and also the safety cars when they were coming out and full course yellows. So the Mercedes AMG didn't quite deliver against the Audis, but it was certainly the second uh, most convincing package, wasn't it? Yeah. Julian Jerby uh, on the left, the team principal of Team Virage, but here with the uh, Breton Racing Squad and Michael Jensen it was on the right hand side there. Martin Conrad, Almanar Racing. And uh, yeah, he was strong yesterday. He was. He was. This is backing up his form from last season. Indeed. And this is what you're looking for in these early parts of these races is the strength of the bronze drivers. Oh, and there was yeah. no yeah. better example <laughs> of that. Perfect timing for the truck, thanks. Uh, Alban Ferruti, a well, number 42 car. Phenomenal. Well, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, at this breathtaking pace. Well, I, I, I was chatting to one of our, our Chinese media friends in, from BEC Motorsports uh, here uh, in Sepang. Great to see our friends there. 1.3 seconds per lap quicker than any other bronze driver on average. Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. Uh, quite astonishing. And right up there, by the way, because, of course, the weather interrupted and blunted the form of some of the pro drivers in the fastest laps overall in the race for Alban It was very impressive. This is the number seven car. It's the second car uh, that's fielded by Get Speed, this time uh, branded with Amanar Racing. And they, again, were in the hunt for a lot of the race they yesterday. absolutely and were. A little bit and right there with the Audis, but... Never quite had that pace. And now this car, the 37, the, uh, the Croft Bamboo car, they were caught up in that incident at turn one, lap one, and yeah, they've out a, on the spot. They've had a busy night rebuilding this car, I was told by um, the team last night. And Richard Lyons. It is managed. indeed. Richard Lyons. 12-hour repair to this car. Well, that's enough from us for the moment. Let's go down to uh, Claire Jedrek, third member of this team, to say welcome to Sepang. Hello, it's Claire Jedrick here down on the grid. It is dry. It is the Asia Le Mans series round two. All the action going down today. Now for the winners, for the prototype, we had 99 Racing as well as Cool Racing. And for the GT category yesterday, uh, amidst a lot of drama during the rain, we had Santa Lock. Well, make sure you catch all the action that is coming up soon. Stay tuned. So remember, uh, we are live. We're live on YouTube, live on the Sirius Facebook page and with our broadcast pa uh, partners around the planet. Good afternoon if you're here in Southeast Asia. Good evening, good night, and a very early good morning if you're uh, over in my home and Ollie's home in the UK. Uh, you are very welcome indeed to join us. It's five race series. Race two gets underway in just 20 minutes' time. Douglas Koo here. They had a troubled race yesterday, didn't they? They, they did. They had, had some, some trouble. Didn't quite make, they didn't make the finish, did they? Milton Jakobsen here. We talk quite a lot about this young man, and there's a good reason for that. He is spectacular. And uh, 
one of the coming stars in the world of international sports car racing. Nicolas Lapierre there just giving him some advice and yeah. just uh, having a quick chat with him. Yeah, he's been a great mentor in the last couple of seasons for Melter. Coming into another year and uh, with a Peugeot hypercar mm. team CD Sport. contract. Yep. CD Sport, they did a strong job yesterday. They faded towards the end, yep. but they were, they were right in the hunt for most of the race yesterday in LMP3. They were, and I think a lot of that came down to the, the order in which they took the pit stops. Uh, two pit stops per car will have to be for 100 seconds, a minute and 40 seconds on pit lane. And a lot of the ebb and flow, as well as her there, with his Cirque Paul Ricard hat on. He's a dapper chap, isn't he? he? Is. My kids have got a couple of hats like that. Have they? Yeah, they quite like them. I wonder if it's got the bucket and spade that goes with it. Uh, <laughs> Breton Racing and uh, great stuff from them on their LMP. Again, debut. another strong performer yesterday. It and they, they led for a while as well, didn't they? They did indeed. I mean, I think we had four of the five LMP3 cars actually took the lead of the race. Yeah, I point. know, exactly. Francois yeah, yeah, right. uh, right. uh Becoming one of the stalwarts of the gentleman drivers around the world. His first crack, yep. I think. I don't recall Francois doing the Asian Le Mans series before, but he's chasing a sixth major international sports car title just looking at the uh, in front of that uh, number 17 cool racing car that's george king in the uh, the uh, black t-shirt uh, george has actually donated um his helmet to Menea stefan in the breton racing car because Menea's helmet was out of date so george oh, wow. was here as a reserve driver but if we look closely when we see um Menea get into the car it's actually george's helmet they were teammates for team Farage in different cars in the Niger european series which was won by um, uh, the victors from yesterday. Indeed. Louis Delatraz was phenomenal in the mixed conditions and in the rain yesterday. Kept a very cool head when he was under massive pressure from Matthew Baxavier in that 83 car. Yeah, and, he, uh, yeah he did a phenomenal job. Broad smile on Louis' face, uh, what became a race of survival. There is our Icelandic racer, Morden Gubbinson, another man who led this and race. What's in his back garden? It's a volcano. As you do. Uh, I, I'm not kidding. It's, no. <laughs> it's not quite in his back garden, but when you look out of his, I've seen pictures from his, uh, from his, from his home, and it's not that far away, oh, wow. a sea of lava. And so I think he's hoping uh, that the home is still there when he gets back after this one. But uh, Terry Bouvet, the technical director of the ACO, responsible for the rules, and therefore <laughs> the least popular man on this grid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thierry is <laughs> that's a bit mean always open to a conversation um, and at times not open quite correctly to a debate <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know this make no mistake I mean sports car racing the the rules are complicated ARC Bratislava uh, ARC Bratislava I mean uh, it's American Opka uh, started his ninth season consecutive season of ACR rules racing and they were in, in the hunt really the way were Towards the end, they were they were not uh, they weren't out of it. You know, well, they were still they were still. Very young much Jonas there. Reed took a step yesterday. Uh, his form took a step here. This is it's Oliver Rasmussen, who will become a familiar name and face to WC mm -hmm. uh, watchers next season as he joins Hertz Team Jota. The gentleman in the wheelchair, by the way, was Gilles Duquesne, the name behind the Duquesne team. That. Uh, Oliver will be aboard. Nielsen Racing, they had a troubled start to the race. They got hooked up into that incident. Yeah, I went down and had a chat with the team um, earlier on, and they were really un unseated, let's say, by the incident that was uh, Ian Loggy got caught up with at turn one, turn two, and that really just took him out of the mix. And then it was getting back through the traffic, which was the biggest thing. Ian's first time in a P2 car, and here at Sepang. Yeah. Michael Dine in there had an excellent start to the race. It faded, didn't it, though, after that first pit stop? It yeah. looked to me that maybe the time management wasn't, the degradation wasn't what they were hoping for, the 90 car. John Falb really did put on a bit of a masterclass there. And there is uh, John Falb's car shared with Chris what? McMurray and Freddie Tomlin. Apologies, it's the car we used to drive. Absolutely. Uh, He's so in a decane, isn't he? He is in a decane. Yeah. Uh, Toby Sowery, uh, good to meet him for the first time at lunch today. Freddie Tomlinson uh, aboard that car with Chris, Chris McMurray. Yep. Yeah, and I had, a, had a good chat actually with Chris yep. about stuff, and uh, yeah, we can talk about that a little bit later on in the broadcast. But, uh, this is, though, race one winner, and uh, car will start from the fifth place of the grid today. Francois Perodo there, what, meeting with some guests and fans. What we've learned, though, Ollie, I mean, you've been with the series now through the uh, during and post-COVID years, uh, and the 
the depth of LMP2 through that period has just grown yeah, and grown. It really and has. Grown. And, and, and one of the big comments that I, I, I had from a number of drivers yesterday and team members was the, the strength in depth in, in really every class, and they're surprised by it. Yep. P2 for sure, GT is phenomenal. P3 is a little bit a uh, little bit down on the numbers from last season, but still it's very, very strong, and it's very difficult to pick a winner. It's competitive, P3. I think that's yeah. the point. It's a small but perfectly formed grid. Uh, GT, what can you say, it's 23 cars. That would be the McGrace grid just by itself for yeah. any series. And 11 P2 cars, and to be blunt, there's not a duffer amongst them. No. Um, they've all been competitive at some point or another. One or two of the cars that found themselves out of sorts yesterday, there was a good reason behind it. Yeah, it's, it's lineups that have got very little experience either here in Sepang or with P2 machinery, and that they're learning and learning and learning. I think Nielsen was, was very much in that boat. I think a 25 car, very much so. But, you know, when you look at, I mean, this is a 55 Proton competition car, and again, PJ Hyatt. Oh, great run from PJ yeah. yesterday. I mean, really was putting on the style. Uh, Paul Luke Chatham then took the fight, uh, trying to put this car back into the lead, lead in the order. And unfortunately, Harry Tinkle got the worst of the weather. He did. And uh, new dad Harry. Uh, well, he wouldn't have been expecting an early bath, but bath he got. <laughs> uh, but I think we could see that car shine yeah. uh, throughout this season it, as PJ it finds even if. It, if he learns as quickly as some of the guys have mm -hmm. in recent seasons, he, he was comfortable in this car. And that's the beauty of Those this merit. series. It's, it is the ability, you've raced on the Saturday and then you get the, to go again on the Sunday. And it's that back-to-back -back and the ability to be able to really learn very, very quickly and gather a lot of knowledge. Well, I'm sure Cool Racing uh, ex uh, LMP3 champion Mo Smith is watching because he's a firm fan of this. and uh, He loves it when I call him the LMS Santa. And Mira Konopka, I think, is Asia Le Mans Series centre <laughs> this year. This is George Kurtz uh, as he leans on the wing, looking very rugged there, George. He, did get, he was unlucky at that uh, turn one, turn two yesterday and got turned around. It's the management, Fred uh Stefan Mattel and Pierre Fion. Yeah. Reservoir dogs. Indeed, usual suspects. Any other film references you want to crowbar in here at any point? <laughs> Grid beginning to clear, drivers suiting up and climbing aboard and it's not going to be long just uh, 12 minutes till we get underway it, it will be two car uh, uh, laps behind the leading car in this era of no tire warmers Ahmed Al it yeah. will be to take the uh, the start for the 99 he racing had a, he had a pretty good run yesterday he but did. I think he was a little bit blunted it wasn't sort of the ultimate pace I think that we saw last no, season it wasn't and uh, you know I just wonder whether or not he's sort of taken one for the team to set the car up for the two quicker drivers it's possible and and, and you know he is highly skilled and somebody that can really handle that <laughs> he's got a lot of experience and he showed last year that he really is very very quick Jojo Roda showed well again uh, this time around Julian Anlow in that car starred for me. He was one yeah, of the stars of the was. show yesterday. But again, a car that's sort of struggled a little to maintain its form. They once it finished well, but... Once it got to that mixed conditions, just before it really started to tip it down with rain, Rennie Binder wasn't quite on that no. same level as Louis Delatraz and Matthew Baxivier. I mean, they were just, ne as I say, next level. It's great to see the 37 car back after damage yesterday. It will be, I believe, Anthony Liu who will start from pole position, by the way. Yeah, some tired fellas down there at, uh, and ladies down there at uh, Craft Bamboo. Yeah, and uh, just to remind uh, listeners and viewers that uh, times for this grid were set by the second fastest time in qualifying yesterday. So the quickest time set the grid for race one on Saturday. The second quickest time set the grid for race two. And that, the DKR car, also showed strongly yesterday, didn't it? It, it did was, indeed. Uh, it, and uh, Alexander Matchell did a nice job in it, kept but it clean. We did uh, mention yesterday there was uh, an investigation. I'll come to that when we get a moment. Uh, that that's, it didn't affect the overall result. They did get a five-second penalty for a bit of a whoopsie and a pit stop. This is the decaying team car, was in the mix for much of the race uh, yesterday. John Faub drove very, very nicely I, in that car. One of his best his, drives His of second late. stint in particular, yep. managing the tyre, really looking after the car nicely and just driving away. Uh, TF Sport, though, led the race and then faded. Uh, and <laughs> certainly didn't mean it was no lack of effort from Michael Dine and from, uh, from Sally Olich. Uh, Charlie Eastwood was left with a bit of a mountain to climb. Yeah, and I think that they had a little bit of an issue in Sally's second stint. And then I think when Charlie got in the car, 
uh, further issues came and then I think a car spun in front. Let's go Charlotte. through the starting grid, 39 cars to run through. Uh, so we'll start as always, if this graphic shows itself. And it's not going to. We're nearly there. I'm just going to take Please a breath. Hold. And there it is, the starting grid. So row one, the pole position car, we've started with Michael Dine in the 90 TS Sport car. The 30 Duquesne team for John Fowler, row two, Proton competition, alongside the third place car on the grid, Deco Engineering, it's Alexander Matchell and Giorgio Roda. Row three. And we pause, because they're very attractive cars. They're lovely looking. And that is the 99 racing car. Yesterday's race winner, Amadol Harty, starts the race. Crowdstrike racing by APR's number four car showed well uh, after the whoopsie at turn two. George Kurtz starts again today. I'm just admiring the liveries and. Uh, it's very orange and black livery type yes. thing. Proton competitions, 55 car PJ Hyatt for the United States and the startlingly liveried double green. Uh, Orica, Francois Perodo, uh, second place yesterday in the AF Corsa, number 83 car with his Breton flagged uh, car, they will start eighth. Proton car is a lovely, lovely shade of green. Uh, row five, Algar Pro Racing, Chris McMurray, uh, hoping for a better day yesterday. Uh, Chris was telling me he felt he, he struggled yesterday a little in the conditions. The LMS title winning squad, and alongside them, the Nielsen Racing 24 car. The 44 for IRC Bratislava will be Miro Konopka, and then the pole position car in LMP3, Odin Gubbinson from Iceland with high class racing. Cool racing, winners yesterday in P3, Alexander Bikantsov starts the 17 car with the Breton Racing number 26 with the Czech driver Dan Schottopola uh, alongside CD Sport last year's champions with Michael Jensen and Vibonisa Racing who retired yesterday after an accident for Josh Bird and Douglas Koo starts the race into the, the GTs. Crap Bamboo, 37 AMG with Anthony Liu. The 7 Almanar Racing by Get Speed Car, another AMG, Martin Conrad in 18th spot. 19th, Santalot Racing, yesterday's winners with the Mercurial Alban Veruti in the 42 car and then a third uh, AMG, the Get Speed Car with Steve Yance uh, starting that car. Herbeth Motorsports Porsche and Pure Racing's Porsche uh, occupied the next row and Tarasau and Alex Malikin in the 33 and 99 cars respectively and then Attempto Racing in the second uh, of the Audis on the grid, Andre Mukasov, and Team Project One with British GT champion Darren Young. James Cottingham, another British GT star in the 69 Optimum car, and then we get to the second of the Attempto uh, uh, Audis, then we trip the Triple H JMR and Santalot 43, Optimum and EBM. GR Racing and their new Ferrari alongside the Solo Lamborghini from Liepert, Project One's 56 BMW, AF Corsa's 21 Ferrari, D Station and their Aston Martin. In fact, an all Aston Martin row alongside with the 95 from TF Sports, and then Team Motor Park and the 82 uh, Ferrari from AF Corsa. And right at the back of the grid, uh, after missing qualifying, the 84 uh, EBM Porsche. They are underway, Ollie. The yeah. start of first two formation laps. They are rolling, and just a small challenge here is going to be that that right side of the grid, as we're looking at it, is uh, quite wet. And uh, that could present some ch some challenges for the guys as they come down to take the start here after these two formation laps. It's pretty typical here. We had some reasonable rain in the last hour or two, and it dries extremely quickly, apart from in the shade of that grandstand. And, and, and there's clearly no doubt in the tyre that everybody's going to needs to start on and will start on. But yeah, it just gives those drivers who are running over that side of the grid as they're coming down into turn one after they've taken the green that little sense of doubt and that sort of what's this going to do to the tyre and how's it going to be on the brakes into turn one so Michael Dynan again leads away this group it's Michael is the I think the only non-bronze driver in the class I and believe so yes bronze drivers as well in LMP3 just looking it is Keiko Salino again who will be starting at the back of the grid in the 82 car the other car that fell to set a time in qualifying after an incident uh, and they, they were running recently. extremely well, weren't they, yesterday? But then they struck a, a problem. I think it was after the full course yellow period, the car got stuck in gear and he had to bring it in, and then they had to have a whole series of resets in, in the pit box. Two other 
uh, drivers other than bronze ranked at the start of the race to watch for at the rear of the grid in GT. In 35th place, it's the 77 D station car. It's Tomino Bifuji. Fuji Sam will start the dark green as to Martin. Like he did yesterday. Indeed. And then the 56 Team Project 1 car, uh, that is the bright orange car that we'll see Sean Galeal aboard uh, later. That is Maxi Mustard. Yes. I think he got to grips of that pretty well yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, so three um, pro drivers uh, against a Marco field. Mabelli. Indeed. Yeah, great guy. Didn't get much of a chance to shine with the weather yesterday, did he, Marco? And actually, but I think if it stayed green, I think we would have seen him really challenging the Audis. It did look as if that uh, Lamborghini had something to bring to the fight, didn't it? And, yeah, uh, he was there, primed, ready to go, in coiled spring. Indeed. He looked in there. Oh, absolutely. Always does. Top pro, as many of these drivers are. This is a pro-am race with three pro-am formulas here in the Asian Le Mans series. Every single team must feel filled a bronze rated by the, the uh, FIA non-professional driver and for the most part they are the drivers that will be starting where there is still looming Ollie. It, it is and it's something that has been a, a, a constant sort of theme throughout this week that the weather <laughs> has been uh, always there and yesterday when it uh, we could see the clouds coming it, it building and building and building and then it really hit hard but um, yes it does pop up quite quickly here at times so, yeah, these teams really do need to be on their toes the whole time. Crews ready, drivers ready, and, uh, and engineering as well. So, yeah, let's see how we, uh, we go. But at the moment, it's dry, which is good. I think everybody would like a dry race. We don't, certainly don't want to see the amount of rain and, and water like we had yesterday, because uh, that's no fun, really, for anyone. Um, it's fun for a while, isn't it? But uh, the, the yeah, when it gets to that level, though, where there's it, so much standing water, it's I, just would, I would say it, it, they definitely made the right call to red flag the race. It was uh, it wasn't just a race, but it was undrivable uh, towards the end there. And uh, there's always a variety of opinions as to whether or not that should have happened earlier or later. The reality was we brought more or less everybody home. Indeed, indeed. Um, and the Michelin wet tyres were, were coping with it extremely well, but there's only so much that they can do. And at the end of the day, the result was. A good one, it was one on track. We were robbed a little from perhaps some of the late race action we were hoping to get. Yes, certainly that, that, that peak race in P2 and also in GT, it was sizing, really lining up nicely to be able to see that great competition between the, uh, the likes of Delatraz and Matthew Vazivier. Yes, I mean, that was uh, for me, that was the one major regret is that we didn't get a chance to see that battle completely mature. Yes. As the, the cars are now getting themselves prepared. The drivers will be working through their routine of getting everything up to temperature, the tyres, the brakes. The cars are coming here out of turn. It's, you know, coming down here into... I'm trying to pick, pick where that was on the circuit, actually. I thought that was into turn seven, but it's... No, it well, was, actually. It was coming down into turn nine. Race now. one yesterday, we saw Michael Dynan jetting off, but he seemed to suffer, Ollie, in the second... Uh, stint on the same tyres. Now I wonder whether or not we'll see maybe a little bit, bit more circumspect pace from Michael at the start of this race. Absolutely, they would have gone over the data, they would have looked at it and uh, they would have debriefed on everything, looked at how they could go about it slightly differently and uh, you know Michael was learning here, This is, it was, I believe yesterday was his first P2 race. Correct. So and, uh, yeah, it's learning all the time and that's what this series is, is so much of it is about, is, is drivers, teams, crews, really understanding maybe a new car that they're in or a new set of rules yep. or, in, or, or a, a new scenario and situation, new teammates. Yep. There's a lot of new. Right, pick up there at TF Sports, ex-team owner himself, the PK Sport days in the early part of this century. And not as many people at TF Sport would believe in the early part of the last century. The grandfather of TF Sport now, Mike. Coming down now towards turn 15, a corner with more lines of the TV screen. It's it certainly is a challenge. It's off camber. That's something yeah. that I think that everybody struggled with yesterday. And when the conditions changed, it was remarkable how many different lines people were trying to take. And there was also quite a lot of standing water on the entry, so Indeed. they had to catch a number of cars out. But we're dry right now, and we're getting ready for the green. So pretty orderly stuff. They're closer now as well. Yesterday's start, the GT cars were too far back, but they've got a, they've bunched up nicely now in the queues of two. And they're nearly ready for the green now. Pace will be controlled from this point forward by Michael Dine and the pole position man, Darrell O'Young. 
there at Craft Bamboo looking on as his car takes pole position in the GT class. Trigger fingers, trigger feet more to the point at the ready. We go green and Michael Dunn again gets a good shot here. John Farr this time a little further back, tried around the outside last time, it didn't work. This time he's taking a look up the inside. Is it last the late breakers? Not quite room there, but it's uh, neat and tidy for the first two or three rows. We look as the field compresses, a little bit of side-by-side -side action as the GTs get it in amongst the LMP3s here. Tricky turn two is the squeeze point, and indeed we've seen a car go around there. Yep, I'm unsure who that was, but it certainly has been nip and tuck, quite tight. It's got a definite feel yesterday of the first day of school, but today I think people are a little bit more sure of where to place their car. Viper Nisa's yeah. gone around. Oh, one of these guys got to catch a break. They had a really rough race yesterday as the P2 field streams into turn five, turn six, this high speed set of sweepers. Hopefully it didn't look like there was very much damage. I suspect just a bit of a tip into a spin or a run over the curbs of Douglas Coop, but it'll get that car back running. Prepared overnight with quite a nasty bump for Josh Bird with the car snapping left on him into the barriers in retirement. Michael Diner getting away again. No, he's, he, I think that he's just trying to be a little bit more circumspect. He's not uh, really trying to release the performance of the car immediately. And I think that he's he's trying to manage that tyre a little bit better than yesterday. Just keeping an eye, by the way, on the form and the progress of the pro drivers in this field. Keep an eye on that one, but certainly Kai Gosolino has already made up 10 places. Yeah, George Kurtz there with Ahmed Al Harty all over him. There is Left Kai. and right. Well, that's, sorry, that's not that's the damage of Franz Barrio at this point in the race. The light at Lamborghini looking up the inside and he's just about got the deal done, but you saw the front of the car squirm and he oh. spun. Yeah, he did. He's off to the right, driver's right, and that's... Uh... Oh, that was... He just... Cold tyres, not quite switched on enough. Got out there and on that exit kerb, on that kerb there at 12. And so we see the optimum car coming up the inside of the pure racing machine. That's, that's James Cottingham, who I did actually have a chat with just before. He's got that uh, place. He has, uh, and he was talking about how hot it was in the car. And McLaren, surprisingly, one of the only GT3 runners that doesn't have AC in their car. And I think that is something that could well be hurting their drivers here this weekend throughout this long four-hour race. The side by side down into turn one. James hasn't quite got the deal done, but I think he will get it done now. That inside line, this pure racing comes back at him, but I think he is going to get it. Oh, he's just run a little wide there, but I think he's secured the position as they run uphill now into the heartbreak zone at turn four, using the elevation here. We've seen the number seven car and the, the 56 of the 37 wheel to wheel. Good to see that Craft Bamboo car has made it through the first couple of laps unscathed. Albeit dropping down from its pole position, Martin Conrad takes the lead. The incident with Douglas Coote involved Martin Conrad, and that's being looked at. So he moves through into the lead of GT in the very early moments of this race. Michael Dynan leads the way for TF Sport from Duquesne teams, John Falb, Project Competitions, Giorgio Roda. High class racing, Jordan Goodmanson leads in the LMP3 class. It is Santalot Racing's album for Ruti. He's just, again, just taken off. Just bye-bye They have time. had a little bit of a, a bop adjustment, have they? Another yep. 10 kilos added to that car. But I don't think that's really going to slow him down that much. And I can see them just driving off into the distance again. It's like a family pack of baked beans that's been put in the car, basically. <laughs> so that's the sort of weight 10 kilos. Not gonna, that's not going to make the difference in terms of I was of wondering what you're referring to there. Wait, okay. I'm not saying Alban Ferruti has eaten a family pack of baked beans in any way. He was massively impressive. Because they could get pretty fruity inside the car, couldn't it? Yes, as we were saying yesterday, Ferruti was indeed quite fruity yesterday. Fastest lap of the race goes to Michael Dynan on lap two, and surprisingly, 155.8 is where we're at. Side by side here between the BMW 56. Houston, Houston is going to take that position and does so. And I think that that's the switch up in the driver lineups, and it's just enabled that 56 car really to start making progress to the front. And uh, I think that they are going to be challenging, possibly, possibly for the lead here, surely. Castellino, by the way, has just made his way uh, up the field now. Where is he? He is up into 23rd place, 8th in class, and making further progress. Now, Anthony, you under 
uh, pressure from the number nine car and the, uh, the BMW behind, so it's getting very busy indeed for the Kraft Brand boot car, but great to see them in competitive form today. It is, it is fantastic to see that. And, uh, uh, James Cottingham is going to have his, his mirrors full here of uh, Kei Casalino, and I think that he's going to be pressing him for that position very, very shortly. The track is uh, it really plunges downhill as we come into turn five, and that's something that these drivers will be dealing with. And certainly as they get further on into their stints, how that uh, tyre degradation, as you can see it here on the board with the 27 car, you're really loading that right side tyres and you switch back to the right hand and that really loads the left side tyres. Track limits just on the exit there of turn six is a big, big thing. There's track limits is also another big spot here on the exit of turn 14. A lot of drivers getting pinged for that yesterday, but this, this battle continues between George Kurtz and Ahmed Alharty. Ahmed Alharty's got him lined up, he's in the toe. Is he going to pop out as he comes down into turn 15? Not quite close enough. And this is this turn 15. George has got a little wide there. Yes. And is Ahmed Alharty going to get a better drive? But it's such a deceiving corner, that turn 15. Multiple lines can be taken, and it's very hard to take advantage uh, of somebody just running wide there. Yeah, George having a good start to this race. He had bad luck yesterday. Yeah, he did. Uh, the key for these bronze drivers, Ollie, uh, oh, and so often is not just the speed, but being error-free and consistent. The rest of the driving squad there, Colin Braun, really a very talented American who's uh, come over here with George Kurtz. And he's enjoyed, enjoyed the race yesterday. We're not sure he enjoyed the wet weather. Well, he wasn't in the, in the car for the, the wet weather, was he? Because that, was, uh, that, that ended up being taken over by his teammates. Did you hire a crack at uh, Francois Perodo? And this is CD Sports and the Breton Racing Car arguing over third position in LMP3. This is uh, Michael Jensen, head of uh, Dan Scosciapoli. Check uh, from that's that's the exit of turn turn six there. That's the problem for a lot of cars. A little bit of track limits, but this turn seven, turn eight is also an area. So it's the APR and the Nielsen car here. So Ian Loggy is trying to hunt down that 25 car, see if he can get by. He's had a, a far calmer start and a, and a far nicer start for for him and the and the Nielsen crew which I'm sure they'll all be appreciating down there. Just a little battle between the two. Chris McMurray coming back after some time away at this level uh, in LMP racing, and uh, Ian Loggy learning his trade. You know, very, very good in a GT car, far less experienced in LMP machinery. Yeah, we see Kai Cosolino has now made it up into fifth in GT, and he's closing very quickly on Anthony Liu in the Craft Bamboo 37 car. And I think it's not been too long before we're going to see him very close to the front. The car, by the way, making very good progress at this stage of the race is the car that was in big trouble yesterday, uh, taking a pass, a pass around when it shouldn't have done, getting a mighty penalty. Team Motor Park up into eighth place in GT, a new addition to ACO Rules Racing. We're used to seeing Team Motor Park in the likes of the International GT Open, where they've had some success, but uh, the German squad, very welcome additions here. It is uh, it's Lucas Duna. That's just changed. The driver name has changed between me looking at Tommy's screen five seconds ago. So driver identification uh, has changed on that car. Alexander Matchell's just uh, stretching his legs and getting away a little bit from George Kurtz. Can George just get back into that toe and be dragged along? Are these two sweeping left and then right, these turn five, turn six very quick in a p2 car and almost flat uh, just a little bit of a breather thing as you turn back to that that's turn six and the, we're seeing kai cosolino going past the anthony lou in the craft bamboo car getting it done for third spot uh, fourth at fourth, this stage excuse me fourth, 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 stage. fourth spot uh, so uh, rapid progress from kai cosolino what about fujisan he's uh, tenth uh, from far further back of the grid but uh, certainly the a pro driver that's making better progress at the moment is the Italian-Japanese, Kei Cotolino. We're seeing a bit of a calmer start to the race we than are. yesterday. It was that sort of first day back at school, everybody's a little bit nervous, didn't quite know where to go or what yeah. to do in that new machinery, and they are uh, just got a little bit more experience under their belt. We've seen the 27 here, the Optimum McLaren. It's, it had a reasonable run yesterday, but it didn't quite, I don't think, really deliver on its full performance. I think these guys in this car will be 
hoping to have a slightly stronger run than yesterday. Yep, it was indeed a bit of a first day back at school feel at parts of the race yesterday. But they've all done what you do after the first day of school. You go back, you do the homework, you come back, you do better yep. the following day. Uh, you'd be looking for more consistency, lessons to be learned about things like the time management. That already is very apparent whilst Michael Dunn is pulling away. He's not pulling away as quickly as he was yesterday. Three seconds to the good now over John Falb. Uh, Alban Ferruti, meanwhile, uh, has got Maxi Mouston now in contention with him. 1.9 seconds back. This is going to be a very different start to this race. As up the inside goes the 75 car. This is a good run from these guys. It is. This is uh, Lucas Dunner. It says it shouldn't be Lucas Dunner. The timing screens initially said Heiko Neumann. Um, and I think it is Heiko in the car, but that's well, changed. We are we're seeing some significant lane changes there from the BMW. Very aggressive in his uh, his approach up to turn 15. It's cost him here though. It is, and he's got, and that seemed to be one of the big things that happened yesterday, was that the BMW was just laboring to try and get around these slow speed corners, but once it got going and pointed in a straight line, it was an absolute rocket. And uh, I think the Mercedes is, is, is pretty quick today as well in the straight line. Well, we've got a drive that's going to be in trouble. I was about to call that we're about to get a three-car battle for the lead. Four-car with Martin Conrad, Kiko Salino catching fast. But Maxi Mouston, second place at the moment for Team Project One in the bright orange number 56 car. It's got a drive-through penalty for a start procedure infringement. My guess would be that he did not follow the grid hatchings. Yes, and I think that he most really just jumped, didn't he? So that was a big problem. And also in trouble is the third place car. It's uh, Martin Conrad who's got a drive-through penalty for causing a collision. So the cars currently running in second and third in this pack GT class will both be making their way down pit lane very and shortly indeed. Was that the Viper Nisa? Yes, it was. Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. OK. D-car engineering, a strong run yesterday. The defending champions with a completely different look to the, to the crew, but the same car, the 2017 vintage Orica, chassis 05. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Well over 100 of those now been built since and 2017. And we have seen that uh, Amado Harty has got past George Kurtz and uh, he's making some headway up onto the back and the, the gearbox there of Alexander Matchell. And I think he should be able to get past him shortly. We're just cutting away here to the Kraft Bamboo car uh, with a get speed number nine directly behind him. They've made, again, good progress. This is Cosolino now. He will hope that this is the point at which Conrad peels off into pit lane to take his drive through, whether he does that at this point. Looked like he was edging that way. He did. And, uh, 37 and the 9. Again, no, different he lines. He didn't. Oh, he didn't take it. No, okay. Maxi Booston, though, is taking that. So this will be positional change. See the bright orange. BMW on the left of the screen. Kai Cosolino is lining up to take Martin. Conrad here just later that. on the brakes. I think Martin just sort of like let him yeah, just have on. that. I've got to do a drive through yeah, anyway. Yeah. Off, you, off you go. And uh, away he goes. It's, that Ferrari does take that kerb quite nicely. They were surprised with that. Because uh, usually that kerb there. We're watching Amidar Harty oh. looking to try and go round the outside. I got that but wrong. Yeah, he did get that very, very wrong. He just dropped a wheel the wrong side of the kerb there and it sucked him out wide. He lost all lateral ability there to, to turn the car back to turn 14. He's under pressure here, but not immediate pressure, I don't think, from George Kurtz again. No, I think he'll gather it up. He'll have a reset here and he'll just settle himself, take a breath, and then get back up the road again to Alexander Match. I think he's got the pace there. Definitely got the pace to be able to get up to Matchell and past. He's watching behind there. Is that uh, the 83 car with Francois Perodo looking at the inside? And he's going to make it through. Oh, John Falb, I believe. I think he's going to get this. Oh, is he? Oh, he ducked out of it there. That's left him under pressure from PJ Hyatt. We've missed something here. I know I've certainly missed something here. How's John Falb ended up? I think Falb's been off the road. We've missed that. So John Farmer's done a 2.11, he has been off the road. So he's dropped right back into this battle. So John, somewhere, has lost about 13 seconds. Yeah, that is a, a, a long, either it's either a spin or he's run very wide somewhere. He's now back up to speed, but involved in 
another spirit of battle. With all of that, well, two positional changes. We've got double yellow flags out there for an instance uh, turn 11. Keep an eye on whether or not that uh, stays that way. That's here. Oh, and it's the 86 car. That's Mike Wainwright's new Ferrari. Yes, it is. And I spoke to Ben Barker just before the start of the race, and he was saying that uh, he was hoping that they're going to have a slightly better run. Didn't quite capitalise on, on, on everything yesterday. But um, oh, this is going to be tough. Stalled. Yeah, being able to get the 86 turn around. Try to do that on a slope as well. Yeah, and it, and it's terrible. It's, it's really tough when it's like that because you're just desperate to get going again. And you're sometimes flustered in, in trying to get reverse gear. And having to do, oh, there's John Falboff again. Well, well, well. Now, is that an avoidance? I don't know, but that, he's been through the gravel. I don't know where. That, that's got to be sort of down turn is it turn 11, 10, 11? And there's Mike Wainwright coming back onto the uh, the racing surface that's, now. That's at turn nine into 10. And were, was that something together? Is, does, does that appear to be in contact, whether or not it's an avoidance? Yeah, and uh, stopping there is not a great spot there on the exit because you come off, off of nine rather unsighted going uphill. Mike finally gets the car underway. So a couple of little dramas here. Many adventures. John hasn't had a particularly clean start to the race, unlike yesterday. No, yesterday he was absolutely great. George Kurtz, he's, uh, he's performed pretty well. Francois Perodo is pressurising him there. He's, uh, he's dropped back a little from Almada Harty, and Almada Harty has got past Alexander Mitchell. And uh, Peter Hyatt's also got past George Kurtz. George has got deep oh. into turn four there, trying to defend. Mistake. Yeah, from George gets it. Francois Perodo, and it just didn't quite work out. Just again, it's just all about placement and getting in your flow, in your rhythm. And it takes some time to build that when you're in a new car, a new environment, a new championship. It's all about getting settled, reducing the mistakes, high percentage moves. Yeah, there are none. Meanwhile, leads this train of four. It's Turbino Bufuji, the gold ranked driver, looking to get onto the terms. A replay here. This was a mistake from that he was that was dropped. He dropped the left side tires on that curb, and then he goes through the gravel trap, all the way off through the gravel trap, and and maybe that was something that came from him running wide from the previous lap, picking up rubbish on his tires, trying to get them cleaned up, and then just asking too much of them. Here we go. The multiple lines through turn 15. We've got a drag race there between. I think it's the Aston Martin and the BMW. This is the battle for sixth place. Yeah, D station, so, 77. So Tomo Bifuji had got by, he's then now behind again, now tries the outside line. That's a very tricky one to pull off here. Darren Young will go to the apex for turn two and will make it there. So he's going to be a tough man to pass. He is the reigning British GT champion, albeit the bronze ranked part of the duo with Dan Harper, who we'll see later in this car. Tomo Bifuji is Get by here. He is, he is, and uh, we we're seeing this quite big train now, Darren, all bottled up behind Darren Young, who is uh, just, he's using a lot of road, and, and he's making that BMW nice and wide in spots, and then he comes to the straights, he's, yeah. Goodbye. Doing, yeah, he is a little bit. It's punchy, isn't it? It's it is, it is, it is punchy. But, um, again, this, uh, the contrast between these cars in GT3 is something we're all going to have to reset and get used to in mixed class racing. It's obviously GT3 racing, a huge part of the international motorsport scene. It's a big step on the ladder here in Asia as well. James Cottingham's just sitting there, just almost just hanging back a little bit, just watching. I know James was saying about how he was very physical in the car yesterday and he, he maybe just be sort of keeping himself inside himself a little bit and just preserving some of his energy. Looking in the middle of this pack, it is the race leader coming through to pass and lap these cars. Uh, 20 minutes in, and Michael Dynan in amongst this traffic. So that is going to compress the gap between Giorgio Roda for a short while. There he is, trying to do his best uh, when the opportunities arise. And here's another opportunity in a straight line where the Orica does have the advantage. But those mirrors are, uh, for all of those GT cars, they're just thinking about their own class and they're not thinking about a P2 car coming up behind. That he's having got the inside of the 77. He's got to get that done and then he should be able to just sneak up the inside of the 56. Darren Leung that, managed to get off there pretty well. That but worked, Michael's by. That worked pretty well for Michael Dynan. Yeah. Reasonably clean. And when you get past a huge pack of GT cars like that, 
yeah. then he'll be able to really gap Giorgio Roda in second. Giorgio Roda, five cars between him, but he's got to uh, negotiate this pack through the tight and twisty and much slower turn one and turn two. Yeah, That's going to be tougher. You, you could see as he got on the brakes there, he was a little bit nervous and tentative about how he was going to get past that Audi. He's managed to do it, but you know he's still got four more to go here. And Fruity, by the way, is 5.2 seconds ahead of Keiko Salino. Keep an eye on that gap because he is not quite as quick as Cosalino, but there's not that much in it. It is not seconds being carved out of it. No, and uh, I think this shows that um, Veruti really is extremely strong. PJ High, by the way, being worn for track limits, but uh, that push has brought him onto the back of Alexander Matchell. Oh, that's Matchell then going at the... Well, in the 91 there, pure racing car, he was getting cars passing him left and right almost I, at the same time. I am hugely impressed this early in his time in LMP cars by the pace, the form, the confidence of PJ Hyatt. But I think that's one of the things that this Orica does in this P2 category is that it really gives the AM driver that confidence. And you hear it time and time again. They love racing. They love lovely. driving the cars. They love experiencing that sort of confidence it gives you. It gives the right signals back to the driver, and that just breeds confidence. The 55 just coming through and into that turn 11. PJ Hyatt, and he's just trying to chase down Matchell. And is he going to use? His, he is. He's yes. going to use the traffic yes. as a bit of a pick try. here. He's just got to try and get that run through and off of here. He's Time better right. Run. Got a better run out that corner. Now, is he going to be able to use this traffic? Is he close enough? He's certainly going space? to be closer. He's certainly going to be closer. Is he going to be able to have a lunge up the inside coming into 15? He's going to have a look, isn't he? He's not quite there, but I think it's only a matter of time. And he's just having a sniff. But again, as we come to the exit of 15, just chops off, gets chopped off, and then. Matchell's managed to get the power down and we're coming down into turn one here with the 56 and the 77 side by side again he's Fujisan is trying to get it done but he's not quite managed to get it Good done stuff, watch the BMW on. here as he tight it takes an age for that car to turn and is he going to be at the 77 going to be able to get on its tail yes he is he's got the power down a little bit better I think this is the closest that Fujisan's been but he's getting Oof. compromised there by Amado Harty I think it is it is Ah. Well, as all this is going on, by the way, there's going to be a drive-through penalty. P.J. Hyatt still with Matchell behind. Uh, Gabriel Rendoni, but it's contact with Mike Wainwright, so it looks like it was a contact incident. Yeah. James Cottingham, by the way, looking up the inside there of the Porsche. So all sorts going on here. Yeah, it's very, very busy multi-class race, and you can't take your eyes off it. And the 77 is still oh. trying to find a way past the... Sorry, it's not the 56, it's the 93, isn't it? Project One BMW of uh, Darren Luong. Through this traffic, Francois Brodo deciding he's going to have a bit of a crack at this. He's Francois's play here, as it was yesterday. Oh, big squirm under brakes there for DJ. Yeah. He's got the car to the outside, but not alongside. He fancies this, but Brodo is having a sniff now. PJ Hyatt. He is. He is. And Matchell's just got past Cottingham there into turn 11. But it's then the runoff of there. Can PJ get it done before the turn into 12 around the outside? As we're seeing side by side between the 77 and the 93, can Fujisan get it done? No, he can't. This battle is coming on a fierce battle ahead. <laughs> Finally, he's got ahead there. That was Darren Long running a bit deep in defence against the Aston Martin. Loses two, possibly three places to his team car. Up the inside of all of them. Is this where PJ Hyatt does it? No, it isn't. It's four, five wide coming down into turn 15. <laughs> Great <laughs> stuff here. Looks up the inside and third time within, within a corner, frankly, comes off comes off that corner well. Francois Perodo sort of picked the right line, but the line was blocked by the Aston Martin just as he cleared the corner. Crazy racing in LMP2 and in GT coming down into turn one again. Big winner from that lot, by the way, was Team Project One's Maxime Houston recovering from that uh, drive-through penalty. And yeah, Martin, he has. Martin Cobrat, by the way, way back after his drive-through. Yeah. It's just almost like uh, Matchell has just been able to get a little bit of a breather from PJ Hyatt, but Francois Perodo is right in his wheel tracks, and then we're seeing that uh, Fujisan has managed to get past and get away a little bit, but there is the Project 1 BMW 
uh, being driven by uh, Maxine Usten, who's managed to get through. And uh, he's made great ga gains. He did through all that, that flurry. He yeah, was, he has. Uh, he was picking off cars at will. He is the high-ranked driver amongst this group, apart from Fujisan. So now we're going to get back to Tomo Bafuji and Maxi Muston chasing the lead cap. That lead cap, by the way, with Keiko Salino now down to just two seconds. Yeah, it could be traffic, I think. But that is 25 minutes gone up the inside here from John Falconer's recovery drive. And I think James is also having a sniff there. Yes, he is. Just all over that curve. That doesn't seem very nice there. Can't see given Leung. Yeah. Could this be pretty cheesy? No, we're somewhat further away than Snedston this afternoon, boys and girls. Slightly warmer than Sned. Indeed. Not the driving sideways rain. The general misery. Sorry, Snedston. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> it's all those years. Um, <laughs> John Fab around the outside there in the Pure Racing 91 car. He's uh, got that done, but it's uh, yeah on the exit there of Turn 14. That's the track limits. Watch what Maxi Mouston is going up the inside on the grass for, uh, at oh. 245 k's an hour. No wonder he's flashing the lights. Yeah, and this time second look at the inside. Fuji San. No, we'll pull this wide, and I think that's got it done for the BMW. So maybe that was a little bit too aggressive for Fujisan. Has he got the ponies in a straight line? Is it the BMW? John Falb will go through and uh, pass both of them. John Falb's just thinking I need to get by these two before I get taken out in their accident. Well, uh, Maxine Houston, I think it's going to be the last of the late breakers into turn one. He's gone, he's gone wide, and is that going to be enough? He's just ahead, is. but no, I think not. he might be able to get the nose oh, in here into turn two. But it's how well does he get that BMW turned? He's got it turned, but I think he's about there. Wow, he's got it done. Well, that he, was, yeah. Fujisan did make him work for it, though. Didn't he just? He did. Great stuff in the GT class. Michael Downer, nine seconds clear, by the way, in the lead of this race from Giorgio Roda in the 22 Proton Competition car. We're correctly concentrating on the action here in GT. It's been stellar. It has all been fantastic. Um, really a good, brilliant field here in GT. Aggression, <laughs> very little contact. It's not like your day. No, no, no. <laughs> well, in black you, and white. Usually between the teammates. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was only in mid Ohio. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. the once. Yeah, it was great then. So, uh, here's Armand Alharty, by the way, running third side by side now. James Cottingham. James Cottingham trying Young. to go around the outside at turn seven. This is unusual. Now that is unusual, and uh, Darren Leong is he's not giving him that much road, but I think he's actually James is going to get it done here, it. down into turn nine. He's going to park yeah, it. He gave him he a, did. a little bit he of did. a love tap, didn't he? Yeah, I think those two. There's a, there's a little bit of history there. Just a touch. Yeah, but you know. But there you go. Nice, actually, you know, there's no bodywork lost or no, you know, no smoking tyres. No, indeed. I think Four, they're all good. They're 40, all good. 43 Audi, second of the Santa cars with you know, now. James Cottingham has got away here. I think he will stretch his legs now. James will get away. Been a, he's been bottled up behind Darren Leong for quite some time. But, uh, that was a good couple of laps of battling away from Darren Leong. He might need just to take a breath. Yeah, and James has actually got a little bit. Of, he's got a warning there for track limits to turn seven, but I think that that was just all in the heat of battle. Still PJ Hyatt with Alexander Matchell. Alexander showed great form in LMP2 in Europe this year. PJ Hyatt. It's a good yardstick for what's to come with the AO Racing Squad, partnering here with Proto Competition, but they'll be in their own campaign in LMP2 in North America this year. Yeah, Gunnar Jeanette's out here, isn't he? Just supporting PJ Hyatt and, and uh, guiding, advising, coaching. And, uh, done a nice job, really nice job. And that, that car, that, it was Rexy, isn't it? Rexy is the green dinosaur. Yes. Um, Roxy is the pink dinosaur. Lovely. And wait and see you're going to get uh, in more. a P2 car in 2024. So I'm saying nothing, okay. not a word. If I do, Gunna Jeanette will come in here and violence will be reached. Okay. You'll we'll think a you. dinosaur will be in here. Okay. But it's proved to be remarkably popular. Rexy, by the way, came from a very simple premise. Uh, PJ, a very proud dad to a son and a daughter. Daughter likes unicorns, as daughters tend to do, and I mind, most certainly did. Uh, son likes dinosaurs. The cho chosen uh, way forward was um, the dinosaur. There is already a unicorn uh, livery car in Imsa. Lamborghini, Sparkle Farts, as she's known. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it actually is, that's not me making it up. Uh, but Rexy has become phenomenally popular, and uh, I have to tell you, 
as a somewhat mature collector of Hot Wheels style cars, I can't wait for the Rexy Hot Wheels car splendid. Matchell under pressure here from PJ Hyatt. He just always oh, got a pit he's into the pit lane, and this is a slightly early it is. pit stop, just before 30 minutes. And is that a strategy call there from the team? It's we'll see. One. Yeah, I mean, it's an hour. Of, I think it's an hour and 40 minutes for a bronze driver. This is leading GT. So this is no longer two seconds, but we're on the half hour now, Ollie. The bronze driver against the gold driver. So you know, watch this. Is fuel? Only, I think. Yeah, cleaning the screen. No I think tear. we didn't see a tear off yesterday, did we? No. no. See anybody getting a tear off? Very disappointing. Oliver Gavin loves to tear off, by the way. In case you didn't know. You'll, you'll, you'll get used to this tone of voice. He loves to tear off. Loved it. Uh, yellow flags in turn nine as this is actually uh, happening. Still got through. The point I was making here is this is the bronze driver in yesterday's race winning car, uh, Alban Ferruti. It is the gold driver the most professional ranked driver in the 82 behind. So they've got to do the time for a bronze driver still, whereas Santa Lock will be able to put their higher ranked drivers in later. You would expect, you would expect to be quicker. Double yellow now to nine. Yeah, so and I'm not sure if uh, Francois Perot is actually going to get in trouble there or not. Passing Veruti. Um, that's the oh, that Nielsen, Nielsen card. card. Ian's, Ian's had an issue. Looks to be recovered though, he's back underway. Just run wide. Run wide, maybe through the gravel and uh, obviously escape road on the other side, or the escape path, if you like, on the other side. But uh, still holding off. He is. Kay Cosolino. Now, you know, we've seen Kay Cosolino. Oh, oh, big. That, that, that could have been dramatic, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're taking George Kurtz with him. Uh, but uh, Kay Cosolino is some racer. He's very quick. He can be. Correctly aggressive at times. Remember yep. in the latter part of uh, Giancarlo Fisichella's career in the FI World of Challenge Championship, where Giancarlo had something a reputation for having elbows wider than the car, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Monkey>. <laughs> I, th I think that gentleman doesn't know that he on has back. no idea. No. By the way, the other engineer was clapping. <laughs> he had not a clue. <laughs> uh, but Kay. Um, I think at Fuji, which is his home stamping ground. Oh, he's oh, gone wide. Oh, gone wide, but actually, it's oddly enough, the better line there. Uh, so no way through for Kay. Um, came across uh, Giancarlo, and uh, elbows were firmly out, and door handles were extended. Right. And he was having none of that. Uh -huh. Much merriment from the WCTV crew as that uh, battle, door banging very literally between two of the Ferraris took place. It's a great CK here. He's been with us in Europe this year. Aboard Kai Cosolino's dogs. got a run on him here, coming out of turn four, around the he's outside got him, of got five. Got him, got him. That's a beautiful move. Yeah, that is. That's a beautiful move. That's the pro driver. Yeah. He was like he's keeping his powder dry, and then he just knew when to deliver. Boom. Yeah. Got the deal done. Great stuff. And he's now blocking Ian Loggy as he's coming into turn seven. Yeah, Ian lost the lap there, by the way. He's dropped down into the battle. In fact, that's for position. That is Ian Loggy going through for position on the AF Corsa car in his recovery drive as John Falb <laughs> recovering from less of an issue. Yeah, the Where? two of them squabbling over the same bit of tarmac there and Kai Cosolino is trying to sort of get up the road. Indeed. And Ian and John are battling over this position. And they're trying to just get away through turn 12, nicely into 13 and 14. Go back and just take a quick look at the start again. Just looking at Maxime Houston, where the issue might have been for he uh, was way wide, wasn't he? Yeah. Off the grid hatching, some bright orange BMW at the back. That's what the penalty came for. But it was a beautiful start from uh, from Michael Dynan, and this time John Farb chose a more conservative approach. That paid off for him at the start, certainly. Little of packet, little bit of rubbing between the cool racing and the high class uh, Ligiers as the traffic bottled them up behind. Busy, busy second corner as always. And this was where we got. Oh, uh, and see, Brent, uh, Conrad, yes. Martin Conrad just turning around he the did. Viper Nisa car there. Again, by the way, Anteras Howell, oh, the victim oh, of that oh, running wide. Oh, so, at breakfast this morning, he was still chewing that over, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I did have a quick chat with him. Yeah. We, we had an interview with Claire where Antares, I think, oh, oh that was another, oh. that was a multiple contact, wasn't it? Yeah, the Optum car had a bit of a bump there. Well, he, he was hit and then hit and avoid yeah. um, the uh, Attempto car. 
So all sorts going on there. Oh, you've just got nowhere to go at that point. He's just trying to keep on the racetrack and not get hit. I think it was the 43 car that's yeah. hit him. I wonder if any damage has been done to any bodywork or possibly radiator damage, cooling damage. All sorts for some of those going cars. on the early. This was oh, where we had the, the problem for Indoni, wasn't oh, it? It's it was. running wide. Oh. It's a close call, by the way, between the 27 and the 21 there yeah. in avoidance. As the 21 looked to get wider, it couldn't go there because this car was already on the line he was looking to take. Yeah, Mark Radcliffe on board here with him now. They're coming down into Darren Leung. He's still looking for a way by. Darren has been sort of dropping down the order. Not too badly though, because uh, if you look ahead of him, that is still just two places ahead uh, of, of uh, Darren Leung is James Cottingham. It's Bi Hang Xu in the Santa Lock 43 car, the very light grey car. Very similar colour schemes, but the 42 car that is running second is very brilliant white, the 43 is a very pale grey. You see the way that the, uh, the, the 93 car came to, through turn four, it took a lot of curve at the apex, and then he almost four-wheel drifted it off the corner, all the way over the exit curb. But here's really where you see the difference between the mid-engine and the front-engine layouts, the way the McLaren just carved the corner there at turn six, a slightly more stable platform. It's a matter of trying to find where perhaps a minor error comes in. The road opens up in front of him, but in a straight line, BMW's got plenty going for it. Looks well, there, that's not looking, quite. Yeah, it wasn't quite the opening there. It wasn't quite close enough to get it done. Oh, they've also now got... Uh, PJ Hyatt. Absolutely. That's confidence, isn't you, from, from PJ Hyatt, the way he just got that done. It's impressive. I don't know, racing on pit lane. Armand Alharty out of... Uh, what was third, fourth place? We've missed a pit stop from Michael Dynan. Yeah, Michael was in, and uh, that was about a lap ago, I believe. So it's Giorgio Rover at the moment leading the race. It's in and out from uh, Ahmed Al Harti. I think we'll see the rest of the P2 runners coming in shortly. I think we've had four cars in P2 in the pit lane. A couple of P3, one P3 runner. Oh no, that was Ian Logg. He had been in as well. Yeah. A couple of stops in GT, and Darren Leung is. He's gone very wide there at 15 and oh, he's gone down the pit lane. Yeah. Oh, no, he's not. No, he's not way wide. And that's that lost was, the place. Yeah. Um, I would say, by the way, that PJ Hyatt was uh, has also in the, pit, uh, been the pits. So Hyatt's put in. Uh, who else have we seen down pit lane? Mike Dynam, as we said, Armand Al Harty oh. and Chris McMurray yes. are our pit stoppers in LMP2 so far, with Ian Loggy also having stopped. Still seeing Darren Leung there with, with Mark Radcliffe after that a little mistake that he had, Darren had at turn 15, and now he's just looking to see if he can just stabilise himself, just reset and ice forward. Still very closely matched pack here in the GT3 class. Into pit stop comes the current leader, Roger Roder. This is a scheduled stop here. Absolutely. Now we're into the, the real fuel window. Yeah. So they'll be looking to see what they can do to retain their track position as they possibly can around this pit stop cycle. The fuel only is what we expect here. You're just seeing the mechanic just working way through, just making sure all of the exits and, and entries in the bodywork were all clear. They sometimes get rubber build up and, and other debris in there, so they just want to make sure that the, the car is working and flowing as it's been designed to work. Alexander Matchell, by the way, and George Kurtz going longer. They're going for another lap here. So it's already seen a little slow on the far up there, Giorgio Roda. Yeah, already seen, by the way, some gaps emerging in terms of strategy at the moment. Where that all pans out at the end of the race is going to be an interesting point again if we stay green and if it stays dry. Yeah, absolutely. Both of which are big ifs. I think it's the nine car that's running a little wide there. Was the EBM car? That's uh, the eight. Sorry, that's the eight. Sergio Sant Santoso there. Still a great pack of GT cars here, all together, all fighting away for position. Plenty of series around the world, but like that little pack is a grid. Yeah, you know, this is the uh, comeback run from Martin Conrad after that drive-through penalty to start the race. He's there at the back of this little group with Antares Al. Prince Jeffrey Just there in the 88 car. He had a little bit of a, an action-packed run yesterday, a little bit too much aggression, a couple of bits of contact. He got pinged with a couple of drive-throughs, but the team had a good long chat with him 
and uh, I think that he's he's got a slightly different approach, more a little bit more uh, inside himself, but yeah. still delivering, keeping the car clean. And, and that's uh, the point that the difference difference for uh, the Triple Eight squad is going to be. Look, if by using a little less aggression, is he losing a few tenths a lap? He possibly is. Yeah, I had a chat with Roland Dane about it, and, and you know he was he was you know stressing you know nicely that uh, you know. He's learning and he's just, he was just a, a little bit overcome with the, the situation yesterday and surprised a little bit uh, at, at some of the other cars on track and how they were using their speed in the certain parts of, of the corner. And so, uh, you know, it's this it's new series for him. And, uh, it's pressure. It is, it is. And I think, again, it's just all about keeping it clean for, for the rest of the driver lineup. I think he was very impressed with Brock Feeney yesterday. Roland was, and uh, you know, his pace is, you know. Well, the thing about I mean, Prince Jeffrey's been driving, I think, with AAA, I think it's five years. I think there's a, there's a logo on the car that says five years of collaboration there. But I'm pretty certain that in all of those time, all those uh, races, he's either been in the fastest class or the only class. Right. This is a very, very different challenge. It's a completely different ball game here. Multi-class racing and, and, and high-class competition as well. And uh, he's got his hands full here at the moment. He's looking yes. to get past the Attempto car and the uh, pure... Oh, it's a Herbert car that's directly up behind him. He's looking to get by. We did see, just as we were talking there, the uh, the four car come into the pits uh, rather quickly. Yes. And uh, George Kurtz there just... locked up, wasn't he? Yeah, he was coming in a little bit sideways. As the car control at that point is kind of seeing his life flash before him. <laughs> and all was well. Prince Jeffrey may be up the inside of the Attempto, not quite there. He's got big pressure from the Herbert car. And interesting to see how this all unfolds as they come down into turn one. Prince Jeffrey is defending, keeping that sort of middle of the road. He hasn't quite got the horsepower to get past the attempt to car, but he's uh, nice getting it done there on the brakes. And Prince Jeffrey's trying to carry a little bit more speed across that apex there at turn one and get it rotated at two. He has got a little bit of a run on the attempt to car. We're seeing Maxwell on pit lane. From the lead, by the way, yeah. which will cycle back round to Michael Dyne and take, be taking the lead because that marks the end of the pit stop cycle for the other P2s. Is there a delay there before they can run out and start servicing the car on the three? I'm not quite sure what that was about. Uh, engine needs to be off. Ah, there you go. Exactly right. Through comes Michael Dyne, retakes the lead for TF Sports. It won't show on timing and scoring yet because the number three. Uh, Pitts is beyond the start finish line, but uh, he is down to lead the race. Ahmed Harty, by the way, 14 seconds back, what will become second, but it's going to be quite close. Francois Perodo in that mix as well. Just seeing a picture there of John Hartshaw in the 95 car. I think he managed to get, get going pretty well yesterday. And uh, he managed to hand the car over in a reasonable position for, for Johnny Adam. John, super chat. Absolutely super guy, um, proper gentleman. He is a uh, gentle giant, uh, John Hartshorn. Did I thought in those mixed conditions, as it's getting darker and it's getting greasier, uh, did get a bit beaten up in a couple of turns yeah, there? Yeah, he, he did. He did. Michael Dynam being very, very confident uh, with the traffic there, being very direct and using the performance of uh, the, that TF Sport P2 car. Uh, 37 hit from Grand Bambu. This is the third place car until you. What a contrast in fortunes they've had the two races. And Team Motor Park up into fourth. I am somewhat. Did not expect that. 100% uh, didn't. I am somewhat. Oh, oh trouble there. That is Antares Al. Oh, he's having a rough weekend. He is. Well, yeah. That was just two little breaks from Antares. Um, the one thing I'm concerned about with this car is. We're seeing this shown as Lucas Duna in the car. He should not have been the starting driver. And but the timing of scoring did show the correct starting driver at the start of this race. That should have been Heiko Neumann. Now, if that is Heiko Neumann, then all is well other than the fact they might be getting into trouble for showing their own driver. If it isn't Heiko Neumann, then they're going to be getting into trouble because they've not started the nominated driver. <laughs> Now, this car yesterday, they did have seem to have some procedural problems, didn't yes. they? They were not quite so sure no. of what they should be doing when. Pass around. Pass around, around and other bits and pieces. They did and get a mighty 4 minutes and 25 seconds stop and hold for taking a pass around where they shouldn't have done. Which he picked out 
And yeah, you quite yeah. wrong. I was right. I'll write that one down. Write that one down. Said, what's that? that? What? <laughs> what? I was going to give you two. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, they're here to learn. And Team Motor Park, very open. We're here to learn. Yeah. We're here to start a journey. Um, delighted to have them. Darrell Young, Richard Lyons. Richard Lyons there in the yeah. background. Uh, racing legend. Absolutely. And very, very talented. Yeah. Won a lot of races in Japan in particular. Well, it does something to high level grade one championships in one season back in 2004 for Richard Lyons in both uh, prototypes and, sorry, prototypes, in both GTs and the Japanese GT Championship, now in Super GT, and in Formula Nippon, now in Super Formula, which is very high level single seater competition indeed. If you're, winning, if you're winning in those championships, you are on a Formula One level. You're world class. Many, many, many drivers have come from Formula Nippon and gone into Formula One, so Richard is, is world class. Beating, I think that year, beating Andre Lotterer to second place. That's pretty impressive. Yes. He's all right, isn't he, Andre Lotterer? Let's not forget the current Porsche Hyper car driver. <laughs> As we're watching the 37 and the 75 coming up into turn four, these guys have uh, pretty evenly matched. Yeah, they are, but this is a good run from both these teams and uh, will be, both will be much encouraged. We've not said much, have we, about LMP3. Cool racing on pit road from the lead. Gordon Gubmanson will go through into the lead. Breton Racing, the Stan Skostopole, uh, is in third place. CD Sport fourth and Vipanisa recovering a little after the dramas for Douglas Q at the very start of the race. But two quick drivers to come in that car. Um, but this is high class racing. Gordon Gubmanson from Iceland. Okay. I will remind listeners and viewers that is Iceland the country and not the price UK supermarket chain. This is Cool Racing, winners yesterday, reigning the LMS champions this year, developing quite the reputation for their LMP3 programmes and as a, well, a nest of talent, most notably in the last couple of years, Melty Jakobsen, back-to-back -back titles for Cool Racing in LMP3, two years ago with the young Dane, Mikey Benham and Mo Smith gold and two bronzes. 17 efforts. I could be taking a look at these guys for what might be to come in Europe next year. But, uh, they've got a title to win this year first. This is the battle for the lead now, by the way, in uh, LMP3. And that cool racing car, a little bit out of sequence, really. Yeah. And all the oh, Nielsen. Oh, he's gone oh, all that's, oh. oh, that's really tough there. Ian Loggy just in the wrong place, just looking to the outside of turn 12, and he just got pushed wide. And that nose is going to need some attention, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was really rough on him. Skostopole looking for a way by or looking to put the lead car under pressure, and in doing so, he had no idea Ian was there. No. Zero. Oh, that's really rough. That is inexperienced driver in a P3 car against a relatively inexperienced LMP2 driver, yeah. an experienced race driver. So, And sometimes in those situations you can sort of like read or see what's going to happen, but when you're in a brand new yeah. car, uh, those your, your sort of bandwidth is full of actually operating the vehicle and not necessarily sort of seeing how that vehicle is looking to move in front, but that, was not, that wasn't Ian's fault at well, all. Well, I mean, Passenger. you in your career, Ollie, a hugely accomplished professional driver, sports car racing legend as we often say. Well thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the sensory input in a race car in this environment, huge. Yeah it is. But you, you're working off all the cues but then you're also trying to read the body language of the car in front and how it's moving and how it's how it's working the tyre and how it looks to be taking a kerb or a, you know certain undulation in, in, in the racetrack. And you're working off all of that. It's all feeding into that knowledge base that you have. But the point I'm, I'm making as well here is that's you as a full pro driver with huge opportunities to get track time in a car that is basically around you and your fellow pros. That's Ian Loggy learning a new yeah, high exactly. performance car exactly. in, mix, uh, in, in a mixed class race. The sensory overload for him must be absolutely it's, off the clock. It is off the chart. And so, you know, all of these guys who are brand new to these, this machinery, they will be absolutely wrung out by the end of the race. 
side by side. Completely rung out, and in terms of what it, mentally, physically, it will sap absolutely every ounce of energy out of them. Uh, would you like a, a note on just how good Al Bonveruti is? Well, go ahead. So, was it 32 or 33 minutes uh, that Keiko Salido uh, got by the Frenchman? And Keiko Salido is still ahead of the Frenchman. We're now 50 minutes into this race. He's three and a half seconds ahead. <laughs> just three and a half seconds ahead. That's that is massively impressive that when you're looking gold against bronze well, driver. Well, then look, look behind at uh, Anthony Liu, who has won here, who's raced here countless times as the high-class racing car goes to pit lane, and therefore uh, Breton Racing go into the lead of uh, LMP3. The gap from Veruti to Anthony Liu is 26 seconds. Yes, it is. It is another very, very impressive run. Prince Jeffrey is still looking for a way around the, the Attempto car being driven by uh, McCormus. So, 20 car rolls to a halt. Oleg Goodmanson will stay aboard. And looks like he's going to do his drive time in one. one. That was generally the plan with these cars. Yep. As we see Michael Dynan. He's doing a very, very solid job today. You know, this yeah. is exactly what I think the team were hoping was going to happen yesterday. I'm not sure of the, the issue he had in that second stint at the start of the race yesterday, but today he's he is he's certainly learned from that experience. Again, we, we, we just keep on reiterating that that these guys are learning all the time. Brand new machinery, brand new racing. Absolutely. 13 seconds to the good. Pace seems to be to be a little more measured, maybe leaning a little less on the on the rubber. That left side tyre yep. is, 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 the, is the one that really does give up. But uh, yeah, Ahmed Al Harty, kind of his teammate uh, there in, in the, uh, the TF Sport garage. Because the 99 racing car is being run uh, in partnership with TF Sport. This year it is. 13.2 uh, seconds it is. At the moment, Ahmed a little quicker to the high 58 against the low two minutes. Last time around with a bit of traffic by the look of it for Michael Dynan. Francois Broder, by the way, six seconds back from Ahmed Al Harty, uh, with Giorgio Roda a further five seconds back. Alexander Matchell, George Kurtz, John Falb, and PJ Hyatt complete the top eight. Yeah, seeing the 17 car come down in, into turn one. This car is currently running fourth in class, but it has had its stop. And it's a long stop they've taken. Yeah. That's the key point here. Uh, they so were very, very strong yesterday. They had a great run. Very, they were sort of like right in the hunt throughout but then as it came and, and as the weather deteriorated they had their most experienced driver in James Winslow so uh, he managed to bring it to the flag get the deal done and uh, a really fine win for this crew yesterday cool racing are extremely well run operation uh, Nicolas Lapierre doing a fantastic job they ran a number of cars in the ELMS Michelin Le Mans Cup as well uh, this year and, uh, do a very, very good job. Seven minutes away from the first of four hours of racing here at Sepang. Still bone dry, bit of a twitch over the curbs there from Ahmed Al Hati. That will have cost him a tenth or two. And he's now hitting the traffic that Michael Dynan has already encountered and dealt with. And that gap is going up rapidly. Ahmed Al Hati just getting through the past the Attento car. And you can see Prince Jeffrey has just dropped back a little there. And Martin Conrad is just right up behind him. You see again this multi-class racing where the P2 car is using that extra downforce and lighter weight to get past the GT cars. It's bad news coming for uh, Martin Conrad and good news for Prince Jeffrey because it's going to be a second drive-through penalty oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the number seven car. And that's for contact this time with Antares on the 33 car. Oh, so we, that's when we that's saw Antares. That's what we saw. The oh, poor Antares. He's had a really rough weekend. Yes, dear me. He's going to yeah. be hating the sides of Claire, the other down in the pit lane. Not that anybody should. Definitely not. She's doing a great job in her first weekend with us here in the Asian One Series. We'll be with us again in the UAE in February. We'll tell you all about that as the programme progresses. I should tell you as well, by the way, when things settle down in the middle of the race, we're going to have a special guest and a uh, some, something of a, a Asian Le Mans Series legend 
uh, in the booth, going to be uh, stepping in for Ollie for a few minutes, and we're going to be talking about an aspect of the coverage of international sports car racing, which we'll be aiming to put right uh -huh. from this weekend. And uh, one or two people I know have noticed we've made a very minor change, but we'll explain what that is and explain who it is that's going to be joining us in uh, a little wee while once things have settled down. We've got three Oh, points. contact there between the Attempto and the 21A of Corsa. I think they've done some damage there on the Ferrari 296. That's Almost. Francois Aereo again being hit. It has been, a, oh. it's a big hit in the side, isn't it? Yeah, they're going to have to repair that. That's quite a damage. If I was him, I would be trying to get directly into the pit lane. I think he's just discussing that with the team, and I think he is continuing. No, I don't think he is. Oh, he is? He is, he is. just the body language of the car and the way it was turning. I think he was in two minds. Let's hope that's bodywork and nothing to do with the cooling. Cooling in these turbo engine cars. Yeah, it's that's where that's good. the area where it, was, it looked like there was some damage. So yeah. and that uh, was the 66 car, Andrei Mikasov. And he's unable yet to get the car moving. They'll give him a short while to do that under the double yellows before intervention from race oh. control. Oh. It's Ken Cosolino coming in from the lead. Indeed. And again, that the pit lane entry and people. And Alban just, follows him in. Yeah, and they don't know whether to go left or right of him because uh, the Attempto car is just stuck at the moment. Again, it could be that he's flustered and he can't quite figure out where he is and what he needs to be doing. Yeah. It is very, very warm here, very humid, and these cars are very, very, very hot inside. Cosalina hits the marks. Well, and they're doing a driver change, full service it looks like they're going to be doing here. Just changing the water, tear off. Oh, there was, was the like first tear off? tear off I've seen this weekend. Uh, this oh. is should have come in, it's a, it's a tire, the tire's gone. The bodywork's been shredded and that has been rubbing on the tire. Just go slower. Really, really slower. slow as well. It's, it's painful, but if you go quickly at this point, all you're going to do is more damage That's and the, the guys are going to have a bigger problem to fix. He's got the suspension damage here, hasn't he? That looks like a steering arm that's gone. Yeah, and that is, see where the impact that is, is not at uh, turn 15. I think he got going again. I think he's driven it off the circuit there. Yeah. I think he's tried to get going. Yeah, that was some hit, wasn't it? Yes, it is. And, and the, the big problem here is, is what's all of what's in and around the area with all that flapping and flying bits of rubber. You know, what, what damage is going to be done there? There is the car because of the tyre, that left rear off the 21 car. So what you're seeing is basically the construction of the core of the tyre. Oh, the safety car the coming out. Is closed. Oh, the guys who have made it into pit lane, they've, they've the really benefited slow here. Down. Pit entry is closed. Car 90, please slow down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there was a huge queue of cars coming in there. Everybody was seeing it and reading it and trying to preempt it. Like, Take a look here because uh, okay, most we have of the lead group of multiple debris of around the, the track. GT class have made it in, but yeah. most of the trailing cars have not. And who? Let's have a look here, here what happens. Oh, and I think that. Oh, a tempto. It's just way late on the brakes, way too late on the brakes. I think that he must have had a problem there of something because he's hit the 21 hard. And that was from a long, long way back, really long way back. And I don't know whether that was the driver having a bit of a problem inside the vehicle with some of the controls or what was happening, but it's done a lot of damage to that car and it's done a lot of damage to the 21. Seeing on board, we're in the pit lane here with the eight EBM please car having slow a full, down leader, car 90, please full slow down, service. Give me a gap. Prince Jeffrey staying on board on the 888 Mercedes AMG. So this is where, if you're on pit lane right now, you just you burn one of your long stops. Yeah, exactly. You're very lucky yeah. to do it. It looks to me as if almost the entire leading pack in GT will get that chance. I think everybody was looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, going, well, the car's parked, the Attempto is there at the, at the entry into pit lane, so they're, surely they're going to go safety car here. So the, the team's reading that and thinking, OK, what is going to happen I think full service here for the uh, AAA car, but all the teams will be trying to understand and sort of predict what the race director is going to do, and I think a number of them predicted them correctly. The 93 and the 8 come out into pit lane, and they are forming up at the end of the pit lane. They're waiting for the safety car and the safety car crew, the queue to go by. And I can tell you that every car that I've seen on pit lane thus far has burned one of their nominated two long stops, the 100 second, 1 right. minute 40 stops. 
Absolutely. So that will mean you'll get to see quicker pit stops later, deeper into this race. Safety car is out and bringing the field under control. So very unfortunate indeed, again for Francois Rio. For the second race in succession, innocent victim. Yeah, they're all back underway now, but the, the safety car queue has gone by, so they're now allowed to get back out onto track. And uh, it will be a little wee while while they want to recover the car, but two, as we heard from race control, there is debris at multiple points on the circuit. They'll wait till the field is under control of the safety car before they instruct the marshals wow. where to go. Turn three. Well, we that was the, uh, the, the first hour the track. underway three, we of the, the uh, second round of the, of the Asian Le Mans series. Let's take a look back at the action for the first 60 minutes here at Sepang. Sunshine under high cloud at Sepang for race two. As fans and management and drivers and team members enjoy the grid. So did Bib, Michelin, one of our technical sponsors. The way they went with Michael Dynan leading the field away on the formation laps in the pole setting of a 90 TF Sports Orica. Nervous moments for some team members as things get away, underway. And when the lights went green, it was a far more orderly start amongst the Bell and P2s. No dramas for them. Coming through turn one and turn two, Michael Dine and John Fowl this time, no side-by-side -side action. The action of the unwelcome sort would come in the GT field uh, once again. Through go the LMP2s and the LMP3s, but it would be the last of the LMP3s that would be tagged into a spin here by the Get Speed, the Almanar Racing AMG. That would force a couple more cars into minor contact and go going wide. Everybody would get back underway, and all 39 cars would eventually emerge. A little bit of biffing and banging in avoidance of a gap that was closing. This was Douglas Coo recovering from that moment, still recovering back up the field as a result. This is a moment for Gabriel Rendoni. Just a big twitch from the Lamborghini, sent that around, and almost contact between the 21 Ferrari and the 27 McLaren. Drive through for. Uh, Infringement on the start procedure for Maxi Merston as Kay Cozzolino, starting from the back of the grid after the car was not uh, able to set the time in qualifying, would force his way through to the lead. Wide moment here for Marmon Al Harty, just a miscalculation from the Amani. And after further contact, it would be the 86 car of Mike Wainwright struggling to get the car turned back around. Quick stall from Mike before he'd finally get the car away. He is back underway. This was a big moment for John Falb, who'd been right in contention at the lead of the race. Two off-track moments, though, as it's the Kane car falling back in the order. 93 and 77 would have fun. Darren Young, British GT champion this year, going head-to-head, wheel-to-wheel, door-to-door, and much anything else in his BMW with Tom and Bufuji. Be Fuji San after a very wide moment here that would finally get the job done and get by the BMW as all hell was breaking loose behind. PJ Hyatt trying to get on two terms with Alexander Matchell, battle of the bronzes in LMP2. And then British GT rivals James Cottingham and Darren Young, McLaren to the left and the BMW to the right. It would eventually be the McLaren. This was the move from Kika Kekosalina to take the lead from. The superstar bronze here this weekend, Alban Veruti. But the Italian Japanese driver in the Ferrari would not move away terribly much before we got to the pit stops. Cool Racing would lead the race in LMP3. Up through to the pit stop cycle, but Michael Darnan led from the very start in the first hour of the race. Coming into the second hour, though, Oli, we're under the safety cars. We read the uh, the overall order. 30 laps completed by Mike Dynan, uh, Amadal Harty, Francois Perodo, Giorgio Roda, the top four in LMP3. Cool Racing back to the lead from Breton Racing in LMP3. High Class Racing third. D Station Racing's Tomino Bifuji has not yet stopped um, and will need to. Can't do at the moment uh, behind the safety car. We'll explain that in a moment if you've just joined us. From Bihangzhou. 
in the uh, Santa Luc Racing number 43, the second of their Audis, AF Corsa's uh, Jean-Henri Samony has taken over the 82. 21 car, unsurprisingly, in the garage. Yeah, that was tough. That was really a big hit, and they've now got quite a lot of damage there on that left rear. Uh, trying to Simon, bring that's Simon Mann taking a look at his car. Yeah. And that is a it is a big job. It is. It's going to take quite some time to fix that. It was the contact was pretty hard, but then the t the tire coming off and it, all of the rubber flapping around and it's really done just, a lot of damage to that left rear. I've just got to uh, watch it to see whether or not we got an opportunity to see a pretty unique feature of this new uh, Ferrari. Look to the right hand side there. You can see the whole structure, the replacement structure, of the rear. It's almost like an LMP2. And uh, Simon discussing with Francois, yeah, who's Francois explaining just nothing you could do. Out, completely taken out there. That was really, really rough. Pit entry is still closed. This is emergency service for the top two cars. That means five seconds of fuel only. They will need to come back that's in. the 43 car. Yep, the second place car. Yeah, yep, that's it. At that point. Yeah. One of the things that I'm seeing here is actually that um, the Michael Dynan car, the number 90, Sure, if it's actually got a lap on the field, or well, maybe when they start the wave by, that could be it. That, that they'll, um... uh, well, if he's picked up the 90 car, Pat Carner picked up the 90 car. Yeah, I don't know. We, we just got to see here how things unravel. You that can is see the that 90 car uh, behind the safety car. Yes, so is this how is it? We haven't because he stopped early, he did. Did, and I think that they could be a lap up on everyone. Is that just the time? This is the what caused the safety car. It was uh, Mukasov in the Audi getting it horribly wrong into turn 15. I think they're going to try and fix this. They're yeah, not they in are. a hurry. No, they're not. And uh, one of the engineers there was just taking a lot of pictures of that left rear and just seeing what has broken and yeah. what has been damaged. Still very new uh, car, the 296. We right? have had, had the wave by. Michael there is in the lead of this group, but everyone else is uh, he's gone by. He's so, gone by, right. gone around. That, so, that's yeah. We we didn't see the wave by. That's no. the that's the problem. We, we had the wave by while we we're doing highlights. Yeah. So apologies for that. They are not going to lead by a lap. You will see this current queue get a lot longer, very shortly. Yeah. But Michael Dynan, um, good opening stint again. I think a slightly more measured opening stint. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think that he's he's gone back and reviewed the data from yesterday, and he's looking to. Uh, apply all of that pretty talking deep with his engineers and, and, and also his teammates yeah pretty deep into second stints as well here and uh, yeah, we're only maybe he's actually only maybe about five ten minutes off of actually another stop so um, hopefully they could be able to get this done so that they don't have to make take an emergency service on the 90 oh. they'll be working all the numbers and here comes the Nielsen car on the right, and it does. It looks like he's hoping he's going to be waved by right, here. Yeah. And um, right. Something maybe that they are being told that we aren't hearing. Okay. Well, we're not going to make any calls on that um, because we're not hearing the instruction no, from race control to the teams or the teams to their drivers. We'll wait and see what race control make of this. Uh, sorry, we didn't see uh, the wave by here, so we didn't see the order in which the cars were behind the safety car. But uh, Michael Dunn is leading Armand Alharty some way back in this train. There he is, coming through the shot. He will have uh, Francois Peroda, Giorgio Roda, Alexander Matchell, uh, George Kurtz right behind him, right behind each other, yep. uh, but further back in the queue. This is going to mean a big advantage at the restart to Michael Dynan. It Not is. as big an advantage as he held before the safety car, in fairness. But uh, he won't have traffic, they will. Uh, they'll have traffic in order of each other and the cars between them. I think that there is possibly some confusion here with uh, where the Nielsen car is, because he is backed right up, and I think he's Pre looking to... Prepare to pass around is what we've been told. This uh, is the pass around. Oh, OK. So I think that there could be some stuff, something that's happened there. Maybe Ian... Who knows? We, we just, we're just sort of guessing here. We, we're not hearing what the teams are hearing. Well, so. we heard all cars to pass the number 77 car. That's the D-Station car. Um, pass around is happening now. Yeah. Uh, that's on the screen. Now, is that going to close the gap in LMP2? Is this going to be less traffic between the two? There is the Nielsen car. Still traffic passing. 
with the pass around. Yep. Sorry if we sound confused. That would be because we are. <laughs> so we will unpick this. Seeing a number of the P2 cars now lining up behind Michael now, Diamond. So now we've got race leader, the lapped Nielsen racing car, then the second place car from Ahmed Al Hati, and in line astern, we go all the way back to PJ Hyatt in eighth. So first to eighth are line astern right now. Yeah. Excellent. We're seeing the GT field also forming up after their initial pass pass around or wave by. And everybody is just forming up there. Kai Cozzolino is is he still on board the 82? Uh, no change to no. Charles Henry Summoney and he leads the race now from does. Maxi Merston. He was still on board. Yep. But again, here's the point. Now we've got Charles Henry Summoney uh, aboard, but uh, Alban Veruti is still on board and burning that time. Let's go down uh, while we're on the safety car to Claire, who has one of the battling GT drivers with her in pit lane right now. With me now, car number eight, EBM, set one, Santoso. Santoso, it looks like the Porsches have struggled a little bit this weekend. Tell me what went happened. Uh, yes, uh, I was struggling uh, during the race because this is my first time to do the endurance. So I'm still uh, don't know about my endurance to do a one full stint or two full stint. So, but it was fun, uh, especially today. I was uh, in a better situation and managed to like did some fighting uh, with other driver, with other car. So it's, it was quite fun. And what's happened to the car right now? Just now you passed the turn out. He did one lap and he came in. Uh, before I came in, like a few laps before, I got a warning of uh, water temp high, oil temp high, and I got a message from the engineer to do like open up. Uh, if I go behind the car, I did that, but maybe that's not enough. So I think that created a problem, but it seems like mm, there was something blocking in the coolant. So, yeah, that's it for us. Unfortunate. Thank you very much, Satuan. Yeah, thank you so much. Maybe he's, he's had a problem there. Yeah. Thank you. Possibly in that contact, uh, there was maybe some contact in turn one, lap yeah, one. Maybe, maybe. And, uh, that's that's been worth well, seeing. By the way, we are in it here in Asia for the Asia Le Mans series. And Setuan Santosa there from Indonesia. Great to have. It's so good to be back here and to see some old friends and some new friends. Absolutely. This is what it's about. It is not just about taking the cream of uh, what we have here in Asia and letting them do battle. It's about this emerging marketplace in Asia, seeing what it feels like to go head to head with some of the best that we can bring from Europe as well. This around is around the world, indeed, international endurance racing in all three classes. And uh, great to hear from him. Just he was basically finding out what he can do, finding yeah. out about his own endurance. Exactly, as well. he was saying there. He was he was talking about how he can ma he can manage it mentally, physically. Yes, you know the heat. Uh, you know the physical uh, strains of, of, of driving one of these race cars around this Sepang track and you know the sun's out now and the temperature will be rising Indeed. and it's going to be it's only going to get tougher from now onwards it's stifling uh, out there and we, as we said during yesterday's race it is the humidity that is just the energy drain oh, an absolute killer it really is and, and any car out there on track that doesn't have any great cooling system for the drivers those drivers are going to be suffering and suffering a lot and that's one of the big big drop-offs in performance when a, when a when a car starts to go slower and slower on the lap times on the scoreboard uh, in these sorts of conditions most of the time it's down to the fact that the driver is just overheating and he can't think clearly yep. and with clarity and he just can't perform anywhere near as well when his body temperature starts to rise there's an idea ollie uh, you, you've driven amongst the hottest of those cars, the massive heat generator that was the Chevy V8 in the front of the Corvettes <laughs> in the GT1 days. Yeah. How hot? It is ferociously hot. And when you do get hot, you, you know, your inability to, to think clearly, process data, process information, you are literally just driving along from memory and, and also to sort of like muscle memory, let's say. And it, it can get very confused. Your, your radio messages uh, coming back are maybe delayed or you are a little bit, you're rambling a little bit, let's say. And so it, it's up to the team at that point to really spot those points to say, okay, you know, he's clearly hot. 
you need to be got out of the car. That must be, have been a real challenge for the Corvette racing team to spot when you were rambling. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say so. <laughs> yes, they, they never picked up on the fact that I talk quite a lot. <laughs> oh, no, no, I wouldn't believe it. Uh, on pit lane at the moment, Viper Lisa Racing, by the way, Douglas Koo having uh, cleared the GT class, but will now drop back with the current uh, pit stop. P2 cars are teams ready for pit stops here. Still got the uh, lights on the safety car, so this is a good time to do if they can yep. behind the safety car. Just how many of these cars are going to be pulling to the right and down pit lane? I think we're going to see a quite number. a few of the P2 entries here because I think they're pretty close on their, on their fuel. Pretty close on their fuel window here. So full dry so far, under caution under the safety car after... Busy pit lane. Indeed, after a... A significant shunt between the 66 attempt to uh, Audi and the 21 Ferrari. I think that Ferrari is done. Yeah, I think it could well be, uh, or they're just going to work away, just making sure that they get it right. We just heard from uh, the EPM team and uh, Setuan Santoso that their car, the number eight, is out. Attempt to 66 looked to me to be pretty much done for the day. Everybody's doing driver changes here in P2. All 11 P2 cars on pit lane right now. In as well as a full couple, service, a couple of a couple of three of the uh, GT3s, the Amalur Racing Seven, the 19 from Leapets, 77 D Station, the 43 Sanzalock, and the 88 Triple Eight car, all on pit lane now. We're going to see a little bit of congestion here as cars get released, and other cars are still coming in. I'm interested to see how it all works out. You would have expected most of these teams would opt to do one of their time stops now. But will they opt to try to take track position? I think track position is, is more important for a lot of these guys right now. So I think that we're going to see, yeah, it's it's going to be all on performance. Certainly the way they're going about it, it looks like it's all on performance. I'm trying to get that track position. Seeing the uh, Nielsen car, I believe, just leaving. And here we are with the 55 Proton AO car. We'll up just for a moment there, but yeah, gathered he up by... He grabbed that he nice did. and quickly, and he's gunned on the right front. It's a light delay there as well, and that is going to cost him a place to the 22 yeah, car, no. and that was that was a delay. Yeah, he just didn't didn't let the car down. He did not let the car down, Can't, so he couldn't go. Doesn't grip very well when it's wheels are in the air. Yes. <laughs> Fresh air. So, Tier Sport, that was one at 1 minute 41, 99 racing exactly the same time. So it is a time stop. It's uh, that is a time stop. All of them doing a time stop wow. on that one. Uh, we were just wrong. looking for Duquesne, Algar Pro and AOC Branislava, but I think it's going to be the same story for all of them. Yep, 95, I think, Michael doing the Wainwright same. Right on the pit road as well at the moment. And the safety car is coming in this lap, so they've got uh, to get a wriggle on if they're going to be catching it's so much of a worry for the LMP2s to catch the train because they're in their own train anyway. Yes, they are. But, uh, so. GT cars on pit lane need to be clearing this pretty quickly. And, uh, they are beginning to leave the, the pit lane now. And not all of those are doing the longer pit stop. You see the 90 car here is coming through turn seven into turn eight, and it's right up behind it is the 99 racing. And it, on board, so it's Sally Yollock in the 90 car. We go green, and it is Charles Henri Summoni doing what he can do to make it as difficult as possible for Maxi Merston. But Merston is going to go through and into the lead. Alban Ferruti right there in third, and he's just going to have a great big dive Whoa, down the inside. Big lunge. Uh, so Ferruti uh, up to second place, so instantly Charles Henri Summoni gives best to. Pro driver Maxi Mouston and the something very shiny bronze indeed. Uh, Alban uh, Fruti up in a second. Steve Jans in the get speed car. He's having a look around the outside at turn three. Could he, could, yeah, it looks like he's got it done actually. He has. Coming up into turn four, hard on the brakes. Craft and 37, Craft Bamboo is going to go up the inside. So, yeah, he's um, from being P1 coming over the line, he's now on P5. Here is the lead battle overall as they cross the line. Shelly Ulich, Nikita Mazapan, TF Sport plays 99 Racing, prepared by TF Sport. Mazapan goes to the inside. Is Ulich going to have any of that? Is he going to uh, put up the fight here? I would have normally said he would. He's let it go, I think, at this stage. Yeah. But he's going to try for the outside, make it difficult as he can for the ex F1 driver. Sharp and take a breath there from Tom Ferrier, I'm sure. Indeed. 
Making sure it's on speed dial, don't worry. <laughs> Behind there, we've got Rennie Binder in the 22 and Tom Dillman in the three. We were, we were looking for him quite a lot of the race we yesterday, were, weren't we? We were. Where is Tom Dillman? We think at the end thought there might be an opportunity with the issue from Mathieu Vazivier for Dillman to have taken advantage. It wasn't quite close enough. It was not. It's a good race yesterday from DKR Engineering, starting their campaign off very well in defence of their title. Colin Braun is also on board the number four car. Uh, he's in a, a nice position actually. He's yes. only about three seconds back from the lead. Let's see Rivera pull up Shatan there in this train as well. So the top seven separated by about ten seconds with quick drivers at the back of those ten at the moment. We've got oh and coming into turn. Oh, oh. that was a contact. Oh. Double contact, I think. Yeah, double contact from the 82 there. I think he was pushed wide, Someone. surprised. Somebody go for the pit lane though, I think he did. By the 93. I think the 93 was looking to come up the inside with Darren Leung. As so we've got now this, these restarts are always tricky, trying to get this everything switched back on and this he's got the lead. C D Sport goes to the lead ahead of Cool Racing. And we saw this yesterday as well, didn't we? Alexander Bakantsov ahead of uh, Fabian Laverne. Sorry, Fabian Laverne ahead of Alexander Bakantsov, yep. my apologies. Yeah. Julian Kirby, by the way, is about 21 seconds back from this pair. So this compression of the field by the safety car. It, it, and it's just that restart. New drivers, tyres needing to be switched on, everybody's getting their head in the game and just being able to switch on nice and quickly. Some guys have got done it better than others. Sally Yulich has dropped back two and a half seconds from the leader here. We've got the 24 car in the hands of Alex Garcia now uh, off the lead lap but in the train here behind the number 90 car it's the 22 and the three looking to get by the young Mexican yeah and Hondo Garcia didn't have the greatest run yesterday but I did speak to the team and I think he had quite a seat issue uh, which was then giving him a back problem and I think that's where we started to see him sort of drop drop away so they've worked on that overnight and hopefully he's got himself a little bit more comfortable they're fighting through turn seven Impressive into stuff. eight. Yeah, and it was oh, wiggled out from Brown. the three car. Colin Brown getting alongside here as well, yeah. switches the inside, oh. has to defend the DKR car, defends hard there. That was aggressive, very aggressive in, uh, in Tom Dillman. Yeah. And uh, Tom, yeah, he was moving from from one side of the track to the other. You are allowed to make one move. Well, it was an attacking move on the Nielsen car, a defensive move against the CrowdStrike car. Yeah, and I think Collins just sort of biding his time here, just waiting to see if he can pounce and looking to get a good run through and off. Amado Harty there. Good, good, early run, a good early run from him. Yeah, and he's uh, just looking in the background there. We're seeing the 22 car go up the inside of the Attempto car. So they've got the Attempto car back out. Oh, excuse me, wrong. It's the other one. Wrong. Excuse me, that's uh, wrong. Shall only somebody, by the way, in and out of the pits. So I think he just ran through the pits, actually. It was 25 seconds. That's just running through. I suspect what he wanted was the team to have a look at the side of the car. Right. Right. New fastest lap of the race goes to Bullup Chatham, seventh place, pushing hard. The team there at the Right hand side of the shot of the green Oracle. I think we're seeing quite a, a number of drivers who are suffering with the heat here. We just got a message saying that Douglas Koo is suffering with the heat. Yeah. Struggling in that uh, the P3 car. He's someone who knows about the conditions he here. Does. He's the, he he's sure the local does. hero here. APR's 25, the 30 from Duquesne team, the 44 in the mix there. Carl from Bennett BRC. on board the 30. Yeah. Led the race yesterday. Freddie Thomason on, on board the 25. He's just sort of finding his way, isn't he, in P2 and, and with APR. Matthias Besch in the mix here, and he's going to go he through on the young Englishman. Run around the outside. Swiss, highly experienced, bright yellow car in the middle of these two. Yeah, he's never shy, is he? Out no, on track. no. And Matthias Besch. Yeah. Besch with a range of experience, LMP1, LMP2. Full course yellow is coming for Debris, and that will wow. be. Oh, is that from? Is that from, from the, the incident? 80, the 82, 82 car, indeed, and the 26. So we're going to be going to full course yellow. The Ferrari, the 296s have had an in, had quite a aggressive Ten, run. Nine, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five. A bit off by that car there. Three. Don't need to move that two, one. No, one. Is clear full Corsillo. Full Corsillo. Turn 15, please bear left. Turn 15, please bear left. I think the cool racing car has just cleared all that debris I off think the racetrack. Did. <laughs> did it very effectively. Yeah. Reminder, turn 15, bear left. Bear left, entry T15 until the exit. Yeah, I think that that's all been cleared up. So this is... We have uh, marshals on track at T15. So down 20 kilometers an hour, being monitored by race control, no opportunity to overtake. Gaps should not close. No. In theory. And I think that just there at turn 15, I think there was a number of cars that were, were difficult to know who was quite in front because everybody was sort of like side by side. And so they also had to just sort of rearrange themselves. Just looking here, there's clearly been a problem in traffic for the lead car because Sally Yolich is right back behind him. Reminder, yep. we have a Marshall on track at T15. So this there is the is. race director talking to us and to the teams. The teams will then relay that message to their drivers, telling them what the issue is, telling them what to expect, counting them into a full course shell, they'll count them out as well, and Sally Ulrich is right there, and also right there, really Binder is just one car between the two. Gilles, Gilles Duquesne taking a look at what's going on with his car, that car down in eighth position with Carl Bennett at the moment. It's, it's, it's sort of this, these sorts of periods where everybody just has a little bit of a breather, starts looking at the timing screen again, just trying to get their bearings of what's been happening, and sort of that sort of moment where it's so busy competing out there on the racetrack, we're just trying to get an understanding of what really is going on around. Just looking further back in that order, take a look at the DKR car when it comes over the crest. It should be there. there. It's Colin Brown, that's a long gap now. At 15, yes. 26, 45, in 30 seconds, we will remove Focosillo. So this is the beginning of the countdown back to green. But uh, that's a big gap that's been made up either just before or into the full course yellow. Yeah, I think that they were squabbling and uh, it's, yeah, Colin's. Colin is several seconds back Ten, here. Is nine, a long way back. Eight, there. seven. Six. So who's five, gonna be quicker on the trigger four, foot? Three, two, going on the one. One full course hero is removed. And, uh, the car goes. Yolich oh, goes the outside, goes the inside. This could get hairy. Yeah. Still traffic, still traffic. One more to deal with, and then there's clear air, but the Proton car trying to follow through as well. But this time, 99 racing get through. Sally Yolich can't quite get through on the last bit of traffic to get the job done. 99 racing will be able to get away. And Here Sally comes the proton car. It does. Sally's just got by. It's Rennie Binder who's going to be right on his gearbox very shortly to clear this traffic. Rennie's just trusting the 75. Oh, it's oh, a lead. 42. 42 Santa Lock. He's been turned around. Veruti. Right as they went back to green. Yeah, just got on it a bit too hard. Was it, was it alone? We don't know. We didn't see, we just saw the end of it. So, but that's the first mistake we've seen him make. Absolutely. Did get rid of the final bit of debris though, I noticed. <laughs> True. So here we go. Tom Dillman, by the way, has closed right in on this pair through that traffic. Yes. Colin Brown, though, two and a half seconds back. There's the gap between the orange and black car and the bright orange car, the orange and grey car. That's the fifth place car of Colin Brown. So is Sally Yolok has just dropped back a little from the 99 racing car, but it is going to be Rennie Binder filling his mirrors shortly. Tom Dillman is, is making also making progress. Come through through an off turn four. And there's Sally Yolok just getting past the Optimum car, and then it'll be Rennie Binder around the outside. Tom Dillman following through, getting it done before they get into turn six. And there's rolling that speed through turn seven, just trying to keep it clean, just building momentum as they're coming up to another group of GT cars. 
Is it Cottingham still on board? The Opta and 69 car. This is building up quite nicely to a bit of drama. We've got a mix of pros and ams in the cars at the moment. So a variety of paces. It's for the most part the non-professional or the aspiring uh, pros are among the more experienced guys. So the difference in pace is pretty close. Colin Brown with the fastest middle sector of the race so far as he works to close this gap and see how close it's much closer. He's trying to get back onto the rear of Tom Dillman, trying to pick up that toe. But as we've got GT cars and P2 cars right in the mix here. Yeah. Leader, by the way, is pulling away in this traffic. He is. Uh, Sally's having to go left and right to try and get past this GT traffic. Dillman loving good run here. He is on Rennie Binder. If Colin Brown can clear this traffic, he's got two cars between him and uh, Tom Dillman. There's going to be another one with the addition of the Kraft Bamboo car into the mix. Yeah. And he's cleared that get speed car and can, yes he can, Tom Dillman's managed to make it through as well. And I'm sure that Colin would have preferred him to be held up through that corner and Collins now to get past the get speed car. Yeah, he uh, has to just put the fastest lap of the race under the wheels of the crowd strike by APR car. Um, in this pursuit, we're going to wait till this settles down for a lap or two and then uh, we're going to introduce a new voice. I say new voice, it's a returning voice to the Asian Le Mans series to the second voice for just a few minutes. Uh, give Ollie a few moments off. With our surprise guest presenter. Now, we are here in Asia. Um, we like to welcome us as a change there. Tom Dillman going up the inside of Rennie Binder and he does go up and into third place. So we'll stick with this for just a moment. Colin Brown right there and he's going to be looking to see what he can do about Rennie Binder as well as they come sweeping through the, the uh, right-hander. So we'll keep an eye on this for a moment or two. Because it looks to me like Colin Brown is really on the charge right now in the number four car. Dillman through and into third place. It's where they finished yesterday. He want more than that. Watch as they complete this lap. And I'll tell you that I'm being joined by long-time Asian Le Mans entrant, supporter, driver, fan and Le Mans legend uh, with the team that bears his name. Welcome to the booth, David Cheng. Um, um, great to be here with everyone. It, it is so nice to see you and your lovely lady uh, here this weekend. Uh, I know you're looking at uh, potential future options, etc. David, it's been so, a bit of a while. When were your last uh, part of the Asian Le Mans series? I mean, our last race here was in the 2018-2019 season. Not and that long ago with the LMP3 car. Yes, that's right. And although some time away, but it still feels like home coming back. Tell us a little bit about the, the difference you've seen, even in that period of time, about the competition, the level, the depth of this field. I mean, it's amazing to come back and see this many cars on the grid and this level of competition, too. It's really raised the bar here. Yeah. I mean, just looking at it here, if I took, you know, some of our strongest lineup, maybe uh, in 2018, or 2018, yeah, 2018, 2019 season, you're running some very high-level drivers, but it would be very competitive right now. Your team, uh, with the help of Joe Sport in the LMP2 days, of course, internationally famous for an astonishing uh, race at Le Mans in 2017. Second and third overall for LMP2 cars against a full factory uh, lineup of LMP1 hybrids. Amazing stuff. Yeah, I mean, for us, you know, uh, I mean, really the saying goes is Le Mans picks the winner, doesn't it? And for us, yeah, we did a mega job that year, but at the same time, it was an amazing race. All the circumstances that happened to create the opportunities that it did for us, Le Mans is just special. Here we are, six, seven years later, the same basic package is here and is the lead class in the Asian Le Mans series. Tell us a little bit about this Orica 07. As, by the way, up the inside briefly of, not uh, managed to do it there, Colin Brown waiting to see what he can do, Ready Binder. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your impressions of these astonishing LMP2 cars. I mean, the cars are just fantastic to drive. You know, it's uh, everything about it, the aero of it. 
I mean, when we went from the old spec to the new spec and we did two, three days of testing, and I mean, we were constantly working out fit and coming from an aero car to an upgraded aero car, I mean, we did about one and a half days and, you know, my neck was sideways for a good five days. It, I mean, the improvements of everything on it has just been great. And seeing these cars running around Sepang, it really makes me want to jump in the driver's seat again. Well, we'll be seeing what we can do to help that one along. Now, there's a particular reason why I wanted to have you sit alongside me for a few minutes today. And that was because of a conversation we had. You instigated the conversation. You're correct to do so. And it was about a young man that is going to be, uh, well, not yet formally announced, but is going to be in a very significant driver's seat indeed later uh, and sorry, uh, into next year in the FI World Endurance Championship. But is this the right time, this is the right place to be talking about which driver? You tell me. Well, that would be Ye Yifei. Indeed. So. Now, spot this, uh, campers. Say again. Ye Yifei. Not or in Yifei Ye. Yeah. <laughs> or in Chinese, Ye Yifei. Indeed. Um, and that's because, and it's because that is yes. the, the way in which names are given in China and spoken in China is the opposite way to the way we do in the West. That's We're right. here in the Asian Le Mans series. Frankly, we should be doing this. Now, he's not here with us this weekend, but there are a number uh, of other of Chinese countrymen here that are. We are going to make that switch. We are going to make that change. And uh, with thanks to yourself and Nelly, your lovely wife, batting way out above your league there, my friend. Um, we're going to make that change with some fantastic uh, translation help and some pronunciation help that you gave us. We appreciate it as well. I mean, you know, with everything going on, it's it's something that, you know, it, for us it sounds so strange sometimes. Well, we'll get back to David in a moment. Uh, for right now, though, we're going to go down with Claire. She's with Duquesne team and John Falb. OK, we have car 30, Duquesne team over here. John, tell us, today the pace was a little bit different from what it was yesterday. Is the heat really making everyone struggle out there? Well, it's, it's definitely a lot more humid. And uh, I probably sweat twice as much today as I did yesterday. Um, but it, it doesn't feel hot, it's just super sticky. Track conditions for the drive? Uh, track conditions are pretty good. It's a little bit greasy. Um, but overall, pretty good. Thank you very much. So John looking calm and collected. Three wide here, though, and that is Renny Binder trying to get back onto terms. But that was Sally Yorks also being uh, in the mix there. And that is Tom Dillman. And now it looks like Colin Braun going to go through as well. So Dillman and Braun both through on both Yorks and Renny Binder. So a big turnaround all of a sudden there. It is Nikita Mazapan leads the race. Sally Yorks, though, drops from second to fourth in a single corner as uh, the Lee group, David, getting very I close to together. Say, what great racing we have here. Isn't I mean, it great? Look at that. And look Tell at this group of cars. One, two, three, four, five, six LMP2 cars in line of stone. Only one of them off the lead lap. So this is Mazapan leads from Dillman, Brown, Yolich, Binder, Rivera, Paul Loop, Shatan. Carl Bennett, by the way, the Duquesne team, is the man who's off the end of this train, but he's just put the fastest lap of the race in. It's now the 90 car being passed by the 55 of Paul of Chatan. So all of a sudden, it looks as if perhaps uh, Sally Yolich has hit a little bit of a wall in terms of the degradation in that car. You know, I was just chatting to some of the fans on our uh, YouTube live stream, and you know, we were having some conversations about the safety car and procedures being long and because of the way by. But look at the racing it's producing. It's great stuff. Um, LMP2. Sometimes, perhaps from those that don't take the trouble to take a bit uh, closer and look, they are all the same cars. They are all the same engine, they're all the same gearbox, but yet it produces fantastic racing. Why? Because we've got great gentleman drivers, great pro drivers, and most of all, really, really good race teams behind all of this. And that was what made the difference for your guys at Jackie Chan DC Racing with Jota Sports. A mix of some of your guys at times, uh, a mix of their guys and the, the, the heights to which Sam Hignett and David Clark are taking Hertz Team Jota must be a source of real pride to you. I mean, it, at the end of the day, this is a human thing. And it's the humans that make the difference in performance. I mean, you see with the LMP2 cars, 
the top team, although the top team and you know the bottom teams, the gap is very small because of the similar equipment. Yeah. But then that little margin is what we're all fighting against. It's like what we talked about yesterday with VOP. Yes. You know, you set a ceiling and it's everyone trying to get as close to that ceiling as possible. Absolutely spot on. David, a delight to see you back here in the paddock and in the media room yeah, with us. A delight to have you here. We'll wait for news of what you decide life is going to take you, whether or not there's back into the driving seat or back with the headphones, uh, not in the booth, but maybe <laughs> in the back of a garage somewhere, and what comes next for David Cheng. And I hope David Cheng racing. I mean, for me, you know, being here at Asian Le Mans from the first iteration of the series, there's nothing like this. And the value that the series brings in racing today is unlike anywhere else, too. And that's, you know, why I think we see a lot of American drivers, European drivers, teams all flooding to the series. It's a really great place to race and a really great place to be. Thanks for those words. We're very grateful for it. We are delighted to be back in Southeast Asia. We wait for details of where the series will go for next season. We've only raced two of race, uh, five races, and there's a lot more racing to come. 12 hours of racing in the United Arab Emirates. Still, what is that? Uh, two hours and 20 minutes uh, to go before we're done here in Sepang and Southeast Asia for this year. For now, David Chang, thank you so much. Thank you, Graham. Back to the action, and it's a 10 second gap between Tom Dillman in the number three decar engineering car, fending off the now very close attention of Colin Brown, who's just put in the fastest lap of the race, a 153.725. See how that one emerges, and we keep an eye on the, um, the gap to the leader, currently at about 10 seconds. Uh, Will that be coming down? It should be because the pace of the two chasing drivers are side by side in contact there. Uh, Ollie Gavin returning to the mic. Absolutely, and, and Colin Braun's just got it done. <laughs> I was just standing at the back of the booth there, back of the studio, while David was on, on, on air with you and just watching this P2 race really come alive. It's been fantastic to see. Oh, brilliant to see David as well. I mean, it great, great words from him. Lovely to have dinner with him last night and, and his lovely wife. And it was uh, great, great then to see. But back to the racing, you just seen Colin putting on a little bit of a masterclass there and how to get it done in P2, how to work the traffic, how to pick your point. You know, really bringing the car through, keeping it pretty clean, but ultimately bringing the car to that P2 position. And now he's going to set about trying to close down on the 99 racing car and see if he can make some headway into that 12 second lead that the 99 racing car has built. With that battle, that lead has gone up to 12 seconds. That came courtesy of a lap into the 153s for the leader. So that was a move executed with bluntness. It was, and with it, aggression. Seemed, it also seemed uh, that, that Sally, uh, Sally Yolog in, in the TF Sport 90 car, he was just caught out, always sort of like on the wrong side of it, and he was just bumped down the order. And now he's some 18 seconds back, three seconds back from uh, Paul Luc Chatan, and I think that he just needs to reset, have a think, and just really just focus on getting back in the groove, hitting your marks and uh, delivering again, because we know that Sally can get it done. It's just, I think he's just been, been thrown a little bit off his rhythm. Absolutely. Tom Dillman will be gathering himself after that through. It was executed, I thought, with a surgical precision of an elbow in the chest from a commuter looking for that seat on the tube. <laughs> it looked a bit You've never done that, have you? Never. Never done that. No, no. no. With the old, little old lady with a stick. No. You know, just, just shoving normal, around the way. I normally go for the trip. Oh, do you? <laughs> See, there you go. You show your tactics, new strategy there straight away. Uh, by the ruthless, way, in ruthless. The, in the other classes, it is CD Sports still leading LMP3 as this emerging battle. This this is going to be a core privilege cool, stage like this uh, for the next hour or so. CD Sport lead Cool Racing, 28 seconds, quite a big gap there. Um, and that's come courtesy of what was a long stop for Breton Racing. They've had a bit of a repair underway there. Santa Rock Racing's Al Banfrut, he's still at the wheel of that car. <laughs> and uh, he is Back in the lead. Yes, indeed. Even of with the spin. Gans. Absolutely. So, Santa Rock Racing from Get Speed to number nine. Then the Pure Racing Porsche. So, it is uh, Audi from AMG, from Porsche, from McLaren in the hands of James Cottingham. So, this has been a great opening stint from James. Colin Brown, by the way, now he's got ahead of Tom Dillman. He puts the hammer down. He set the fastest lap of the race. It's a 153.696. And Colin is not literally, but figuratively, on fire. <laughs> 
Let's hope he's not actually on Probably fire. quite warm, yeah. but, uh, but, yeah. but hopefully no worse than that. Yeah, I think a lot of the drivers are struggling with the heat today, but it's, it's certainly going to be taking a toll. Uh, but I, I'm sure that um, Colin has, is fit, he's, he is very focused. And, and hungry. He, he and is extremely hungry and wanted to get this deal done and get that crowd strike racing by APR car back uh, on into the lead. So Brodo looking on, Alessio Rivera, his man in the 83 car. It's the typical thumbs up pose from the multiple, 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 multiple champion. So six. Five now. Five, I'm looking for six. I'm looking for six. Uh, it is Alessio Rivera at the moment in fifth place. Okay. He's looking to deal with Rennie Binder ahead. Yeah. There is this battle. And just behind him is Paul Mshata. Yes. Not a man you want to see in your mirrors. Not really, but around the outside goes the 83 car. Trying to get it done, but it's a long way around there. They're enjoying this. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Matthew Vazivier in the foreground. And this is the battle still. Rennie Binder. Uh, happier, I think, in this condition than he was to go yesterday. Up the this inside, time, oh. and he's going to—is he going to be able to use the traffic? He's got it done before the nicely, traffic. Nicely, nicely done. done. Yes, yes, that's what oh. it means. Yeah, of course, very happy with that move. Nicely executed there. He was setting him up for a number of corners, left and right. The up, uh, you know, the undercut. Just got to go on the inside. He's got it well done, Randy Pinder. Has he managed to, managed to hold that? I don't think he can. Okay. Runs wide. It's a drag race now. Who's got the better run out that corner, Ollie? Well, it's going to be nip and tuck between the two cars. Bit of side draft coming up here. Are they going to try and use that P, the, the GT car? Oh, but, oh it's super close here. It was aggressive Rennie there. Bender from... has actually managed to get that done around the outside. Well oh. done. Well done, Randy Pinder. And that was. That was sort of like a, a bit of a, uh, a surprise attack there coming up into turn 15 and then he's managed to get it make it stick yeah impressive i don't think unless your rivera was expecting that i think I he thought he got it done he was only ice forward at that point absolutely and uh, possibly could have defended that and he realized just how close binder still was yeah but uh, all that left the potential for paul of chatan is dropping back from this pair just in this phase of this lap able to just stick with the uh, program at this moment. Colin Brown, though, way and clear. He's making his escape, isn't he? He is, but not able to match with the pace, uh, the traffic, rather, the pace of the leader. And that's always the thing, multi-class racing, particularly around here at Sepang, you've really got to be working the traffic right and you've got to be picking your points, and sometimes you just don't get a run, and it can get very frustrating. This, is, this is the difference, isn't it, between the fans, and I count myself as one, and the drivers in LMP2, the fans will have looked at this entry and thought, great, 23 LMP, uh, GT3 cars. And LMP2 drivers will be thinking, oh, great, 23 uh, GT3 cars, because that's traffic, and it's going to be very busy on every lap. You're either going to be dealing with traffic or anticipating where that traffic is going yeah. to be next. All of a sudden, though, this back straight leading down to turn 15 is just full, with the exception of one BMW of LMP2 Oricas. Round turn 15, they come this battle and they are closing in on Tom Dillman. Uh, Rennie Binder and Alessio Rivera now. Yeah, just it's just how that traffic falls and how you can get a run. And you know, you look like you manage the gap, and then all of a sudden you, you get on, on a, behind a slower car and you can't get through. You lose all that momentum, and everybody else then catches you up, and all of a sudden your mirrors are full and the pressure's right back on again. Well, look, Chatan looks to me at the moment not to be on directly on the attack, looking after the package, looking after the tyres, looking after the car, and waiting, waiting, waiting for a better moment to go. And the teams will be asking that. They'll be asking for you to, OK, you need to be looking at attacking and moving the car forward, but manage the resource. Yep. We don't want you to be using the extra fuel or the extra tyre. The degradation is big here. We want to make sure we're keeping some of that performance in, in, in reserve. Be kind to the tyres, don't overheat them, don't slide the rear of the car, don't flash the surface, don't take that life out of the tyre. You've got to sit there just in the sweet spot. And that's what all of these guys are going to be working to do. Just seeing a little bit of radar there, which is, are we going to be seeing a repeat of yesterday? Right. The clouds don't look so no. bad at the moment. But it can hit and hit hard and hit fast here at Sepang. Let's yeah. at the moment anticipate not hardest part of the track here for these Michelin tyres. You get that real heat build up all the way through 10 and 11, and then you come to this part of the track, 
13, 14, braking and turning, trying to get back to the apex curve there at 14, and then you get on the throttle off of 14 and the drive down to 15. That's where those left side tyres are really going to be screaming. Good little spell here from Rennie Pinder, lost that position, but then uh, attacked back almost immediately on Alessio Rivera and did so successfully. Alessio so is looking. Gonna get, he's got a better line here, but I don't think he can get it done with that. It is a weird corner, that turn it 15. Is, it is so, so strange. It's all off camber and he can take multiple lines there. But you do notice also on the exit there, the exit kerb, everybody's just worn away the mud on the exit there <laughs> as they're using all of that exit kerb they possibly can. Okay, turn one, turn two. Another tricky one to get right. Lots of different lines there, attacking lines, defensive lines. Very all... little curb really used there by the yep. P2 cars at the apex, but the exit curb, again, that's another spot where they're using all the road and more. Also a really difficult combination to get the traction right to get fired down into the next combination here yep. for the next overtaking opportunity. And that's what this circuit is all about. It's just all about building those points that you can really generate that lap time. And you've really got to hit those marks. And if you get backed up in any of those points, you lose a lot of lap time. And that's where the big losses come in traffic. Uh, we have got four drive-through penalties Whoa. going. And they include for the GT3 leader, uh, Alban Verruti, uh, the number 42 car, plus the number nine car, that is uh, the Getspeed yeah, car, get speed, Anthony yeah. Bontone, uh, the 56 oh, car. Side by side here, 22 and Rivera has managed to make it stick, getting past Rennie Binder. Again. More clapping and cheering yes. from the A, of course. Big thumbs up, love that. Yep, uh, completed that is the 56 Project 1 BMW and the 82, that is the AF Corsa Ferrari for safety car procedure infringements. All four will be serving drive-through penalties. That's another example there with Rivera, who's just, he was like, okay, I didn't get it done the first time. Now I've got to pick my point. Really make it stick, but be patient. Don't be rash, just pick your point and deliver. Yeah, Sally Ulrich, by the way, still in contact with this group. He's been uh, still in contact very much so with Alessio He's definitely Rivera. better off of that corner, Randy Binder. He's got his line and his style, and the way that the car's set up seems to really work off of 15. Not so much in the AF Corsa car, but the AF Corsa car is stronger in other points and other spots on the track. And now the Viper Nisa car has got in between them. That should allow Rivera to actually make his escape and get going here. Around the outside, that's a tough one there for Rennie Binder. Dominic Hang has seen him coming and have given him racing room there. So yeah. well done to Dominic. He's yeah. taken over from the, we gather from Claire, somewhat he's affected Douglas Koo. Yeah. And uh, Rivera immediately with Tom Dillman. Yeah, he is. And I think there's, there's pace in that car. Definite pace in that car. We've got Matthew Vaxavier to come in to finish off the race in the 83. Still talent yeah. galore to oh, come. Really suppose. wide there from the Breton car. Yeah. It was pushed wide. I think there were three wide there into turn five, through turn five, which is never really going to work. Still no major attack coming from Paul Chatan at this stage. So he's not quite yet with Rennie Binder. So Jolic is a couple of seconds back from that pair. Carl Bennett for the six seconds back. So we we'll complete the top eight. Yeah. So uh, Rivera it is. Here is the 42 car leading GT3, still in the hands of Alban Ferruti. Has he taken his drive through? No, he's not. Right. No. no, he's not. None of those four cars have yet. So Rivera is actually closing in on Dillman. This is a slight delayed stop there. I think they were penalty, serving a penalty, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It's the 74. 75 car. Now they did indeed start in the 75 car. Uh, is it Dan, was it Dana? Who was there was well some confusion up. over, over yeah. that, wasn't there? Who uh, was, who was actually was really not, behind the wheel? Not the listed driver. So have, that's the penalty most probably that they're serving there for that possibly. Like Neumann now shown aboard the car. So unless he's got in after Dana, Donna, sorry. Um, not sure what's going on there. We'll try and get uh, Claire to have a chat with Team Motor Park to find out what that was all about. Rivera there closing in on Dillman. That was a second quicker. Most probably navigating his way through the traffic a little bit better. And I think this AF Corsa P2 Orica is dialing itself in. It seems to really be coming alive as we close. We're getting close to the halfway point here. 
Maybe the track evolution seems to be suiting them a little bit more right now. And uh, just seeing how he's managing that tyre. They're about 12, 13 seconds off the lead. Uh, the major change, by the way, in this order is that uh, Colin Brown is now beginning to make inroads into the lead. It's just popped out about nine seconds yeah. now. It was down to about eight, but I think a bit of traffic has just it's curved his... But that his... had gone up to about 13, 14 seconds at one point. Yep. So Rivera deals with the number 56 BMW. That's another of the cars It will be... Sean Galeo just coming out of the pits there. Yeah, that, he has now served the drive-through for that car. So Sean Galeo had already got into the car and has done a drive-through. Right. So three more GTs, including the leader, still to serve a drive-through penalty. Oh, I think Rivera was about to go to the outside of the 77, had to check up, cut back to the inside. And that is one of the things about dealing with multi-class racing, is trying to predict where cars are going to go. And you're thinking, I'm going outside. All of a sudden, that car's going outside. You then have to change your approach, go back to the inside, and it's tough to do on a corner like that. So, Paulo Chauvin uh, threw him past the traffic. That gets a bit of clear air as Sally Olich still has a couple of cars to clear before he can get with the train that is now forming for third place. Top Dillman, Alessio Rivera, Paulo Chauvin, Reni Binder, Sally Olich. Sally's dropped away a little bit there. He's... he's uh... Struggling a little bit in this in this stint in the car, some four and a half seconds back. Apologies, I just missed uh, miss so identified seven Rennie and Binder. Half, sorry, seven it's seconds. Binder back. that was uh, there behind Paul and Chatan, not Sully. So I think uh, yeah, it looks as if the performance somehow is dropping off there for the number 90 car. Leader at the beginning of this race, of course. 99 racing here coming through turn seven, turn eight, and uh, you know Colin is chipping away at that lead that it has. It's eight and a half seconds now. It was 7.7. 7. It's just gone back out again to about 8.5. But Colin is slowly but surely catching that 99 racing car. Four minutes away from the halfway point of this second race of the weekend. We've got track limits uh, warnings. For both the for first and second in P2. Yep, and they are eight and a half seconds apart, as Ollie says. It's the high-class racing car, the number 20. This is the lead car now to Fabian Laverne coming up to try to lap that car, I think, for the second time. So it's not gone well for high class racing. No. I suspect at least part of that is safety car. Yeah, field back is, yeah, I think that is almost a lap down, aren't they? Yeah, uh, they I are. think they're two laps two, down. Two laps down, yeah. Apologies. Yeah. So the pace is pretty good here, but something's gone on with high-class racing it wasn't in the last well they've had a disaster in the pit lane uh, because their last stop was one minute and 39 seconds Whoa. and that's a second short yeah that's never good pit stop which means you've got another one at 140 whereas one you could have done at about 104 so something's been going awry in the house of high class yeah uh, ready binder on pit lane in the 22 car as is the number seven Almana racing by Getsby car. They've had a bit of a torrid time with a couple of drive through penalties. Martin Conrad, yeah, he was doing a full service here. So we are now into the pit stop window for the GT3s. Sounds yeah. like racing, by the way, uh, performed their uh, drive through and lose the re lead of the race as a result. So Alex Meekin goes through the pure racing car but now he pit makes lane. his pit pit, lane, his pit stop yeah this will be though his routine pit stop which of course Veruti will still have to perform yeah he will so just nice nice and calm on the driver change you see the driver there he's going to be getting in just helping the driver that's getting out and he is there just calmly getting out it's always with the driver change you want to do it quickly swiftly but calmly there's more penalties coming, by the way. It's a drive-through penalty as well for the 25 Algar Pro racing car, Freddie Tomlinson. He's taken that immediately. And it's a stop-and-go penalty for the car we just mentioned, high-class racing, uh, for a safety car infringement. So they are having a pretty torrid afternoon here, high-class racing. Pure racing go to work on the number 91 car. They came in from the lead. Yep. Uh, Alban Verruti, after taking that drive-through, has come around to complete his second full stint for the second day in succession. So 
four hours of running for Alban Veruti in two four-hour races. And he has got some very impressive averages as well. If you're looking at his total stint, yeah, comparing him to the other bronzes, he is exceptionally fast. And heads up as well, by the way, great performance, pitting from third. Uh, Darren Young in the Team Project 1 BMW, dropping down the order at the moment as others who've not yet pitted uh, overhaul them. Brendan Leach goes to the uh, lead in the Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini. EBM's 84, the surviving EBM Porsche, after what we think was a cooling problem for the, the brake car has led that one into retirement. Good to see actually how that uh, Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini it cycles through after we're done with all these stops. Because they did have that spin, didn't they, right it at did. the start? So, but uh, Brendan Leach has, has done a fine job in that. He's uh, He's been pretty quick. Joel Sturm leads the pits in the Pure Racing number 91 car. He's currently running third. Santa Lot Racing's 42 after stellar stuff again from Alban Veruti. Their bronze rank, rank driver, Gilles Magnets, aboard that car. And the 93 from Team Project 1 uh, just being overtaken um, on track by uh, the sister car, the 56 car. And they will always a pit stop at that uh, car. Comes back out in the hands of Christian Bogle, who actually emerges ahead of Gilles Magnus. So Santelot shuffled back in the order. A win not yet assured for the Audi. So Colin Brown still at about the 8.4 second mark. We're just a handful of seconds from halfway now. 99 Racing from CrowdStrike Racing by APR. DKR Engineering, the reigning champions in the hands of Tom Dillman. 6.2 seconds back with the AF Corsa 83 of Alessio Rivera now back behind that car. Well, let's go down to Claire. She's been scouring for talent on pit lane and she's found James Cottingham at Optima Motorsport. with us from Optimum Motorsport. James, tell us, kept the car on track. How's it going? Yeah, really well. We had uh, a really difficult qualifying because it's just so messy that I just didn't manage to get two good laps in. So both days we started really far back. Yesterday I got turned around really early on, which was really uh, quite frustrating, but it is what it is. Uh, but today I just kept my head down, kept it clean, and uh, the, the temperature was lower today. Yesterday was like super hard, first time in this sort of climate doing double stint. Um, obviously with the ACO there's a lot of like new regulations I'm not quite used to from my British GT experience so far. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it, had some really good clean racing and uh, you know, even though I was feeling a bit unwell this morning because of yesterday, I think the adrenaline's just pushed me through it. So yeah, really pleased with um, you know, how we've got on and I think Sam and Tom will do a top job and I'm just really like fingers crossed that we can get a podium. Well done, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, James Cottingham had a real standout season, didn't he, in British GT alongside Johnny Adam in the Mercedes yeah. AMG. Yeah, he's been extremely quick. Our trouble here, though, for the nine get speed car, that car, the Antonio Bartone uh, crude car, this part. Heating issue, over it seems like Locked a cooling together. issue. They've got all the fans on the front of the car. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that's maybe from some contact or. It doesn't look to be, does it? No. But is there, is there something here on the track that's being flicked up from, you know, the dust and the, the debris that's getting into the radiators and causing causing those to be blocked and reducing the, the cooling efficiency of the cars? I don't know. But, but James has done a, done a fine job. I did speak to him just before the start of the race and he was concerned about the heat. He was, he was pleased that it was a little bit cooler today than it was yesterday. But um, sometimes you can also find that the first time that you're really getting yourself heat soaked in the car over a weekend, when you're in the car for a long time, that that's the worst time. And then your body somehow adapts and it tunes itself to that heat and that level that you're going to be at. And maybe that's something that uh, James is also experiencing today. But yet yeah, a fine job. Deliver the car back to Sam Dehan in a really good spot. And I think that here we are in, in, the, uh, in the 69 car right up behind the... Hoshino, the number 77 D station car, and uh, it looks like he's going to take that, got that spot up yeah. the inside. Fifth place goes the way of the Optimum Motorsport so car. So I think they're really in a nice spot now, and, and they should be able to chase down that podium position. That's Jill Magnus, by the way, in the uh, the 42 car, having had that double stop, the drive through for Alban Veruti, as we've got LMP2 cars, the top five cars on pit lane now. Carl Bennett is still aboard, I believe. 
and uh, Carpet and Bull, the Duquesne team car, 99 Racing on pit lane, Colin Brown on the way out and taking 11 seconds on pit lane out of the lead car and that should, should put Colin Brown back in the lead, uh, into the lead rather. Yeah. Because he wasn't 11 seconds back when, uh, or was he? He was just about, they must be side by side, where are they on track here? Yeah. Right together, in what order we need to see. Rivera's come out in P2. And I think that uh, when that cycles through, I think we're going to see... That Colin Brown leads. He Colin is. Brown leads. Rennie Binder third. Rivera is fourth. And Tom Dillman fifth. And are we actually going to see it shuffle around again? Or Shatan, is he up the... Oh, no, that's sorry, Viper So Confused. Binder didn't pit in that cycle, so I don't think. No, no he I didn't. So he did not. But they're, they're all on three stops. We've all done three stops now. Uh, it was a very short stop last time for the Proton car. There is the Proton car, and there is Alessio Rivera on a oh. charge. Trying to get through the inside there in between seven and eight. That's brave. So whatever happened on pit lane, it was a minute on pit lane for Colin Brown and the crowd stuck racing by APR. 99 Racing puts the 99 car, Nikita Mazapan, out with a minute and 11 seconds. Yeah, that was so a bobble. lost 11 seconds on pit lane. They must have had an issue there some sort. 105 for Alessio Rivera now, of course. That's a lightning quick stuff from the APR crew. Yeah, it was very, very quick. So we're seeing Rivera winding his way into turn 14, just trying to get a good run off, and they've just got bottled up behind a P3 car. Is he going to be able to get onto Rennie Binder here, or is Rennie going to cut? Oh, no, Rennie has been in the pits, excuse me. Just seeing that they've done three stops. Oh. He's not on an outlap, so he must have stopped the lap before. Yeah, he must have. But they had a lightning quick stop, 56 seconds on pit lane for that's, the first time. That's what, you know, so Rivera's now got to work and work and work to get past Binder again, which will be frustrating for him. Much better day for any Binder. He was quick in the dry. He was he just, was. I think, in no changeable conditions when, the, when it was just... Uh, a horrible time, didn't he? Yeah, Binder. he just struggled a little just to keep the tyre switched on. Oh, he's run a little bit wide That's there, the and I think Rivera has maybe got a slightly better run here. Is he going to be able to get up the inside coming into four? It's going to be a last-minute lunge. Uh, he's going left and right looking, but he thinks better of it. He's just keeping his power to dry for another corner. Oh, there's uh, Binder has run wide. Let's get a little rattled from the pressure there from the car behind. Is he, uh, is he going to be able to still build the lap? Coming down into seven, they've got some traffic ahead in a 91 racing, pure racing car, just in front of them. He'll be trying to pick a point when he can get by. That's Joel Stern, by the way, sitting second, but I think effectively leading with the Leap of Motorsport Lamborghini. Uh, just about, I think, uh, ready to pit. So deep into now the third hour of this race. Lamborghini lead, Joel Stern for pure racing, Team Project One. Uh, Sean Galel third. It's uh, Lamborghini from Porsche from BMW. Pinned around the outside of that pure racing 91 car, just getting it done. And Rivera is just looking to come back up the inside of it, whether he can get the right run off down from 14 into 15. We've got the Audi, the 43 Santaloc car. It's got its indicator on. Yeah, I think you can see them coming. Yeah, oh, Rennie oh, Binder's gone very wide deep there. That's a, that's a weird line, but it works for him. It does. That 22 car has got very good traction off of there. Very good. Warning to Matthias Besch for abuse of track limits in the number 44 car. That car running strongly and just 30 seconds off the lead in eighth place. Colin Brown leads two and a half seconds clear of 19 racing car that led through to that pit stop cycle. Rennie Binder, this is the battle for third with Alessio Rivera, Tom Dillman. Ten seconds off this, Ollie. Yeah, and it's it's this is the, the important stint here. This is the second stint that they're doing on these tyres. And this is where you could see some cars either really making progress because they've looked after their tyres in that first stint or really dropping back because they haven't and they've used up all, all of that goodness. Yeah, that's a battle. Tom Dillman and Paul Luke Chatton is nose to tell, by the way, for fifth place. 
whether that's uh, maybe Dillman there has, has done that. Maybe he's used up a bit more in the first stint and he's now starting to struggle a little. We'll see how it unfolds. City Sport ready for a pit stop from Fabio Laverne. Is that that's Nick, Nick Adcock, Nick I think. Adcock, is it? Early for him to go in the car. Unless he's going to be cycled through. Possibly. Maybe they're deciding what they're going to do about managing the heat here today. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Certainly warmer today out there. It's at the moment. I'm going to say that loud and then I'll be shouted at later. And no sign of rain. <laughs> oh my word, you've said it now. That's it, game over. Jane's <laughs> going to come in here and remove you from the studio. Yeah, Jane Rowe, the um, media manager here at the Asian Le Mans series. Long time friend of Jane. And Brilliant job. She does keep us in order. Yeah, she she does. Needs to be need to be kept in order. Yeah, great boss. So Brown, Mazapan, Binder, Rivera, Dillman, Paul of Chatan, Carlton, a Bennett with a good run here. Matthias Besch, Sally Yolich, and Freddie Tomlinson. Then we've got the lead car. That's the top ten. Lead car in LMP3. Incident involving cars three and four in the pit lane under investigation. Wow. So that's the Dillman car and Colin Braun. Wow. And yeah, that is peculiar. Let's wait and see how that unfolds. But Renny Binder is actually doing a fine job he here. Is. And uh, I think he may well have uh, been keeping a little bit of performance there. Wait to unlock it in this second stint. Let's see how it goes. But uh, Rivera. Keeping it honest, isn't he? He is. He's unable to really make any headway. And uh, Binder is learning from yesterday applying that experience. The, the, the other thing to mention here is we've got a lot of experience here in the LMP2 class. Not so much with the LMP2s on the Michelin tyre because it's Goodyear tyres that uh, was for the final year in the WC. It's yeah. Goodyear tyres in the European Le Mans series. It is Michelin tyres in the Emerson Tech Sports Car Championship. So does Colin Brown actually have a bit of an advantage on that? He Maybe he does, but... Uh, that said, he didn't race in LMP2 this year, but yeah, still. Yeah. He does know the tyre well. Yeah, he does. It's from what he's been running on in uh, the IMSA WeatherTech Championship, I think it'll be different to this. The GTP cars are running a different tyre, aren't they? Well, look, Chatan, though, has raced all season and successfully in a LMP2 car. Here comes the CD Sport car, Nick Adcock, we think, ready. As with every Ligier, it is a right-hand drive car, the Ligier. It is. Uh, that's that's uh, because I asked the question some time ago. That is because in analysis of the circuits that the cars race at, they believe that's the most advantageous. Yeah, uh, it's the right side as well. Yeah, the correct side. That's what I mean. There's 20 cars just getting past the Herbert Motorsport car, and this is um, now in P4. Andreas Ford back. Uh, they're just still that little bit off, aren't they? About a second or so away. That's on racing, looking on, enjoying their second have been a lap away, aren't they? Not a second. But, um, good stuff from the Czech base squad, with assistance from our friends at Team Farage. CD Sport. Oh, they haven't got the right front on. The car needs to go back up again. They missed that. Is it that? Oh, oh just a little bit. Uh, just needed a little bit there. more urgency there, getting that on. It was a bit casual, it looked. And Nick's just, yeah, pleased that that right front has been gunned on properly. Getting back out on track. Is that going to have an effect on how they go about racing Breton? It's a change here for oh. fourth in GT3, or is it? This is Gilles Magnus trying to get on, to, uh, on terms with Jade Najeda, the young talent from Australia. Yeah, that Craft Bamboo car has had a very good run today. After a very, that. very difficult day yesterday. I had a chat with uh, Antares Hour out of the other car that was troubled uh, yesterday. We had a quick chat and I said, look, remember, it's five races. It's a slightly longer season. It was being very down about the prospects of the retirement yesterday for the car. Everybody can have a bad day. Yeah, they can. But they've, they've uh, managed to collect themselves together and deliver a very good race so far. It is a stop and go penalty as well for a safety car infringement for the Nielsen Racing Team. They are not having a good day. No, it is a tough one down there at Nielsen. Not sure what's happened there, exactly what the infringement is. We're on board here with a 17 car coming down into turn one. 
Danielle Frost had a great yeah. race yesterday in Singapore. Very, very strong. This is the 24, and this is not their stop and go. No. no just checking they've not taken that. They have not. No. There's Colin just uh, working away in the lead here. It's just up, out to 3.3 seconds over the 99 racing car. So edging away, but it's edging away. He is not up the road. You can see in the background the 99 racing car. Well, now into the second half of the race, the four hours of Sepang, the second of our four hour races here. Let's look back at the highlights. Sonny Grid and Earl Bamba, our world champion Le Mans winner, multiple endurance champion Francois Perrault are amongst the drivers uh, on the grid with the combined management of the ACO, LMEM and SRO behind this Asian Le Mans series. Away they went for the formation laps under cloudy but sunny skies after the pretty apocalyptic rain at the end of yesterday's race. No sign of nerves at the moment from some of these teams as the lights go green and it was Michael Dynan got the power down in the TF Sport number 90 car and an easier run to and through turn one this time. There were no dramas for the LMP2 field. The dramas came behind in the overlap between the rear of the LMP3s and the head of the GT3s, as we'll see in just a moment, with the white Mercedes AMG uh, impacting the rear, Martin Conrad, the rear of Douglas Coo's bright green and black, or bright, bright uh, green and grey, Viperisa Racing Ligier, sent the Ligier around, and then there's a bit of bumping and grinding as the rest of the pack of GT3s made their way through a tiny gap. This was a big moment for Gabriel Rindoni of the inside of the 21 Ferrari, and then lost the car to a half spin to the outside. Big battles in LMP2, but this is a big moment to the bottom of the screen. The dust was the clue that Tom Falb was having difficulties straight through the gravel tap trap, but kept it out of the wall and kept the car uh, in the race. Great battle here between James Cottingham and his British GT Championship rival, indeed the British GT champion, uh, Darren Young. It went the way of the McLaren driver at that stage. Contact here after a miscue under braking from the 66 uh, Audi that took out of proceedings the AF Corsa car and the Audi after this damage suffered in that debacle. Safety car was called as a result of that. When we got back to Green Flag Racing, it was the 90 car from CF Sports overtaken by the 99 Racing Orica, also run by the top UK team. Though that car, Jordanian flag, Gilles de Cain, keeping an eye on proceedings for his number 30 car. It's very, very warm out there. And then cracking stuff, particularly here between Renny Binder and Alessio Rivera. Rivera managing to get his way by. But Binder would come back at the AF Corsa man and retake that lead. And that uh, battle is still underway with multiple two and three car battles in LMP2 ongoing. Paul at Chatan in the number 55 Proton car, also trying to get involved in this. But, uh, Binder having a rich vein of form in a battle for third place, which he still has in his possession. Either side of the traffic, there was a moment there where Rivera did get back ahead, but Binder, through the pit stops, retook the, the third place. Colin Brown leads in the CrowdStrike race by APR car. Yeah, and Colin's lead has shrunk a little bit there with Nikita Mazapan just closing in in the 99 racing cars, down, at, down to 1.3 seconds. Yeah, so that uh, quite possibly would have been a bit of traffic. Yeah. But uh, this isn't done. Colin Brown, once he's by, would have been looking to hair off. That's not happened yet. We've got an investigation underway uh, that, that involves that car. We don't know what happened, but there was some kind of incident on pit lane between the number three car that sits in fifth, the DK engineering car, and that number four car, I can only presume that may have been a hint of an unsafe release by it's, one or other car. Yeah, it's possible, that's possible. We're seeing now in the GT class, the Santa Lock racing car, the, the Audi R8 that's been so strong throughout this weekend is uh, just slowly marching up the order. Uh, Gilles Magnus has got past Jaden Ojeda in the Craft Bamboo Racing Mercedes-AMG, and he's now onto the rear of, I 
believe that's Sean Galeal that's in the 56 yeah. BMW from uh, Project One. Yeah, so it's Brown, Mazatlan, Binder, Rivera, Dillman, uh, Shatan, Carwatana, Bennett, Matthias, Besh are your top eight in LMP3. You can see on the screen there, Breton Racing lead the way. The debut weekend in LMP3, CD Sports after what was a slightly messy stop there, but not disastrous. It was only a they caught it, didn't they? Second. They yeah. did, did catch it. They did. Daniel Frost uh, herring away uh, in the number 17 cool racing car. But big gaps again in LMP3 here, and there's fuel back. Uh, not now a lap down on the third place car, but a lap down on the race leader. And, uh, another difficult afternoon for Viper Nisa. We just saw a shot of their pit box. Uh, yeah, we've got a further investigation here, by the way. Car 93, that is Team Project 1's 8th place BMW, uh, at Turn 1 with Car 75, which is the Team Motor Park AMG, a collision between the two under investigation. Again, an incident I'm afraid we did not see. In um, GT, it's Brenda Leach leads by 32 seconds. I think that car is out of sequence. I think it is as well. Uh, yeah. Joel Sturm in the Pure Racing uh, Porsche, second, 32 seconds, I say the gap. Then we've got the Vibonisa Racing Ligier, Dominic Ang making his way very effectively back up the order before we get to Gilles Magnus, who's gone past not just Jade uh, Jada. Uh, but also Sean Galeal for third place. So Santanok, after being won the car's Delta drive-through penalty, on a recovery drive. This, by the way, is the lead battle, and it is back to being a battle. It is, and and you know maybe Nikita Mazpan has looked after. Oh, here we are, the 19, the light put Lamborghini, yeah. just on the pit lane. That's uh, Brendan Leach is just getting out, and that'll be. Is it? It's not Marco Mapelli, is it getting in? I think it's Gabriel Rendoni. Rendoni getting back in. They're looking to leave Marco power for the end of this race by the look of things. Exactly, I think it'll be too early for him to get in to go to the end. So they're just going to be burning one of their longer stops here. He'll be sitting there quietly having a fourth or fifth espresso, I'm sure. Yeah, just very chilled, very yes. relaxed. Two optimum cars. Nose to tail as they come down into turn one. Sixth and seventh, and at the moment the car ahead in the hands of Sam Nahan, Ollie Milroy in the purple and white car behind. Two great colour schemes for Optimum here. No mistaking those two, are you listing Jota? Yeah, Ollie had a bit of a troubled race yesterday, didn't he? He got, he got he did. pushed off at uh, turn seven, turn eight. Yes, there was, turn a, around. There, there was a trail of disappointed drivers arriving at <laughs> breakfast this morning. <laughs> I did my best to offer some kind of soccer. Oh, wow. So they weren't having any of oh, it. lads. Yeah, because you, you do that so well. Well, I, I, I do have an unrivaled uh, selection of mock mock jokes. It's for that purpose. Black eyes. Yeah, or any friends. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> anyone surprised? <laughs> <laughs> now, so coming down into turn one, the three and the 55 here battling away. This is for fifth place. Tom, Tom Dillman. Dillman. Yeah. Paul Luke Chatan. Paul Chatan not showing the ultimate pace we were seeing yesterday. So I'm, I'm guessing, again, it's not just the likes of Michael Dynan learning about the longevity of the package in these conditions, it's the pro drivers as well. Yeah, Locking I think they were the all car. just dialing themselves in. Yeah, I think there is pretty high drop off here in the second yeah, stint. There is, guys. there really is. And maybe we're just seeing a little bit of that here, but also with that battle between Colin Braun and Akita Mazapan. And, uh, and also Rennie Binder and uh, Alessio Rivera. I mean, you've, you've just got these, these two-car battles all the way through this P2 field. Oh, God, it's brilliant to see. Really fantastic racing here. And, and I think Sepang has been brilliant for multi-class racing, and it's really worked here. Like any sport, motor racing and sports car racing in particular, just gets more intriguing the more onion layers you peel back. And you know, whether or not it's things like temperature, the actual temperature of the track, a degree or two, can make a huge difference. Completely. Oh, it's, it makes a massive, massive difference, particularly when you've got sections of racetrack, just like we're seeing here. It's 13, 14, I've talked about it quite a lot. Oh, there's Alessio Rivera, he's, he's got past through. Rennie Binder. But Rennie Binder's back ahead. He is, but he's got that great drive off here. But has Alessio Rivera managed to make it stick? He it has, looks like he has. He's got a little bit of a side draft here from Rennie Binder. They might be running a little bit less wing. 
And can he get it done around the outside? It's going to be a long shot. No, he's already just seeded the corner there. And he's just going to let him go and then just see how things unfold over the next few laps. Get to the end of his stint, deliver it over for the next driver to get in the car. Looked to me like Rivera just oh, And let's up to the inside of Dillman. This time it's Paul Luchatan. He pushes him wide. That was forceful. <laughs> that was a little rude, yep. I would say. <laughs> a little rude. It was pretty obvious that he needed to make it stick and he was just going to drive him all the way to the grass. Another commuter move, I would put that one down as. Yeah, for the old lady. Dear me. Yes, that was that was on the edge. Yeah. Just about just about fair. It's it's a bit more like that one, the, uh, the queue as you move into the, uh, the motorway road works, isn't it? <laughs> no, you're not getting back in. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, we've got, this is Johnny Adam, I think, and Lucas is it Stoltz. Lucas Stoltz here. Two very experienced pros here, fighting it out, front-engined V8s, and what's oh, Lucas going to get it up the inside there? Johnny gave him some room. Very respectful I think, here. I think Johnny chose that line, actually. Did, yeah. I think he chose not to compromise his line out of turn two, turn three, and thinks he can get it done, and can. Absolutely. So I think that was absolutely what Johnny had intended to happen. And now it's all this drag race out off of there. Stoltz, though, has got a great run out of there. He did. And gets he, it done up the hill. He did. He did have a fantastic run out of there and, and just had to take... Johnny had to seed it as he came into turn five. Turn six, and it does look like that Mercedes just a little bit better in the high speed stuff. The aero package on that Mercedes is likely to be that little bit better than the, the Aston Martin Vantage. This is the last year of this car before they go to the new Evo upgrade kit, the so Vantage GT3. It's an aggressive looking change for Aston Martin, and it's attracting attention with new teams coming to them. Yep. And uh, expect some more announcements before the 2024 season about the teams switching to Aston Martin. Sean Galeal, I think, is getting out there of the 56 car. It is with the very distinctive gold helmet. Who's that's going to be getting in? Is it... Uh, oh, is Maxi it... Mustard was in to start, wasn't he? That must be uh, Q... Um... It's Hand Hulin. Yeah. Remember? Remember what David told us? It's Hand Hulin. Hand Hulin. Excuse me. That's okay. We're learning. Full service. And by the way, uh, lest anybody thinks I was joking uh, with the conversation with David Cheng, I absolutely. I mean, it is just not something about uh, Chinese culture that I was aware of. No. And I'm delighted to make that change. And I can tell you, I will be relaying that to my commentary colleagues. Um, I think it's perfectly correct that we address friends from around the world and the way in which they would like to be dressed. And it's to give you an idea of what that means, it would be like me referring to you as Gavin Oliver. That's happened a lot. Yeah. Normally your mother when you've been a really naughty boy. <laughs> no, I just get Oliver! <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time, by the way, I ever, get, I ever used to get my middle name used. I was in trouble. The two Optimum cards, Optimum McLarens here are glued together. As they come down into 15. It's been damaged the front of the 69 car, like Yeah, it has. I think there was a little bit of a bump on lap one. Oh, Might well have oh been. yeah, you're right. It was. He was involved in that tussle and turn two, wasn't he, on the yeah. exit? Yes. So, let's see what is that bonnet coming up. So, Holly Milroy just doesn't want to give it up. He's looking for a way past Sam Deham, but he can't quite make it work, not yet. And these two are very experienced sports car racing. Stalwarts. Indeed. And uh, Ollie in particular, been with us here in the Asian Le Mans series for several seasons. It's good to see him. And uh, we'll be at his home race next time out. In Dubai. Yeah, absolutely. He's taking the family. It's now uh, a new phase of life with his young family in the United Arab Emirates and is very happy there at the moment. He's just got a bit of a bobble there as he's. Sam Dehan and Kevin Holly Milroy I think do it around him. the outside. If you get too wide on that curb there at turn four, it can really kickstart the uh, traction control. And Ollie Milroy has, has capitalised on that and really made that that move stick. Nicely done. They're, uh, they're not far away from Jada, Jada to Jada in yeah. the 
Craft Bamboo car having a much, much better day, Craft Bamboo. They've turned their uh, fortunes around. Sam Dehan, I think, is a little frustrated there with how that all worked out those last few corners. And he was trying to get in and, and stick with Ollie Milroy into turn seven, but he just took a little bit too much curb and then, yeah, it just didn't quite get the flow right there. And he's just dropped, been dropped a little bit. And I think coming off of turn eight, I think Sam Dehan had a little bit of a frustrating sort of hand off of the steering wheel. Sort of frustrated with maybe with a little bit with himself about how that had worked out. Yeah, it's a, as a Brit, he would have certainly been saying something along the lines of dash it all. <laughs> we all do in those circumstances. We weren't dragged up, were we? Let's face it, there goes Paul and Chateau. Yep. It's, it's, it's going to be brutally hot inside these cars. And it's uh, really quite uh, an oppressive environment to sort of operate in and think, think about things and work through, and that's maybe played into that. Sam Dehan just... Uh, a bit warning about track limits, by the way, Sam, uh, right now. Yeah. As indeed is Jaden Jada. So I think Milroy closing on the uh, Craft Bamboo car ahead. And there's potential here for a McLaren on the podium. It certainly is. I'm seeing it stop here at APR. This is, I think that is Julian Andlau. Oh, sorry, excuse me, no, it's the Proton it's, car. Yeah, it's Julian Andlau climbing aboard. Yeah, it's uh, too many blue and black grey cars team ready to go to work for the 22. Still, Colin Brown leads. It is under two seconds ahead of the... The 99 racing, racing cars, car. keeping them honest. Is Alessio Rivera still one and a half seconds back with Paul Chatton 17 seconds back. So the gap's not closing. And this is, I'm pretty sure, Ollie, going to be about getting deeper and deeper into a second stint on the rubber on a pretty high deck track. Yep. Well, it's uh, been a busy race to this point. In all three classes, perhaps a little less so uh, for the LMP3 class. But let's catch up now with the local team, with the local driver. Dominic Ang is down in pit lane with Claire Jedrick. With me now we have car 65, Viper, Nizza, Dominic Ang. Dominic, you guys have not had a break all weekend. Tell us what happened in the first lap with uh, Douglas. Uh, I think on the first lap, uh, Douglas did a great job. He passed uh, two cars in our class to go up to third. Yeah, I think into turn one, uh, sorry, into turn two uh, on the inside line, and everybody starts squeezing. Then I think the Merc from uh, I think our man and the white Merc then hit him on the back. So there we, we lost, lost a lot of time there. Now I know Douglas is doing a double stint because of time. Yeah. Tell us about your section just now. Uh, my session was okay we are, because we just got the car, so we are starting to dial in the setup. It's not the best yet, especially for the long stint, but uh, we're just doing our best to see what we can learn for the next round. Thank you, Dominic. Okay, thank you. Thank you so we were seeing uh, what, during that uh, interview there, we were just seeing Oli Milroy there looking to challenge Jade. No, Jade, uh, Jada coming into turn one. Hasn't quite got it done. I think there might have been contact there between the BMW and the Orica coming in through turn two. Yeah. The uh, Duquesne team car, Carl Watana Bennett, went in very, very late on the brakes to turn one and uh, had to be aggressive to get to turn two. Jill Goon on there, just uh, trying to keep himself nice and cool. He's got a cool vest on there yeah. before he's going to be jumping in this craft bamboo car. And I think Ollie Milroy has just done exactly the same yes. move there but earlier. He, yeah, that he did to his teammate. He did exactly the same thing there to Jaden O'Jada. Yeah, that uh, Otterville McLaren now is looking very strong indeed. Uh, he has got, by the way, 12 seconds to catch the second place car, Gilles Magnus, who is 21 seconds back from Joel Sturm, who leads the race to the pure race, pure racing Porsche. It's Porsche, Audi, McLaren. AMG as the one, two, three, four at the moment. Yeah, with Matthias Besch just making his way through the traffic there. Very quite aggressively, but he's uh, a contact. It's good. Simon Dehan, by the way, is also now catching Jaden. Yeah, he's been sort of up there, just slowly gaining on him. But uh, Ollie Milroy's done fine work to get past both of those in a couple of laps, and he's just stretching himself away. He's managing his tyres nicely. Indeed. They're going to be getting close. They're about 20 minutes away, maybe 25 minutes away from the final stop for the uh, GT tr uh, class. Indeed. 
and uh, we are on board here with the uh, cool racing number 17 car you can see how he was dancing the car into turn 14 trying to get it back to the apex and then picking up that throttle Nick Adcock by the way being caught not quickly but being caught by Julian Jerby who is uh, in a battle for second position with Daniel Frost yeah, he is. so we have all of a sudden the P3 battle underway for second place is within 15 seconds isn't it it is so the top three separated by 15 and a half seconds yeah. as the 90 car goes around the outside the Breton has he seen him yes he has gives him some room on board the 90 now he's still Sally it's still Sally Yollock he's yeah, he, this second stint for through. him it's... Daniel Frost makes the move Got up into second place on Julian Jerby. Yep. So Daniel Frost, impressive yesterday. He did a very, very solid job. It looks like they're just lining themselves up again for uh, another very strong finish to the race. So, 17 cool racing car. Not the plan here with the Asian Le Mans series is a wide through the corner yeah, there. Yeah, they'll be walking the trade limits again there. Uh, not the, the plan with the return here to Sepang is. is that there? Effective relaunch in Southeast Asia for the Asian Le Mans series. And great to see that being supported by a number of teams and drivers. Daniel Frost is one of them, Singaporean. Yep. It's a, it's a drive away from here, though another country. I've done that drive. Yeah. And uh, great to see him right at the sharp end of this junior yep. LMP class. Seeing the Optima on board here with the Optima car, Sam Dehan. He's working away. He's really trying to get the car back there to the apex, but it's it's tricky and tough. And you can sort of see the tire degradation, both the 56 BMW in front and and from the Optima there, the Optima McLaren. Just keep your eye, by the way, on the gap. Breton car there on the right side. <laughs> Always surprises you. Absolutely. I think the gap, because you think you're there at VMAX, and all of a sudden someone's slightly quicker than you yeah. are. Uh, just give it a look at the gap to third place from Mazapan in the number 99 car. That is coming down to Alessio Rivera. 7.3 seconds. That was nine and a half a couple of laps ago. Right, closing in on the pit stop cycle. But, uh, in this phase of this stint, Rivera is making up ground, no doubt about it. It's kind of stabilised between Colin and, and Nikita, hasn't it? Where they are yeah, it, on the track, and so it's always around about that two, two and a half seconds. Yeah, uh, it has been down as, as little as 1.6 with traffic. Walter Jakobsen there is uh, very focused. Very focused indeed, although... So we are with Jonas Reed. I was pretty impressed with Jonas. I thought he took a step forward yesterday. Yeah, nice job. He was quick, he was consistent. It's a difficult thing when you're coming into a new class as he did this season. And P2 with the family owned team at Proton. He's here with AC Bratislava on pit lane. Colin Brown from second, from the lead rather. So Mazapag goes through and leads again. Brown out, Jakobsen in. in. Tall and gangly. I think he's 20 he's years old now, better. <laughs> yeah. uh, already, he's with grown about a foot in, uh, in the last year, hasn't uh, he? You know what? The last two or three years, it's, it's, he, he, he waved to me at the start of the season two years ago. I didn't recognise him from October through to the April of the following year. It was ridiculous. It's like he'd been put into some kind of medieval torture device and stretched about uh, double his size. So they're not going with new tyres. These are the qualified tyres. Yeah. Um, has run through to the lead. Let's see Rivera, Paulo Chateau follow through. Which will be hard for him to get the most from. Yes. That will. That the, it's, that's something that all the teams and drivers have said. Do one run on a set of tyres, and you do see a big drop in performance. So let's see how he goes. This is a time stop. It is will be their final time stop. There he goes. Yeah. So 44 come up. Jonas, Jonas Reed getting in the 44. Also on pit lane, TF Sports number 90 car. That should be the end of Sally Yeah. time. Have to get 
used to thinking of Sally Yulich as a bronze after the Asian Le Mans series. Has been one of the top quality bronzes to this point. 25 APR car. Freddie Tomlinson after his stint. 99 racing is also continuing for another lap. So they're going to be surely pitting next time around. Well, they're going to be less tight at the end of this race on fuel than the cars on pit lane now. Yeah, they are. Correct. So and unless there is a safety car period or a full course yellow. Winners yesterday. Can they do the double here? So if the race winners from yesterday, Martin on racing lead again. Cool racing in the hands of Daniel Frost is second. I think I've got two laps longer. Yeah, Sands a lot. The crowd strike. Second. Yes. To this point. Yep. Lewis Reed is rolling and that stop will be their other long stop. All of, I remind you, all of the LMP2 cars um, pitted on the safety car to post their first of two required long stops. Yep. Julian Andlauer is putting in the lap times in rapid. the 22. He was rapid yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, and he's rapid today. He's a little bit back, though. So we'll have to see how that, one, that unfolds. It's, well, let's say that he's a little way back. He's only he was seven seconds back from Malta Jakobsen. So, yeah, still got some of the pit stop cycle to run through here. Yep. Okay. Okay, on pit lane. So this will be Oliver Rasmussen taking over for the end of this race. Another rapid peddler. Indeed. It's great to see this new era in sports car racing supporting established talent established GT racing talent and emerging talent. They look like new tyres going on the Duquesne, not the qualifying tyres. Oh, who's aboard the 86? That's looking a bit racy. It's it's Ricardo a bit Pera. Barker, is it? That's no. Ricardo Pera oh, yeah. that Sorry. one. But that is a lapped car at the moment. Oh, yeah, he got turned around, didn't he, earlier yeah, on he in did. the race? So Sander Hahn still trying to get onto good terms with Jenny Jane, but he's falling back a little now from the, the BMW. The Sam de Han car is the OG. Not, he's got in too deep there coming into turn four. He's checked up. So, should make clear, by the way, that the rear, cli the rear um, clip is coming off and being re offered to the Duquesne car. So, there's an issue. That's not, by the way, a driver instruction kit. It's just turned the engine off. <laughs> that would be an unfortunate choice of words. Fastest lap of the race immediately. Julian Amlauer, 153.332. But it is a drive-through penalty, another drive-through penalty, this time for the 93 car for causing a collision with the 75. That is Christian Bogle's 93 Team Project 1 car that currently runs in seventh place. Yeah. And that is going to put him at risk of losing the seventh place to the Amalar Racing by Getsby car, currently in the hands of oh, Alfaisal. 20 car, they stopped very close, I think, to... Oh, where is that? Is that... Well, it's on the start finish straight. I it's believe. the back straight, isn't it? Or is it the back straight? No, it's not. It's on the exit of turn 15. That's yeah. the cut through. Yeah, that is. Now, that's not a nice place to be. No, that could be full course yellow or possibly even a safety car. Well, it, 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 they should, depending on where there's an intervention crew, pull that car back and out of harm's way and into pit lane relatively quickly. But the the issue would be there's not a sight line. No, there's not. So that is, uh, and there's fuel back at the, the wheel of the car. That's an 82 car. If you, if you are. Mano Collard, I think. Yeah, I think that so if you're on a team, you're looking to pit, no. certainly get in now. It can't be Mano Collard because Manu is in the car. So right. What's going to happen here with the 20? Whether they're going to. It will need to be removed from there. There'll yeah, have absolutely, to be no a, doubt. No doubt there's going to be an intervention. This is going to be either a full course yellow or a safety car, unless he can get that car rolling. There was some smoke from the rear of the car, which I've sort of signed off to being hot brakes, but prepared to be wrong. He's trying to 
He's either talking to the team. I think he is talking to the team. He's got all the hallmarks of that. And he's, yeah, he's got the door open, but that will be most probably a heat thing more than anything else. Pit entry is closed, safety car, safety car deployed. Pit entry is closed, safety car deployed. Now, and did those teams, the car... Leader, please slow down. And the key leader, thing here, slow down. the 99 car has not pitted. No, it if has not. If he's close to a pit stop and needs emergency service, this is bad news for them. Yeah, this could really, really, really wreck their race. Very technical climbing aboard the, uh, the uh, 55 car. This will suit them. Well, we're going to safety car now, under caution. Pit entry, though, is closed. It's all about if they can get this done and get out before the safety car queue Number three car comes on pit around. lane as well. Tom Dillman. 99, please give me a gap. But asking the 99 to slow down and give a gap, which all of these guys on pit lane will be, yes, hoping, please, yes. New tyres going on there for, the, for Harry Tignall. They'll hold the cars the pit, pit exit because the pit, the uh, safety car, picks up the field beyond the safety car, the uh, pit lane line. We saw it before, didn't we? Trouble getting a gear there. Just, no, at the moment, at the moment, he looks like is he going to be released? I think he is going to be released. He's not not being stopped. Well, wow, it's great for them. Well, safety car must be rolling and must have picked up the train. Yeah. A 99 race and pitted, that's why it's not been picked up. Ah. Now that is emergency service. Yep. Pit entry is closed. It was closed. So. And, um, oh, and the safety car is now released. Oh, and that's wrecked the three car. They were waiting for the 99 car. Uh, yes. Oh, So that's wow. great news for the 55. Awful news for the three that's held. And the 99 car taking emergency service, service. is going to yeah. be blunted as well. There we go. Back out again. They'll be kicking themselves as well. That's that's a tough break. 99 racing. It's so, really tough. So we'll wait and see exactly how this works its way through. Safety car is on track and waiting to pick up a train. Yeah. Then it's which who? Is it going to be uh, Rivera? It would have to be Robert Rivera at this point. Yeah. But he won't be scored as the leader. Now they're being released. Rivera is through to the lead. Yep. And the 99 racing car will have to stop again. Yeah, that's the only thing that's that's beneficial to the three is that it's done its stop. Uh, 99 car 65, has not. Please overtake safety car. Car 65. So that's a Viper car. That's because that will be the car that the safety car has picked up. Car 83, you're the leader, you are staying behind the safety car. Car 65, to overtake the safety car. So car 65, obey the green lights on the safety car and overtake the safety car. That's his added fuel back. And this, all of those teams that were very marginal on fuel, every lap that we're behind the safety car now is just helping them. So it's likely that they'll only have to make that one more stop. Yeah, yes indeed. And 99 racing are. There is some damage on the side of. That's the 82 car. I thought it was the 83, but it's not. It's a dive plane that's uh, awry on the 82 car. I think the motorsport, by the way, that led this race looked to have been on pit lane for quite a while. Uh, way down the order. Pure Racing still lead in GT behind this safety car. We are not yet in the range where they will be able to get home from here on one no. tank of fuel. No. And it's, I think this is going to be a reasonably quick safety car period. Yeah, I think it is. So, the order as we stand. It All is. All cars to close the gaps, please queue up behind the safety car. They're going to lift the Ligier. Uh, Alessio Rivera leads this race in the 83 AF Corsa car, but requires a pit stop. 99 Racing, Nikita Mazapan, is second, but has had to take emergency service, will need to stop again. And likely that will take place under green yep. at this stage. Uh, CrowdStrike Racing by EPR, Malta Jakobsen, he sits third in this race and has just stopped. Schillen and Lauer in the Proton Competition car, another 
a car that has stopped recently. Uh, fifth, Harry Tignall, another car that has just stopped, sits uh, fifth. Oliver Rasmussen, another recent stopper, sixth. For me, it looks to me like Melty Jakobsen is in a very good position indeed here. Yeah, he does. He does look uh, in a very strong position. He did. He's gone out on his qualifying tyres, so that's a little yep. bit of a disadvantage. And he's got one hell of a train behind him with Julian Andlauer, Harry Tinknell. Just want to see where Oliver Rasmussen is in the Duquesne team car. Shown at the moment is a lap down, but we'll wait and see how this corrects itself. Yeah, I think we've just got to wait for everybody to, to sort of shuffle through here. There's the Leaper car. That it's car has been in the garage, garage. and he's coming back out. So I'm sure we're going to now see Marco Mapelli. Safety car yep. is starting his second lap. Pit entry is still closed. So that's just a note to the teams to say you cannot pit now unless it's for emergency, emergency service. service. Yeah. So it's another lap that uh, the 99 racing car will. Not because the Ligier is not yet clear. Yep. So Rivera comes through to lead a lap. A, of course, are 83 car. Well, let's call the rest of the classes. CD Sports uh, still lead here. Daniel Frost, of course, this will help cool racing and their efforts. Um, and there's just three cars at pace left in that battle. High class racing looks to be out in this race. Five minutes of racing in trouble early on. Douglas Koo is back at the wheel of the 65 car, but it's CD Sport, Nick Hancock, leading Daniel Frost. Exit turn and four Julian cars Jerby. eligible for pass around. Bear right. Exit turn four cars eligible for pass around. Bear right. See how many of the teams can From after turn four onwards, the race no yesterday. Zigzagin. Where? There is the Ligier underway and will be making its way towards a park firm area close to pit lane. Yeah, there was a number of teams that weren't very sure about the process yesterday of the pass around, but yeah. after now doing it all yesterday, you now get this opportunity to and a, and a well, it should be prepare the pass around, Any prepare car the pass ahead around, in this cars queue eligible, the move to the right hand side. Uh, the GT cars ahead of the 91 pure racing car should, should pass be, around. Absolutely. And any uh, whether or not we've got we've not got either the uh, uh, the lead group of LMP3 start cars. Start the pass around. Start ahead. the pass around. And there will be no LMP2 cars because it's the car is, the pace car has picked up. Yep. The 83 of course cars. So it should be just GT cars, and I think there are about six or seven of those. Yep. All cars eligible. Start the pass around. And this is the point where you're seeing whether those drivers have been communicated to correctly or not and also those drivers who are actually listening on the radio. Well, we heard it from James Cottingham earlier. Something that perhaps a casual watcher of racing like this, it is complicated. It's complicated. Mistakes to be made. The rule book is fiercely complicated. I, mean, I, I do this for a living of yep. sorts. Yep. Um, and I, I make mistakes every race because every race is different. There are always nuances yes. that are very subtly different. Different from series to series. Even between series organised by the same organisation. Right, got and you. understand. That it's not a surprise that under pressure that minor mistakes can be made in pit stop procedure, in the way in which uh, a, a, an intervention and caution is, is managed. Is you know, it's very easy for All us to be casually critical, please but speed up to it's catch up the hard. Queue. We have an intervention. It is, it is exit hard. Of T15. Exit of T15. It, we have as an you're seeing here now, right -hand side. all of these cars have been driving around for about a third to a half of a lap, all on the left-hand side of the racetrack. And so with doing that, they're just driving around on all the debris, all the marbles, all the rubbish that's been thrown up over the last three hours of racing and it's going to be on your racing tyres yep. as you look to take the restart maybe in a lap or two so that's something that every driver has to deal with it's how you then switch that tyre get it cleaned up switch it on get back to racing confidently and securely and as we've seen in the past you know sometimes safety cars can breed safety cars yeah. because of that but yesterday it was kind of okay but you did at restarts, particularly later in the race where we had one just before the rain came. You see cars, you know, really working hard to get their tyres cleaned up, warmed up and ready to go. We are finishing lap two of the safety car. Pit entry is still closed. Oh, that's tough for 99 racing. Isn't it just? 
they're going to be on fumes at the end Please of this. remind to your drivers of the maximum gap between cars, which is five car lengths in one single line. One single line of cars behind safety car, five cars lengths maximum. I'm impressed by Gwen, our race director, here's level of communication, the detail. He's aware, as we've just been yeah. saying, that there's a lot of new here. And that there are even very experienced teams that have done very little ACO rules racing. Uh, Santa Lock, one of those teams, by the way, they've managed it very well indeed. Yes, they have. They uh, really they, have. They, they have had a penalty. They had to drive through for the 42, which took it out of the lead. But uh, they're going to be in the mix for this race win. Yep, they are. They really are. That, the pace in that car, I think you're going to see that really come to the front. And they're going to be very, very close no. to being able to come in for a stop when this goes green again, when the pit lane opens. There's going to be an interesting moment at the end of this lap because it may well be that this is the final lap under the safety car if that Ligia is clear. It's just so way. close on the, on the limit. It is. Really right on the limit for their drive time. But for, you can have the a, safety car going down pit lane as everybody else wants to get there. It's the, it's the point. So they're going, to want, they're going to want to hope that uh, Alessio Rivera just backs up this field a little. I don't think he will. No because the next car behind Reminder him to in the order can't overtake him. Five cars length. Can't overtake between the cars car. between. There's one, two, three, four, five, six cars between him and the second place car, and that second place car is going to have to pit. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why the race director is saying over the radio, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, about the maximum distance between cars is five car lengths, because it might not be that there's a Rivera is backing everybody up, but it might be somebody else further in the pack that wants to just check, check, check up, and so that they get into the pit lane. At just on the right time. Well, look as well, the one car, I need to take another look. coming off the tyres already. Rivera not doing a lot of weaving here. I think he's on his way into the pits at the end of this. Yes, he could well be. Could well be. Walter Jakobsen there. He, he the does so as a pit stop. Four. And uh, this, he will need to pit again, pit again after this one. Yes, but it's too soon, isn't it? For, it is. For the number four car. No, no uh, what I mean is uh, Rivera, the AF Corsa car. Understand. We'll have to have a couple of stops of his splash and a full stop for AF Corsa. And it's, I think everybody's just sitting there waiting to hear from the race director what is going to happen next. We've not been told the safety car is coming in yet. No, but so much pivots on what happens in this next lap. Safety car has been instructed to go full speed. Safety car has been instructed to go full speed. We are still in lap three of safety car. The pit entry is still closed. Wow. And it's... it's Edgy like stuff for so many of these teams. <laughs> these, these, these teams are, are coiled springs. It is. It is the, these, are the call, these are the calls that matter. These are the things that are going to make the difference to whether or not... Look your, how intently all of those teams are absolutely. looking at the timing screens. We're going around again. Yeah. We're going around again. Look at the debris that's coming off those tires. They're desperately trying to clean them up. But, oh. There's some but they will. marks, look at the tyre marks there as cars are going left and right. Remember, this is the end of the third lap, correct? Yes. They can't pit here either. It's no. the end of the third lap. Third lap, uh, the lap com is completed after pit in. They cannot pit until the safety car has completed three laps. So therefore, lap four, it will open at the end of this lap. Wow. That's another little nuance. So, who is going to have to cough and splutter down the over pit the line? lane? <laughs> I think we did see a car heading for pit lane, though. There's nothing showing. Yes, there is. Oh. There's a car on pit lane. Uh, looking for when that appears on our timing screen. 19 Leipert Motorsport, Marco Mapelli. Right. Emergency service for them. That's a bit well, strange. Why would well, they shouldn't need it because they were on pit lane. They came out under the safety car. They did. Pit lane is now open. Because the, the field is now passed. Indeed. So that was indeed Lipa. Lipa Midspot do look like they're in trouble here. Yeah, eight laps down. Yeah. Close the gap, five cars length gap maximum. It's oh. going to get busy here. Yeah, it is. And Pure X Racing ready to go. Now, now the, the one plus side for a goodly chunk of this, uh, this field is, we are now in the window for GT3 to complete this race. Yes, absolutely. So it's going to get very busy indeed with teams that need to uh, pit from GT3. But I think they're going to do that under green flag racing. I think we're going green at yeah. the this lap. I'm sure Claire will be keeping her eyes peeled for what's happening down there. Be able to report back to us very shortly. 
But yeah, it is getting a little bit darker as well. Stop. Hmm. <laughs> well, you, you know, you're telling me to stop. What did you say about, I don't know, an hour ago? So let's remind you, uh, 62 minutes to go. 80 laps completed by race leader Alessio Rivera in the AF Corsa, Oregon 07, leading the LMP2 uh, class and the field. He's ahead of, Mel of, of uh, Nikita Mazapan in the 99 racing car. That car, though... Safety car in this lab. Safety car in green. this lab. You were right. Thank you. That's two. So, um, yeah, 99 mark, mark racing car, down, but that, that car down. had emergency service two. under the safety car. will need to pit again. We believe Rivera, too, needs to pit again. In this train... The next car along is Reiner, Melter you're not Jakobsen, allowed to overtake safety car before the safety car line one. Has just pitted and will continue. Does Rivera need to pit? Mazapan absolutely must. Does. Oh, he is on fumes. Absolutely on fumes. So, Jakobsen, Julian Andler, Harry Tignall, Oliver Rasmussen. Talking about the 99 car. Whoa. Green flag, green flag. There's a lot of anxiety down there in that pit box. Louis is desperate to yep. get in the car. In goes Alessio Rivera, in goes Nikita Mazapan. Away we go. Back to racing. 61 minutes remain of this four hour race. Train of cars follow the Porsche safety car down pit lane. 83 on pit lane, 99 on pit lane. The leader in GT3 for your racing on pit lane. Santalot Racing, who are second on pit lane. Ollie Milroy leads this motor race in GT3. It is second and third place so cars busy. in LMP3 on pit lane. Nick Adcock continues. Just trying to pick out. It's Oliver Rasmussen, I think, is leading the race here. Uh, no, no, he's leading the train, but not the race. So, CrowdStrike, racer by EPR, lead. They're at one lap down. Uh, Excuse me. Proton competition, 2 3 at the moment in the hands of Julian Anlauer and Harry Tignall. As the two cars forced to pit under green are dropping further and further back. It'll take a while for GT3 to sort itself out here. Vast majority of this pack have opted to go to pit lane. The what was the first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth place cars all on pit lane at the moment. The only one in the lead group that stayed out, Ollie Milroy, takes the lead in the 27 Optimum car, but will need to pit. Yeah, you just saw Lawrence Hur then just getting past Jonas Reed there. That was for position. So that's uh, ninth and eighth. So. Oh, it's just an unsafe release that there for cool racing. That wasn't great. No, I think that that might be a problem for them. The Mercedes had to check up there. 99 Racing, are they waiting? Is this a, is this a time stop? Of the pitters, by the way, uh, Pure Racing, Klaus Backlu is out. About five seconds clear of Christopher Haase in the Santalot Racing car. Optimum McLaren leads at the moment, but uh, Oli Milroy will need to pit again. Pure Racing in their 91 Porsche is fuel, fully fueled and gone with Klaus Backler at the wheel, with Christopher Haas in yesterday's race-winning Audi out uh, in third place. And Jakobsen, two and a half seconds ahead of Anlauer, four seconds ahead of Harry Tinknell. Mathieu Vazivier back out on track. But that has cost them. Yeah, it's cost them dear, hasn't it? Vazivier coming through four. Watch what the real-world gap is when they clear the next timing sector. Yeah. I think it's about a minute and a half. Yeah, it could be. Uh, maybe it's not quite as much as that. Mm, you might be right. 43. Santalot racing car on pit lane from 10th. Yeah. Paul Everard. It is. It is a minute and 28 seconds wow. from Harry Tinknell. That's what it's cost them. With Louis Delatraz a further three seconds back, it's cost them 90 seconds. Wow, that is huge, isn't it? Because the field was so closely spaced as it, the, the race went green and they could not hit. No, and they could have. Had that safety oh. car gone on for one more lap. But it didn't. Nope. And uh, Crowd Smart Racing by APR take full advantage. Julian Anlauer is closing on Melty Jakobsen at this point. Jakobsen, remember, we noted, put on what we believe is his qualifying set of tyres, or rather, George Kurtz's qualifying set of tyres. These guys trying to get going here. Oh, that was close. So it's the uh, eight. Collard. Yep. And, uh, and Hunin. 82 car. Yeah, he's, he was. 
He was trying that move and it somehow came off there as it came through seven and eight, but it's... Uh, Car's got a little bit of damage on the nose, isn't it? It has. It's uh, been in the wars a little bit this weekend. Yeah. Uh, five second penalty added to the next pit stop for unsafe for an Eastern D car engineering's car. Now in the hands of Florence Hur. Yeah. That car is sitting in eighth. You've got to, got to imagine that the 17 is going to get the same after that looks, car's release out did. in front of the uh, Mercedes. It did look great. And uh, that car, by the way, cool racing in the hands of James Winslow. He's a minute and a half back, but. Nick Hancock will have to stop. He will. Um, James Winslow won't. Yeah, he's just um, going around the outside there. Oh, no, sorry, 25 there. 25 and 22. 22. Two cars have been confusing us all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, those cars are a lap apart. Yeah. That's so Toby Sowery in the 25, and it is... Uh, He's on board the 22. That is uh, Julian Andelauer, isn't it? It's a five-second penalty as well to uh, the Vibonese Racing squad. Josh Burton has just left the pits in that car. Here is CD Sport from the lead. Nick getting out. That will be Michael Jensen to complete the race, I'm sure. Yeah. It's going to be a good battle, I think, there between uh, Michael Jensen and uh, James well, Winslow. It's a matter of how quickly can this turn this around and whether or not... This is a time stop. If this is the time stop. Yeah. Not for new tyres. And uh, whether or not there is anything coming the way, there's damage on the side of uh, that car too. Yeah, it's possibly from debris that's been flicked up from the wheel. Usually when no, it's like that's not a time stop. Go, go, go. There we are. So where is Winslow? It's going to be tight, this. It is. We're going to see it. Uh, they hearing. are out in it, a minute, nine seconds. And he's, in, he's in turn 15. It's coming. Fabian Laverne that's ahead at the wheel of this car. They've played that right. They've got Fabian to the end of this race. That's great stuff from CD Sport. Yep. That's in a great position. So it's the length of the pit straight. Yeah, strong stop from them, from CD Sport. Wasn't it just? Championship winners, of course, last season. That earned the team the opportunity to race at Le Mans. They did that in yep. the P2 Ligier. Very proud to do that. Came into the Asia Le Mans series with no other deal for the season. It was all or nothing wow. for CD Sport. They finished the season 1-2 in LMP3. That is amazing, isn't it? Got their first title in international sports car racing. Went to Le Mans for the first time and picked up customers for Europe for the rest of the season. <laughs> That's extraordinary, isn't it, how that works? Success breeds success. Yes. Jakobsen still two seconds plus ahead of Anla. Harry Tinknell still four seconds back from Anla. Mathieu Vazivier in his closing that gap, but still over 90 seconds. Actually, right. that's, apologies, that's actually gone out by two it has, seconds. It has gone out. Delatras, right. though, is right with Vazivier in the reverse order that they finished the race 1 2 yesterday. Unless we're seeing another safety car period, I just cannot see how. Uh, that anyone else can really get in the mix here with the 4, the 22 or the 55 for the overall win and podium. Delatraz looking up the inside, Vazivier. Yeah. There's a lot of pride at stake here. We saw that in the body language of both cars yesterday. Yesterday, but that was in very different conditions, wasn't it? It was, but you very can see different. Vazivier was looking to see what he could do to put pressure on the Alpine cool Louis Delatraz. Yeah. It looks like Louis is fired up and ready to go. Doesn't it just? They've got the maximum points available from race one. Yeah. They're looking to do what they can do what to put the pressure on. Drifting it through turn 15 there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. That's the CD Sport card that is leading. Yep. And that gap P3. all the way to James Winslow is 12 and a half seconds. So the big gaps of yesterday, not today. James Winslow, if he's going to win this race, he's going to have to work and work hard for it. Trying to get on terms with Fabian Laverne. That's going to be tough. So, it was pretty quick yesterday. It uh, just took a little longer to get by. Did Delatraz, and that's opened up the gap just a little. Right at the front of the field, though, Malte Jakobsen just stabilised that gap to Julian Adler, maybe just actually stretching it slightly. He's out to 2.4 seconds, but it's very likely just yo-yoing with traffic here. Uh, I should say, by the way, behind that top three, uh, there is a very closely matched batch of six cars, led by Mathieu Vazivier. It's a minute and a half back, but behind him, a second back, Louis Delatraz, 
four seconds back Rasmussen, and then six seconds back to uh, Charlie Eastwood. Lawrence Hurris five seconds back, Toby Surrey two uh, seconds back. We're deep in the final hour. Let's take a look at what's been going on in, in Sepang so far today. It was clear-ish skies, no sign of rain at the start of this race. Uh, it was searingly warm, and Bib was uh, in his best, uh, Sunday best as were indeed the management team behind the Asia Le Mans series as the 39 car grid got underway uh, for two formation laps. As the lights went green, it was Michael Dynan once again in the TF Sport Orica, the number 90 car getting away cleanly and this time untroubled into turn one. John Falb, discretion the better part of valour today. And the LMP2 field would go through untroubled. The fun of games, the trouble would hit the car number 65 uh, in the LMP3 squad, having made up good make up progress at the start. Douglas Koo turned around by Martin Conrad in turn two. That caused a lot of bumping and, and boring as the remainder of the GT3 cars came through. Mercifully, with very little damage, Douglas Koo would get that car underway again. So fun and games LMP2. Look at the dust at the bottom of the screen here. That was John Fowl going very wide for the second time in two laps and lucky to keep the decaying number 30 car out of the barriers. This was an incident between the Attempto Racing Audi and the 21 Ferrari. 66 car missing his braking point. That would be the end of the race for both cars after this damage for uh, Francois Erio and the crippled number 21 Ferrari 296 that damage uh, for the Audi. Great battle for the lead at this point between Sally Olic and Nikita Mazapan. It would be the Russian driver that made his way through into the lead. Gilles de Cain looked on. Warm time in the pits and hot action on track as the number 83 car made its way through. Grand battle here underway between Rene Binder and Alessio Rivera. Rivera made his way by, elbows out. That wasn't done. You may have thought so at that point. Smiles wide at AF Corsa, but Binder would fight on. 55 for the proton competition. Paul Lipschatan with his elbows out on the DKR car, but then a safety car uh, with a crippled car and overtake the safety car. Uh, Ligier for the number 20 of Anders Fjordbank. That would lead to real drama with the safety car preventing a number of the leading pack from pitting. Pits stay closed during that session and both the number three and the number 55 car needing emergency service and therefore a second pit stop, as did the new race leader, the 83. Joel Sturm, out in the number 91 car, leads the race in GT3 and is fending off an attack by Christopher Harzo with Rob Bell for the Optimum car in third place in GT3. It is CD Sports and Cool Racing contesting uh, LMP3 as we go deep into the race. And we've got uh, battles galore underway across the field in LMP2. Where does that leave us? Well, it's the CrowdStrike Racing by APR car that leapfrogged the group, Stymie Pie the safety car, Melty Jakobsen, 2.2 seconds ahead of a Proton competition 2-3 uh, with Julian Anlow and Harry Tinkle. In LMP3, it is the CD Sport car on the hands of, uh, hands of Fabian Laverne, 12, 13 seconds now ahead of James Winslow in yesterday's winning cool racing car, Pure Racing's number 91 Porsche. Klaus Backler is uh, easing ahead of Santalock Racing's uh, Christopher Harza, again a race winner yesterday. Rob Bell's Optimum Motorsport 27, McLaren uh, running in third. Fab Schiller right with, though, the British McLaren factory driver in the Almanar Racing by Get Speed. Oh. And it's another accident oh. for a P3 in the same that, place. That is, and the exit, well, just coming up to the start-finish line, out of coming out of turn 15. It's Josh Bird again. Oh. He's been the barrier. He has, that's big, and that's going to be another safety car. That's just as bad as of here, by the way. Uh, 153.009, first lap of the race. This is going to save the yeah. race for AF Corsa. And we're seeing everybody pit. Everybody's flying in the pit lane right now. It's All too the PT. Early. It's too early. 
It's right on the limit. It oh, is. Because, of course, we've got the safety car. They will be able to stretch it. Yes, because right now the, these P2 cars can do 23 laps on a tank. Malta Jakobsen got in the pits. He did. Yeah, we saw the top. Th and Gillian Anlau got in the pits. He did. That's what's happened. Yeah. They've seen Eastwood the shunt as well. before the safety yeah, car was exactly. called. If they've cleared that line, yeah. they are good to go. So I think it's 25 laps. 25 laps to the finish from here. And these guys could do 23 in a tank of fuel. But the safety car is going to elongate that. It is going to elongate that. Let's see. Well, this just throws another okay, leader, please twist. Slow down. Car 55, please slow down. Give me a another gun. twist here. It's another very large industrial tool uh, tool thrown to the grinder. I hope Josh Burton's okay. Yeah, that looks like a heavy impact. Definitely bigger than yesterday. Those guys, the car. Viper and Nisa are going to have their work cut out. Another late night so for those still, guys. Pit exit is open. We're waiting for. It will be the 55 car of Harry Tinknell. He will not need to pit, so he will join the safety car. Yeah. I think they may be ruining. It may be Proton decided one's going to pit, the other one's going to carry on just to cover themselves. Yeah. Maybe they split the strategy. Christian's down there masterminding it. We'll see what turns out here. Well, that, that could have been an absolute masterstroke by CrowdStrike Racing by APR. Yeah. David Leach, the engineer, the technical director at APR. Yeah. Tell you what. The, the, you know what, with these calls, Ollie, they either go so right or so very badly wrong. <laughs> yes. There's, there's very few shades of grey here. No, you either look like an absolute genius or a complete fool. And it's, it's pressurised, it really is, and it's just being able to react and have all, everything there at your fingertips to be able to, boom, do it. Yep. Unfortunately, he's being led away, but he does look a little he looks bit, a bit dazed. He does. A bit winded. He does look a bit winded. He said, he's, he's told them he's okay, otherwise, they would not be doing that. But Josh does look as if he's been a little bit banged up there. Hope he's okay. Yeah. Lovely guy, Josh Burden. He's so, walking across the pit in. Here comes the safety car. 55 will be coming down the front straight here. So, where this is going to stand on track is that Harry Tinknell is going to lead this race behind the safety car, but will require a pit stop. Absolutely. Melty Jakobsen is second and may well have done his final pit stop. It's going to be close, though. It's going to really, really be on close. fumes. Because two, trying to, trying to generate two laps worth of fuel. One thing I would say, by the way, is it's also going to help him on those tyres. Yep, it is. You know, he did the first couple of laps number of laps actually on those tyres, just bringing them in nice and gently, coolly. But it's now going to be how you can manage those once you've done this safety car period and switching them back on, because that is not easy. Could this be the second time the Proton competition have won an LMP2 race in their long, long storyline? And if it is the case, remarkably, they will win the first and last LMP2 races of this year. Right. They won at the Rolex 24 on the line. Oh, that was so close. That was an astonishing result. But to the moment, I have to say, I think, think this is advantage CrowdStrike pick. Uh, you're right. Whether or not they intended to do it, what Proton have achieved through what happened there, they've split their strategy yep. between the two cars. Exactly. If the right strategy was to go to the pit lane, They've got it covered. They've got it covered. Well, they've got a gun. Line. They've got a, a, a bullet in the, the gun. gun. Yeah. If it wasn't, they're in the pound seats. Right. 43 minutes to go. And again, that's that is just you know somebody sitting there overlooking the whole thing, and just going two cars in the game, and we're right there, almost even yeah. with those two cars. Right. One does one. One does the other. Boom. Well, the other thing I would say is I don't think they had the time to put the second car in because the pit lane was closed. It was, it was really I tight. understand, yeah. So, really yeah. tight. So, I so it could just be fortune. Yeah, I don't think the 22, the, sorry, the 55 had the opportunity Tunity. to go to the pit understand. lane. understand, yeah. So there is the 55 car leading the rate. And uh, just behind, by the way, is the 91 leading uh, GT3. And that has closed that and gap up because that was out at about 15 seconds, I was. believe, somewhere around there. And that was going to looking quite hard for Christopher Hasser to close up and get onto the turns with Klaus Backler. But now... If he's got a good car underneath him... Yeah. 
Yeah. And they're all done with their stops. They are absolutely the are. So we don't expect to see any of the leading group of cars in GT3. It's just P2 that we're looking at for the P stops. P2 will need another stop each. With the possible exception well, well, of Melty Jakobsen so and Julian Anlauer. Exactly. And it's just if they can stretch it out. They'll be hoping this is taking quite a long time to find the right broom. Yeah, this is going to be on maximum fuel save. Maximum, maximum fuel save for all of these guys. So, see Melty Jakobsen there in the train behind the yellow McLaren. Where is and, uh, Julian Anlauer? It's just two, three, four cars back. Yep. Exit T15, please bear left. Exit T15, bear left. We have intervention team on the right hand side. We now, still haven't seen what happened with the Viper Nisa. We haven't. The, the, the one thing, but, to clear the car is not a problem. How much damage to the barrier is the issue? Yes. That could be the saviour of the required fuel for the number four car. Yeah, absolutely. He's done one lap under safety car since what you have to presume was a full fuel fill. Yes. Yeah. That's 53 seconds. All teams, road. please close the gaps. Five cars lengths maximum between each other. That was a quick full fuel fill, actually. There is, a, there is a bit of a dent in that barrier. However, he wouldn't have needed a fuel fill, a full fuel fill, would he? He was just filling the tank. Yes. It wasn't from empty. That's no. the point. No, no, no. So that's why 53 seconds, not 54 or 55. Yes. So it would have been marginal. Exit T4, we will prepare for pass around. Exit T4, we will proceed. We will prepare, sorry, for pass around. Exit T4, cars eligible for pass around to bear right. I don't think there's terribly Or the many. cars to bear left. Maybe LMP3. I have not spotted where in the train or LMP3 leader is. That's the 17 car. So that would be James Winslow, yeah. Ah, right, so the CD Sport car, yes, that's why. So James Winslow will get the pass around. Yes. So he's going to be at the back of that pack. Just looking where the lead car was, because that's going to be George Kurtz in the middle and Colin Brown on the left there. I did not see the CD Sport car. Prepare for pass around, prepare for pass around. The point I'm making Cars here eligible for pass around, the right. further to the back of the train it is, the worst news in this is CD Sport. Yes. Because the closer James Winslow, Winslow will be, I think it's only James Winslow that's going to get passed around. Maybe no more zigzagging. I've said prepare for pass around and start the pass around. Start the pass around. Will be passed around here. Yeah. So there you go. He moves to the right. All yeah. cars eligible. Yeah, James, pass you around, go. please start pass around. Not helped by the 91 car not being over where he needs to be. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think anybody else, other than maybe. Breton Racing. Yeah, Breton Racing will pass around as well. Just two LMP3 cars. So we've seen James Winslow go by, but have we seen... All cars doing pass around. Please, the reminder, exit... I think no, Breton Racing right has gone as well. well. Yeah, they were in that train. Oh, Stefan. Marshals exposed. So Mania Stefan in the Breton Racing car. They've had a strong opening weekend, Breton Racing, to their LMP3 yeah. career. Yeah. A couple of mistakes here and there, completed. but some Passer good pace. Yes. And it is just, I think, the two LMP3 cars. And I think the CD Sport car is right at the back of this. I still have not seen it. There it there is. There it is. Yeah. It's the very last car. It's going to be nose to tail. <laughs> it's the oh. very last car. That could, could, you know, it's almost like, great, we passed the safety. Oh, no. T15, please <laughs> bear left. T15, bear yeah. left. I see it. Now and after that, five cars lengths maximum so between each car under safety. We're going around again because he's just told them to bear left past T15. Yep. And so now all of these cars. We are in safety are car lap two. Pit entry is still closed. Are on the tyres they're going to finish on. Yes. And they are going to be trying to keep them as clean as possible. See the safety cars there all the way over the left driver's left. On the racetrack, well, everyone else is like, I'm online. I'm not going to get over there where all the rubbish and the crap is. Not a chance. Oh, dear, dear me. But, uh, so we've got 38 minutes to go in this four-hour race. If you're suffering from deja vu, yes, we did have one yesterday. Uh, so we've, this is a double header of four-hour racing to start this Asia Le Mans series season here at Sepang in Malaysia. 
great to be back. We keep saying it yep. because we mean it. And uh, we've then got quite a gap through the Christmas and New Year period until we get to uh, the first weekend in February in Dubai for a single four-hour race in Dubai Auto Pro. And left. then two four-hour races left. the following weekend to complete the season uh, at the Yasmarina Circuit just down the road in Abu Dhabi. So five four-hour races for the 2023-2024 Asian Mon Series. Back to where we used to be straddling the year. Those dark days are behind us and it is we're getting back towards Exit normality. 15, bear left and no so weaving, bear left the EPM, 15, I've seen cars on the right hand through side. there with Urbeth uh, Motorsport. It is great to see some of our Southeast Asian friends back as well. Craft Bamboo there. Yeah, it is. And you, you can hear while you've, you've been speaking as well underneath, you've been able to hear the race director talking about cars needing to stay to the left hand side as they're coming out of turn 15. Some drivers getting a little bit close Reminded to the right hand to side, drivers teams. right. Exit T15 is left hand side, which means the left part of the track. Yeah, that's uh, OK, guys. Not the way you look at down there, look at it from driver's left. Yeah, which driver's left? as you're driving down the track, driver's left. I'm sorry, but am I getting that wrong? No, driver's left is, you, you should be to the, 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 the weird thing is because we you've got that hairpin, which is the inside and which is the outside. It's, it's the outside of the track. If you're going to the outside to give the track workers room, they're repairing the barriers. It's exactly. trying to tell them to keep away yeah. from the barrier repair. Yeah. It is driver's left. Yes, they want them on driver's left. The, yes. the repair is on the driver's right. Correct. Yeah. So we reset a little. We Is do. this safety car going to stay out in time to do the full three laps? Well, it will actually be four laps. Yes, it will. And I'm thinking that those cars that have taken the stop, they'll be sitting there. Multi Jakobsen, Julian Andlauer. That will be Reminder, beneficial for five them. Cars really beneficial. Maximum for them. behind safety car. The gap is a five cars length. This could be. One hell of a finish. Yeah. I, I, if this cut safety car stays out and they manage to make, if that uh, barrier repair takes another couple of laps, they manage to make their final stop, then this could be one heck of a sprint finish. If you're watching, yes, we know it sometimes can be frustrating when you're seeing these cars around at slow speed behind the safety car, but what are we going to be left with here? LMP2, Harry Tinknell leads the race. Melty Jakobsen, but does definitely need to stop. Melty Jakobsen, increasingly unlikely to need to stop, as is Julian Anlauer. They are more or less nose to tail, a couple of cars between them in this uh, safety car train. Every other car needs to stop. Louis Delatraz and uh, Matthew Vaxavier have sort of got themselves back into this with this they safety have. car. They are going to have to stop. Pit lane. I will not speed up the safety car as long as I have an intervention going on. Yeah, so that would, that response there is, is most probably from a lot of the teams come asking on, come for, on, yeah, come asking on, yes. for the, 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 the safety car to be speeded up, you know, trying to put some pressure on, you know, the, the likes of uh, Crowd Strike and T Proton 15, Competition. T15, bear left until the start line. Bear left, totally Driver's left. left, absolutely. Driver's left. And it's down to, you know... We are still in safety car lap three. Pit entry is still closed. Yeah, so certain teams will be pushing for the safety car to go faster and many other teams will be asking for it to go slower or just stay at the same pace. And that's, uh, that's part of the, being the race director now. Now, are we still having barrier repairs underway? Look to the left of the screen. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And there's stuff being brought in, I believe. I'm going to have to report a few teams for not bearing left at exit T15. Yeah, there are some teams that are going to get pinged for this, I think. You know, some teams who are yeah, being a bit naughty. There's also a car that there's a oh, checking up there? of cars. Well, it started, off, it started off with a 37 slowing right down. The concertina effect, then five or six cars back. Everybody then stopped. Right opposite the right incident. Right opposite side. the incident. That's so not clever. No, 30, that... by 37 checking up and almost stopping, Mr. Gunon, you've then caused a whole load of issues further back. That 
that might not be smiled on in race control. We have completed third lap under safety car. Pit entry is now open. Pit entry is now open. Now we find out what we're going to be faced with at the end of this race. So, to summarise, once again, we are 32 minutes from the end of this four-hour race at Sepang, the second round of the Asian Avant Series. Harry Tinkle leads the race. He will have to pit almost certainly with pits at side, the end of this lap. Five cars lengths maximum between each car. Melta Jakobsen, running second for CrowdStrike Racer by PR, has pitted and should not have to pit again to the end of the race. Following him, the 22 Proton competition car, Julian Anlauer has pitted and does not need to pit again. The rest of them do need a tank of fuel yes, they to do. complete this race. But the other thing here, Ollie, is half an hour remaining. If they've got tyres, they can use them. Yep, absolutely. It's all out attack from now onwards. It's got to be. I doubt they have. No. This will be the last reminder on my side on this topic. It's a five cars lens gap maximum between each car. Yeah, obviously, some some drivers are just pushing that envelope on the five car lengths. Yep. In LMP3, 12th overall CD Sport in the hands of Fabian Laverne held a 13 second lead over James Winslow, yesterday's winner in the cool racing car. That's gone to nothing. They're at the back of this queue. Uh, and the lead three cars are line astern. It is Fabian Laverne, James Winslow, Manea Stefan, CD Sport, Cool Racing, Breton Racing. They are battling for the podium positions. They're the last yep. three cars uh, in the field, two instants taking out both Viperniza Racing car, Josh Burton. That's why we're on the safety car. Nasty looking Reminder, T15, we still have an intervention going on. Bear left, bear left. And the high-class racing car that seemed to have a mechanical issue, that's out the race. In GT, these cars do not need to stop. Pure racing, Klaus Backler, two seconds ahead uh, under the safety car. We're nearly there with this repair of the Santalock racing car with Christopher Haaser, yesterday's winner. Rob Bell in the Oxford Motorsport 27 car and uh, Fabian Schiller in the number seven Almanar racing by Get Speed AMG. They are the top four. And who is on pit road? Who is there? And that's 44. Only one. Only one. Half an hour left. One more time. I will not speed up the safety car as long as I have an intervention going on. Just to give some context on the gap, this five car lengths. One of the best ways, one of the best ways to get temperature into those tyres is to accelerate hard and brake hard. And to be able to do that, you have to have a bit of gap, you have yeah. to have a bit of space. So here are some of the P2 runners. Well, it is Mathieu Vazivier in the AF Corsa car, Oliver Rasmussen in the Duquesne team number 30, the DKR engineering car of Lawrence Herr, and the 44 ARC Bratislava car of Jonas Reed. Jonas is off the lead lap, the others are on the lead lap, they will catch up the train, they will be fueled to the finish, I can't understand why Harry Tinkle didn't pit. No, unless they think somehow that they can make it. I'm not sure. I can't believe they can. No. I can't believe they can either. The TF Sport 95 car taking tyres there. So I believe it's Ben Tuck that's in the car there. Nice tyres yeah. to go to the end. Trio of midfield GT3s. They, of course, is 82 car, Manu Collard, Ricardo Perez for GR Racing in there. New Ferrari 296 GT3, and you're right, Ben Tucker bought the TF Sport 95 Aston Martin. They're 10th through 12th in the GT3 field. I didn't see Ben Barker get in the uh, I think 86 he was in, car, but he must have been in, in the middle. I think he was. Yeah. yeah. Ben announced us uh, with a Ford Mustang drive with Proton Competition for the WC this season. It's Watch fantastic. this space. It's fantastic for him, that is. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's, his pace and the way he's worked with Geo Racing's owner driver, Mike Wainwright, yeah. has been noted. Well, he's been one of the fastest drivers at the Le Mans 24 hours he's in GTE Am for well, the last three years. I four completely years. agree. So he clearly gets the job done there. Real shame that the end of the GTE era has come for that team because they were beginning to find just a step. So we were just seeing a, a, a shot there of the Proton competition, guys. Ready. 
Yeah, have they missed? Have they missed something here? Yeah, but we've not sped the safety car up. We've got another lap, but they will lose track position. Exactly, it's all about track position at this point, in my eyes. Yeah. And the problem is they're now going to join at the back of this queue because they yes. won't be released. That, I, I find that I, I don't understand that decision. Yeah, we don't know. We don't have all the facts. And but now he, he goes to the pit lane. Yeah, unless it was a miscommunication, something just was was missed. Radio intermittent. I don't know. But yeah, there he is on pit lane. I don't understand that decision. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'm sure right. there was some there was some lively language on that radio a 55 car radio because usually when you don't do sort of like what everyone else is doing you're then quizzing why you haven't done that yeah and, uh, safety car let's has been instructed to go full speed now we're getting that so fires the engine and we'll join the back of the safety car queue but we'll be behind the cars that pitted last time around yes. That's yes. why I just don't understand it. <laughs> don't get it. So, Balta Jakobsen leads this motor race. Louis Delatra is only, only 11 seconds back. Yeah, behind the safety car, so in real terms. That's not going to be that much, is it? No, it really isn't. It's been another good race here. 26 minutes to go. Yeah, let me see. It's so actually in terms of... Where are these cars in the queue? Uh, right, well, let's, uh, let's wait to take a long shot. That is our race it's leader. leader. Yeah. 88 car there is the way down the field, sixth in GT3. The field is now led by the GT3 leader. The third car is the white uh, Santa Monica car in second place, but the car between them is a team car who will surely get the heck out of Dodge. Yes. And um, that's not going to be a challenge, I don't think, for no, Mr. Haas to pass. No, I don't think so. And Rob Bell must be pretty close as well. Any second or so back, it must be a couple of cars. Safety yep. car in this lap. Safety car in okay. this lap. We well, are getting ourselves wound up here for a grandstand finish. If you didn't make a coffee then this race, it's Neither. too late now. If you you're fit, you've got uh, one of those tees at home line, with safety, no safety belts, strap yourselves in, because this is going to get wild and crazy. 25 <laughs> minutes uh, to go. the finish of this four-hour race. That is our race leader, Milte Jakobsen. The Danish flag proudly painted on the side of his helmet. And could this be another breakthrough race for the young Dane? Yes. He'll want to get by this GT3. And they're going. They're already going. They are, because this is a race for the green win. Green flag, green flag. Klaus Backler knows all about it. He, yeah, he's, the pressure is on, and Christopher Haase is going to get past the sister car. And he's, he's already indicating left. Yes, indeed. Where you go, Chris. Yeah. Send it up the inside. Flat six plays V10. Porsche 911, Audi R8, two classic 21st century sports cars. And Porsche, a classic car of the last century as well for that matter but uh, more or less nose to tail with 24 minutes to run yep oh, we've so seen the, the crowd strike car there just getting through so Julian Anlauer has got the 25 car and Toby Sari just ahead of him yep just so Jakobsen from Anlauer and Delatraz is only six seconds back and uh, Vazavier there with Rasmussen right behind him. So he's in his own uh, battle. It is a drive-through penalty for the 17 car, James Whoa. Winslow. Oh, that's bitter for them. That's going to cost them any chance of a win. And that's going to hand Breton Racing the baton to take the fight to CD Sport. Rasmussen on the back of Vazavier, and, and it's all happening as they come down into turn seven. Gaggle of cars, the 44 cars right in the way. Oh, Rasmussen, he's trying to work his way past back Sevier and they're all bought up behind P3 traffic. And these are the leaders in P3. It is, and... Uh, uh, back Sevier up the oh, inside. Oh, it's very tight oh, there. There's Rasmussen going to be contact. Whoa. That is... Three I don't know how they've all got through there. Three wide. It was one in each class in that uh, trio. Whoa. Rasmussen. He is living on the edge there, Rasmussen. Brilliant driving from him, trying to keep it on the racetrack. Lawrence Hurl. Lawrence Hurl's looking up the inside of Rasmussen. 
And now to the outside, left and right. It's still P3 cars there. Rasmussen goes to the inside of the Bristol Racing car, makes it through there. Can the Lawrence Hur go through? Harry Tignall's right there now as well. Exactly. Is he going to get the run? Oh, this is so close. It's like five wide as they come down into turn 15. As we watch this, it's 1.4 seconds of the overall lead, by the way. Julian Anlauer is with Melty Jakobsen. It is Rasmussen, Hur, Tignall. This is a battle for fifth position. Look at this. Pack. Just a gaggle of cars coming down into turn one. Left and right, four wide. This is going to get very busy into turn one. There is the race leader in LMP3. There's Whoa. a touch, a big touch with the uh, the BMW. There's a touch, I think, as well, as Lawrence Hur goes past the other BMW. I think everyone's OK, though. Managed to get through there just about. Super busy. There's our race leader in GT3. Harry Tignall coming through. That gaggle as well. He's lost a little bit of ground to the, the pair ahead. But more importantly, everybody's managed to keep their car pretty clean. There was a little bit of bodywork damage there, I think, with the BMW. But I think every, all of the main contenders here in all classes are still intact. It is 2.3 seconds the gap. Melty Jakobsen, Julian Anla, Louis Delatraz, seven seconds back, four and a half seconds back to the rest of the pack, led by Mathieu Vazivier. In LMP3, City Sport lead, James Winslow is right with him, but has got a drive through penalty. Klaus Backler. 1.2 seconds ahead of Christopher Haase for the lead in GT3. Rob Bell under pressure now from Fab Schiller, with Tom Gamble getting involved in this one as well, and Brock Feeney, and Jules Gounod, and Matteo Caroli. GT3's podium positions not done. 21 minutes left. Yes, it is just action everywhere you look here at Sepang. Diving through there, that was uh, Oliver Rasmussen. And it is a bit like yeah, that, everybody's got their hands right. over their mouths. <laughs> it really is. It's a time penalty, five seconds, that's pit stop for car 43. There isn't going to be any more stops though, is there? Yeah, there will be a time penalty at the end of the race, that's the second Santelot car. Here comes the DKR car around the Optimum Motorsports. Rasmus has just managed to get himself a little bit of breathing room. That, that gap at the front, though, Malta Jakobsen is just edging it away from Julian Landau. He's now into three seconds, and it's eight seconds back to Louis Delatraz. Fastest lap of that car's race for Malta Jakobsen up into the 153s. Can't be matched that time around by Julian Landauer. Looking to see what the pace is for Louis Delatraz, who's still in traffic. 157s from him, they're pulling away from the battling Swiss. It certainly doesn't look like there's any fuel saving going on no. in that uh, number four car or the number 22 car. James Winslow not yet taken that drive through penalty. He'll have three laps to do so. But Rasmussen just getting past Christopher Hasse there. That's the leader, in, uh, no, second in GT. He's right there. There's, uh, there is Klaus Backler just in the turn ahead. There you are. That's the race leader in GT3. There's the second place car, the two white cars, white and yellow. White, black and red. As the battling P2 cars make their way through and do so safely. Do you wonder if Christopher Hasser is just sitting back a little bit, letting Klaus Backler just get away, and he's happy with that second spot. Maybe just thinking about championship long term, just gathering the points. It's certainly not been a walk away for them. There was that error that uh, saw them get the drive through and lost the lead. Ferruti got turned around, didn't he? I think it he was. Did. So there were two incidents for Santalok here. So either way, two very strong races for them. Great race as well for Pure Racing. Let's not forget the WC team this coming year with one time. Yes. So there is Mathieu Vazivier, Oliver Rasmussen, Lawrence yes. Hur, uh, Harry Tinknell. This is the battle for fourth ahead of them. About five seconds ahead of this train, Louis Delatraz. He's holding station about eight, nine seconds back from Julian Anlauer, who is dropping off the back of Milton Jakobsen. It's now almost four seconds. It is. He's just got the hammer down. Malta has. It's the last lap, it's the fastest lap of the race, 53-4. He's delivering when he really needs to. Bell at the moment holding off Fabian Schiller. Tom Gamble in the second Optimum car, giving Fabian Schiller plenty to think about. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest races on the racetrack right now. 
Fabian Schiller, Rob Bell, Tom Gamble. Rob Feeney as well. Rob right there, and, and Jules Gounon. It looks and to me as if uh, Matteo Caroni is trying to get involved in that uh, Maybe we can battle see as that. well. That'd be great if we can see that battle, because that looks really exciting. So, Vazivier beginning to edge away from this pair. Harry Tinknell looks to be struggling to hang on in there with this. Yeah, and here we are with Malte Jakobsen just coming off of turn 11 into 12. 17 minutes to go. The car looks like it's absolutely on rails. This came by what was a masterful call yeah. by the team. It was. They'd seen the incident on the blower straight away, they get in the pits. Absolutely, yeah. Beat the, the pit uh, entry closing for the safety car, filled the car with fuel and took a mighty leap forward. It's huge for them, really big. We've still seen this Oliver Rasmussen and Lawrence Hur battling away here, only about half a second between them. So. That, that's the thing, we talk, don't we, very often about this being a really team game. Here, we're talking about tenths of second that be, ten seconds to be grabbed by Melty Jakobsen over Julian Anlauer. A strategy call by the race engineer uh, absolutely cost, uh, got them half a lap. Yeah, Half huge. a lap. The pit, uh, the pit discipline by the team putting the fuel in the car in 53 seconds got that car out and quickly. It's a, a team whole game. team game. Complete team game. Here we are, we've got the GT battle here. This is for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Yes. And it's very close here. Everybody just looking for that little bit of performance. We've got, who's this? This is Fabian Schiller, yep. Tom Gamble, Brock Feeney, Jules Gounon. Big names, big names in the world of GT racing. Brock Feeney coming across some supercars in Australia. Yeah, so Roland Dane was uh, singing his praises earlier on when I spoke to him. Very complimentary about his skill level and how he's taken to this Mercedes AMG. A first time here as well, I believe, in this car. Yeah. Well, he's in among some sharks in this tank, isn't he? Well, guys who've got some serious skill and know these cars inside out, and he's just dropped in and taken to it. Well, look at it, there's this order at the moment. Klaus Backler, Porsche contracted factory driver. There's Christopher Hart, uh, Audi legend factory driver. Rob Bell, McLaren factory driver. Fab Schiller, AMG factory driver. Tom Gamble, a factory driver for McLaren. Brock Feeney, who's just been talking about. Jules Gounon, an AMG factory driver. Matteo Caroni, contracted driver to Porsche and on the shopping list for another major manufacturer in the coming year. Absolutely. Dan Harper from BMW's factory order, and that is just your top nine. Yeah. You see blue sectors, which mean it's the personal bests for a lot of these cars here in this GT battle. They're really switching the tyre on. The fuel's just coming down nicely. Only 14, under 15 minutes, 14 minutes to go. And just trying to extract every last bit of performance from those Michelin tyres. Backler just edging just hundredths of a lap away from Christopher Haas, who's got a rear gunner behind him in the shape of the 43 car, yep. Dennis Marshall. Five-second penalty coming to that car post-race. It's not for That's not for position in no. third. It's way further down the order. Forget the five seconds for the moment. It's all about uh, doing the best they can for this team. And if, uh, if I know Christopher Haas, I didn't... I'm thinking he's thinking long term, thinking about how this is going to be for the championship. Bagging those championship points, getting that another podium at second place will pay what, 18 points. Correct. That's huge, huge for their championship and building towards Dubai. Because they know they need to get those, those points in the bank. And it's all about winning that, that invitation to Le Mans for their team. Uh, you've got to say as well, I said out loud in GT3, Five race series may not be the best strategic move to win both races. No. There is the matter of the way in which performance is balanced in this class. Exactly. And they have not dominated as much today as they did yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Oliver Rasmussen is being warned for track limits, turn 14. Seeing CD Sport, Fabian Laverne, he is now the Pressure is going to be off him somewhat. James Winslow has not taken that drive-through penalty. 
maybe he's going to do that right towards the end, see if he can just keep applying that pressure. I'm not sure of the regulations here and how quickly he has to serve that. I've got a feeling it is three. So he's got to do it now. CrowdStrike Racing by EPR. Melter Jakobsen, the young Dane, leads this race now by almost five seconds, edging away hundredth by hundredth, tenth by tenth from Julian Andlauer in Proton Competition's number 22 car. Louis Delatraz, eight seconds back in third, the race winners yesterday from 99 Racing. And uh, there's a five second gap to the man that tortured him all the way to the line of the red flag yesterday, Mathieu Vazivier from AF Course from the number 83 car. Here's Malta going through that section there in turn seven and eight. Very smooth. It's one of the things I just noticed about his driving when we were watching him just before, is just how smooth he was, sort of showing the car the corner, delivering it through, and then getting on the power off the corner. It's very, very precise, unflustered. Yes. Absolutely unflustered. Smooth. And, yeah. A long, a long chat with Melter at the end of the European season. We are talking about uh, the year so far. He's clearly had an amazing uh, season, showing off his talent. Lost the title in the P2 Pro after a run through the field by 0.6 of a second. Wow. Uh, amazing run there. He was very it. honest about He's made his mistakes this year. Yep. He's learning. But that's good. It's good that he's, absolutely. he needs to make those mistakes and learn from them. Grow as a driver. And, uh, He's just still nailed to the floor in terms of his outlook and super kid. Unbelievably focused. Uh, yes, but still hasn't lost that kind of humility that right. uh, the drivers that the fans really love. Yep. Engages well, he's an incredibly well mannered young man. But my God, is he fast. Yes, he is. He is. And, um, to be the other part of this, by the way, beloved by everybody that works with him. At, uh, we see Mo Smith, one of his bronze driver uh, partners to the title in 2022, comes to many races around the world. And if you're looking for Mo Smith, just look for Melty Jakobsen. Right. They will be together and having fun and a laugh and enjoying their motor racing. And it's a delight to see it. He is going to be a big part of our sport for some time. Yes, he is. He is. Seven seconds up now and a mighty leap forward for Melty Jakobsen. Ten minutes to go. Delatraz is the one that's sort of on the move and he's closing in on uh, Julian Adler. He is indeed. 5.8. Lawrence Hurt, still pressurising uh, Oliver, uh, uh, Oliver Rasmussen. Now he's taken all right there, but can't really do much on the pace against this pair. No, Oliver Rasmussen is going to get another warning for track limits there in turn six if he carries on like that. He needs to just be a little bit careful there. Also getting a warning there is Rob Bell. Fabschiller dropping back from Rob Bell and is under pressure still from Tom Gamble, Fabschiller. Brock Feeney right with Tom Gamble as well. Yeah. Some cracking stuff in GT going yeah. on here. Again, it's, it's not decided at all, is it? Chris Harzer still under two seconds back here. If he's got anything left, now's the time. Nine minutes to go yeah. if he's looking for the race win. And as we were talking about, is that is that it? I mean, it's always great to get a race win, but long term, you've got to be thinking about where this is going for the full championship. Yeah, let's see if uh, anything else develops here in this GT battle. This is sort of third all the way through to like eighth. So it stayed full dry. We have had safety car interventions for a couple of LMP3 cars in trouble during this race, but it's a far cleaner race. Some cracking action, multi class action as well. Seeing also down a little bit further down in the GT battles. This is in 10th, 9th, and 10th, and 11th in GT. Three cars very close together. Yeah, Bent's up right with Dan Harper oh, right. there. Exactly. And uh, Bent's times at the moment pretty dark good as well. We've got a pair of GR Racing's 86 Ferrari in that battle too. Might have gone on a little way off that. Let's see dip into beyond the top 10. The Pure Racing's class backless pace has been good since that restart. It has, it has been strong, and I just think that these guys are sort of, you know, just trading blows here, but not really making any headway. Harza is closing this gap a little, you know. 
tenth here, a tenth there. 1.5 seconds now. Has he got enough? Between three and four laps left. Yeah, it's seven and a half minutes to go. And, well, catching is one thing. Passing the likes of yeah. the quality of class battler. It's going to be tough. You, know, you look at the rear end of any GT3 car with the big steam runner tyres and the big wing. They look wide. Trust me, you ain't seen nothing yet but until uh, Chris Arza catches him. <laughs> then you'll see it get wide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's also it's also the risk, isn't it? Yes. You know, trying to get it done. You know how much you're risking it. Uh, you go know, just bank the points. Winslow, James Winslow has now uh, come through pit lane. Seeds second place to Mina Stefan. So the Breton Racing car uh, that is 10 seconds back from Fab Laverne in the CD Sport car that looks at the moment on the way to a win for the reigning champions. This is Gunon 37 car. That Fighting is, with the 84 EBM. That is off, the, that's Earl Bamber, but not on the same lap. Yeah, those two will just be having a bit of fun. Absolutely right. Yeah. Brock Feeney here, though, very much in the mix. These battles aren't done. No, they're not. This is the Almanar Racing, Fab Schiller in fourth. He's dropping a bit off Rob Bell a little here, is Schiller. Tom Gamble in contact, still there. As is Brock Feeney, and Matteo Caroli has caught them now. Yeah. So Caroli. In terms of the pace, is the man on the move, but has he got enough left to get with and by them? That, remember, is a car that had Neil Point yesterday. We'd say to Ontario Sale this morning, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, this season could hand you back a bucket of points. Well, there's three cars ahead that are there for the taking if you can grab them. And Tom Gamble is there just trying to hang on to the back of uh, Fabian Schiller. He's got a little bit of damage on the nose there. I'm not sure if that's upsetting the aero balance of the car. It's just not quite helping them with their long run pace. Not quite the same uh, performance as the long run pace from Rob Bell. He just seems to be edging away. Rob is uh, extremely experienced. He knows his stuff. He's just supremely experienced in that McLaren. The more experienced of the Bell brothers. The slightly Northers. better looking one, would you say? It's difficult. I mean, it's, it's hard to pick now. You're dealing it, with really? quite a low bar, in fairness. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But uh, by the way, both super guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love them both dearly. And um, Rob, been around the block, won his first sports car race in an Aston Martin DPR line. So I think a Formula Renault V6. Yeah, I think. Took a race from the Nürburgring. I, I've literally never heard of him. <laughs> and, uh, you kind of think you saw the quality of that run, and uh, you knew you got someone really special in that car, and he's been pretty special ever since. Absolutely. It's a feather in McLaren's cap to have got him and kept him. Absolutely. The development as well as the racing of their uh, customer racing, as well as uh, factory effort, machinery, and. GT3 as well as the work he's been doing in the background of GT4 and GT2 uh, spec cars. Well, that car never did make it to the track. Right. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know what, Graham, I think you're right. Again. Christopher Hasser is, you just mark that down, that's three. Yes. Uh, Christopher catching Hasser him. is slowly but surely catching Klaus Bagler. He's just slowly reeling him in. Is he going to have enough time? We are four minutes to go here, four minutes. Cairoli is right with Brock Feeney now. That is a battle for sixth place. Four minutes to go there, that's two racing laps. Yeah, it is. A matter of just exactly where the leader is on track at the moment. Melty Jakobsen, by the way, is seven seconds ahead now. Louis Delatraz just two seconds back. Yeah, he's going to be just, just almost can I get there, can I get there, can I get there. Yeah. Lawrence Hurst still right with Oliver Rasmussen for fifth place. It's going to be these down points that matter. It's down to just 1.2 seconds between Delatraz and Adler. Belting and that's what we need to be seeing. Lawrence Hurst, yeah. Lawrence Hurst made it by Oliver Rasmussen. He's made it by. Yes. Oliver Rasmussen just made a mistake there. There's two contenders for the podiums. It's uh, Milton Jakobsen with Rob Bell just behind him. A couple Bell. of laps to go for this car. Indeed. Two more laps. This lap and one more. It's one of the things when you're watching 
Malta Jakobsen just build a lap. This is, you know, not, he's still under pressure here, but he's just clicking off, clicking off the laps. Yep. Which is where he's placing the car on the racetrack and how he's he's using the curbs, what he's doing. It's just, it's intelligent. And that is something big that you need from every great driver. And we've got uh, the battle for second underway now because Louis Delatraz has caught Julian Anlau. They are in traffic, that's how he's caught him. Making their way through the gaggle of GT cars. There is Delatraz. Yes. There is Anlauer. And it is that's the very, gap. Very, very close. We're going to see a grandstand finish here between the 99 and the 22. And he's looking away. He's just got that car in between them. And Lau has just got past think, the yeah. optimum McLaren. And it's whether Delatras is going to be able to get past the McLaren. Yes, he is as they come down and into turn 11. And it's just running wide there. Did bottom the car out. Uh, Oliver Rasmussen, by the way, is struggling a little here, I think. He's been caught to by Harry Tinknell for sixth. Gap has sort of halved. See the way Delatraz just drifting the car off of 14. How's it going to be when he gets on the brakes into turn 15? It's the 22 feeding it in, and this is going to be, I think, the last lap. I think you're absolutely right. It's a minute and 15 seconds to go. We last go. lap is called. Melter Jakobsen, 7.2 seconds to the good. That should be enough with Louis Delatraz. Well, you can see, we don't have to call it. It's uh, three quarters of a second. Matt Vazivier is not going to make it to this group. Just watching for any mistake here from Andlauer. And how is he going to be able to get it through and off of turn two and three? Is he coming through? Has he still got himself? That's the APR car. That's the APR car. Behind them are the GT3 race leaders. So this will be the last lap for them too. Yeah. Just coming over the rise there, and it's about a second and a half. The gap between Haas, it's just come down again, 1.2 seconds. Yeah, seeing Bolter just coming through and into seven. Again, he's just, it's almost like he's just clicking off these corners, just nice and smooth, nice and easy. We're hearing all kinds of things in the car right now. Is that right? Is this right? What was that noise? Does this feel okay? Ten seconds on the clock, but this will be the last lap. Yep. Jakobsen has managed this beautifully. Delatraz is only a tenth behind Andlauer. Uh, is, he, is, he, uh, is he behind him or is he alongside him is yeah. the point? It's just how close is that in second and third? Super close. It's, it's still about a tenth. Malta is just winding his way off of well, we'll turn 14. Well, we'll see him at the background here as they clear the final turn. That is not the second place battle. No. But here is Melter Jakobsen, oh, the number four crowd strike by APR. Orica will take the win at the second round, round two, the four hours of Sepang here in Malaysia with Colin Brown and George Kurtz. Masterful strategy at the end, looking at the background. He's got he, has, he has done it. Delatraz is through to second. So it's a first and second place finish. That's the delight of the two other winning drivers. Wow. So Jakobsen takes the checkered flag. Louis Delatraz takes the second place. Julian Anlau third. And it is Klaus Backler delighted to take the win for Pure Racing. It's 0.947 of a second at a Christopher Haase. Pure Racing Porsche from Santa Lock Racing Audi. Rob Bell brings the uh, Optimum Motorsport number 27 McLaren home to complete that podium. In LMP3, Breton Racing a home in second, Cool Racing a home in third. We'll have to wait for just a few moments for Fab Laverne to complete the win for CD Sports. Great stuff there from the number four crew. Great last few laps there from uh, Louis Delatraz. Oh, what a to, move. Uh, absolutely. That'd be over. amazing just to see. Hopefully, we can see that replay back. Yeah, to well, overhaul. He clearly did it in that last corner. Just must have had a huge lunge up absolutely the inside. Absolutely brilliant stuff. So, that last safety car through all sorts of spanners in the works for all sorts of teams. But ultimately, that was one on pace at the end against Julian Anlau or against Louis Delatraz, as it turned out. But also, one the on team. strategy. The, the call, call was absolutely spot on. And you know what? Um, 
Sam and Stu Cox and their team, it's a team of emotion. It that sure emotion is. right now is going to be punching the air yep. in absolutely... No doubt. No doubt. Well done to everybody involved in that. This is our LMP3 winner, CD Sports, the defending champions in the Asian Le Mans series. Fabian Laverne comes through to complete the win. Round the final turn, he's the last car on track, and it will be the winning car in the junior LMP class. LMP3 rumbles to the flag, takes the flag, <laughs> and there well they done, go. Well Sport, fantastic. Great <laughs> stuff. Like Mick Hancock. <laughs> Great to see, delighted. So then, LMP3 winners, CD Sports, Michael Jensen, Nick Hancock, Fabian Laverne, and that completes our three winning squads with Melty Jakobsen, Colin Brown, here we go, our MP2 winners, and George Kurtz, who started that race for Crowd Strike Racing by APR, and Pure Racing with Klaus Backler, bringing home the number 91 car that he shares with Alex Malikin and Joel Sturm. Well, what a finish. All absolutely three fantastic. different winners from yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. And it looked to me, you look, look at someone like Louis Denetraz and the 99 Racing crew, you know, with about oh. 30... Oh, is that Nielsen? Worth. That is the Nielsen car. Rather remarkably, by the way, as we look at the 91 car, all three winning cars from yesterday finished second today. Yeah, yeah. extraordinary. For you in your stats. Okay. There we go. Yep. And, uh, a disappointment for Cool Racing with that uh, penalty dealt to them late. Yeah, it's but with, with, like I was going to say, with 99 Racing, they would have been an hour to go. They would have been thinking, wow, how have we, how's this happened with this last safety car? And then, or the second to last safety car. And then it came, that last one, and it really reset everything and it got them right back in contention. It and did. then just brilliant driving from Louis Delatraz. And that last lap, last corner lunge to get past Julian Andlauer into turn 15, made it stick. It's the sustained pace from, from Louis Delatraz that continues to impress. Mm -hmm. It's sustained pace and pretty good controlled sustained pace. Yep, not there's making no, those mistakes. No sense of panic about it from Louis Delatraz at all. There's no sense, there's urgency, of yep. course there is, yep. but he always seems to have it under control. You were saying about Milty Jakobsen, that smooth style that you, you tend to see from you know, a real quality driver, and the same Alan is Post, true. Alan Prost -esque. Yes, you know. same is true of Delatraz all too often. And there you go. Uh, familiar colours to fans of the Emerson WeatherTech Sports Car Championship that uh, done the business here in Asia as well, so winning on two continents. <laughs> very happy. Very Your happy racing there. Two will be very happy. And there, uh, run towards a potential championship win. Doesn't start here, but my gosh, it gets uh, points added to the to the uh, to the tally. Well, there is our winner, Melter Jakobsen from Denmark, with Colin Braun Great and George job. Kurtz from the USA. Yeah, there are three winning, winning drivers. There you go. And the car looked like it had great pace. Uh, the 91 Pure Racing crew all looked delighted. Look at that. Quite right too. Yeah. That, uh, that came, and came, it came well for them. Klaus Backler did a phenomenal job. Didn't he just? Yeah, really holding on without pressure there from Christopher Hasser. Great to see with Klaus. Klaus was in favour, then maybe a little bit out of favour with Porsche, and he's come right back into it. And he is now a very trusted pair of hands yeah. with their customer sport operation and career. It is, so. it is it's hard to do with Porsche. They are ruthless with their drivers. Ruthless. Uh, Great stuff. GD Sport as well will Thank be you. correctly delighted there. <laughs> it's one pro driver with very much two bronzes in that car. Yep. And that is very often the way to do it. Fabien Laverne is extremely happy with as that. As well he should be. Yeah. Excellent to see. Uh, I think that he was sitting there thinking, OK, we're going to have quite a battle here with James Winslow, but then that unsafe release yes. for that final stop. That was what did it. We saw it. Sasha Masson there. Yes, indeed. He'll be very happy with that victory for Porsche. Looks after the junior drivers for them. He does. Uh, here to look after the, well, until the end of this year, Bastian Boos, their current uh, junior driver, was part of the EBM setup, but also, you know, keeping close eye on what was going on with Julian Andlauer. Yeah. Well, that was four hours of action. All sorts of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action and drama. Let's go down with Claire, who's got the winners of this race with her on pit lane.
We have the winners of LMP2 here, Crowd Strike. Well, guys, for car number four, congratulations. Tell us these emotions. You ticked all the boxes this weekend. Yeah, it was a great, uh, good, you know, good day. Obviously, yesterday wasn't quite what we had planned, but this is more to uh, what we were trying to do. Great job by Malt and, and GK. Um, you know, man, APR guys gave us a really fast car, and yeah, it's great to execute it. This Crowd Strike car was looking good here in Asia for sure. And I, you know, after yesterday, it was just a great uh, bounce back by the team. Two of uh, the best drivers on the grid, and uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, have our first win here in Asia, and uh, we look forward to the next one. Yeah, first of all, it's my first race with this new team and with George and Colin as well as teammates. And yeah, they have done a super good job in Algar Pro Racing as well this weekend. So as Colin said yesterday, it was not exactly as we planned, but we will come back stronger now after this jump forward with a win in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I'll add something to, to that, which is it's his second race for the team. He raced yesterday. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive him that one. But first weekend. Come on. Splitting hairs. A oh, little, he's, a he's, he's, <laughs> Come on. I'm teasing. Yeah. But uh, but no, an excellent all team performance from CrowdStrike Racing by APR. 108 laps completed, nine seconds to the good of a charging finish for the 99 racing team brought home by Louis Delatraz. 22 Proton competition. Had to cede that second place with Julian Anla right at the end of that race and forced 83 from AF Corsa off the podium at the very end. Harry Tinknell uh, would come home fifth and sixth would be Decar Engineering uh, with Lawrence Fur. CD Sport take the win in LMP3. Had a Breton racing, great result for them in their first weekend in LMP3. And Cool Racing after that late penalty uh, will complete the podium, the race winners from yesterday. In GT3, Pure Racing's Porsche number 91 takes the win and uh, with a couple of issues for Santalot Racing, under a second the gap for the waste winners yesterday in GT3 with their Audi R8. Optimum uh, Motorsports, 27 McLaren, puts the 720S on the podium for the first time this season. Started four hours ago here at Sepang and a happy grid with happy smiling faces, including that of Bibendum. Uh, there's the management team behind the Asian Le Mans series and a great grid of 39 cars have been assembled by that trio and their team to get underway at 2 o'clock in the afternoon here in Malaysia. And when the lights went green, it would be Michael Dynan getting the power down in the TF Sport car and a more orderly procedure for the LMP2 cars through the tricky turn 1-2 combination be trouble but it would be further back on the grid as Douglas Koo had a great start in LMP3 but he would get tangled up being hit from the rear by Martin Conrad's uh, AMG and that would cause a little bit of bumping grinding and carnage uh, behind with a number of GT3 cars as we'll see here the uh, gaps closing and, uh, to nothing and it was bump bang and grind luckily no major harm done Lots of action of the wheel-to-wheel -wheel side. Not this kind of action wheel-to-wheel -wheel because it broke the wheels on both. And uh, both the Ferrari number 21 and the 66 Audi would effectively be out on the spot. The damage, as you can see, caused by the impact from the Audi that had missed its braking points. Great battling in LMP2, as always. In this case, between the 90 TF Sport car and the car run by the TF Sport team from 99 Racing. That car going to the lead at that point as Gilles Duquesne watched on steamy hot on pit lane. It's hot two on track with the AF Corsa car uh, making its way through in a battle with Proton Competition's number 22. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff between these two for many a lap. The AF Corsa car making it through over Rennie Binder. Binder will get that position back and it exchange again more than once. This was Paul Luke Chatin uh, making uh, his way through to take a position in the 55 car. So we've got a safety car for the recovery of the somewhat broken high class racing car. Late in the race, and there's all sorts of dramas in the pits. Overtake the safety the car. Safety car uh, allowing teams to take advantage, teams to get big disadvantages. So one of them was the leader, the 99 racing car that had to come in for an emergency service. Their late pit stop would push them further back in the order and back into a battle again, as we saw yesterday, with the AF Corsa 83 car. Louis Delatraz doing battle with the car. 
until a second safety car, this time for a big shunt for Josh Bruton that took out the 65 Vipanisa racing car. That more or less reset the field, but it was as this happened that the decisive moment came with a great strategy call from Crown Strike Racing by APR that put their car to the front of the race. Back to green and bumping and boring throughout the team. That was our LMP3 leader at the time. They would get the win courtesy of a late penalty for yesterday's winning uh, CD Sport car. The four car would come home to win. George Kurtz and Colin Brown delighted. CD Sport winning the LMP3 case, uh, class and pure racing, edging home Santalot yesterday's winners in GT3 for a Porsche victory. Well, back behind the podium, Ollie, and some happy faces. Rob Bell there. Yes. Uh, Ollie Milroy. And, work, uh, been working. Rob looks like he's been working. He looks a little bit red. But it's been hot work out there in that uh, Optimum McLaren. But it is uh, great to see the behind scenes shots here. So Ahmed El Harty there getting himself ready for the podium. I'm sure he's uh, been congratulating. Louis Delatraz for those last couple of laps there. Really phenomenal performance. It's coming together two families here, you know, the ACO and SRO, with an awful lot of the, uh, the teams. Uh, with GT cars coming from around Asia and around the world, Ollie, um, and the LMP cars, of course, coming from what? The IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, the Michelin Le Mans Cup, the European Le Mans Series, WEC for that matter, Absolutely, yep. as well. Coming together in this kind of cocktail that's just really worked this weekend. 39 cars, a grid of high quality. We've had great racing. And phenomenal racing. And um, you've really seen the talent of the teams, the talent of the drivers, and then really adjusting to those new machinery that they're driving and competing with, as well as those teams that are maybe running those cars for the very first time. Much better race today in LMP3 between yeah. those cars. A couple of big incidents, and hopefully cars and drivers yeah, the all okay. The car really did. Did look really yeah. quite banged up. Great racing, great racing in GT3 throughout the field, up and down the always, field, but we yeah. always see that. Yeah. Uh, fabulous weekend for Santalot Racing, great end of the weekend from Pure Racing, yeah. but again, phenomenal racing in LMP2. Really, really fantastic. I was sitting there looking at the, actually the timing screen and seeing Harry Tinknell down there in, in sixth place. I'm just wondering if they just got that call just slightly different and then they'd actually managed to get them into the pit lane, then I think it would have been a really amazing race at the front there, an extra car. So uh, this is the scene behind the podium. Cedric Viat, our event, I think event director is his uh, uh, title here. But uh, the man behind much of the organization of uh, the events around the world, Benji from SRO. Uh, yeah. Benji of old as the, uh, the MD, I think he was, as the British GT Championship with SRO and also looks after the GT World Challenge Asia. Now lives in Hong Kong. Julian Benji. Adler heading out. Onto the onto the podium there. He'll be disappointed losing that position right at the end of the 22 cars on the third uh, spot with Jojo Roda and Rennie Binder. Strong run from those three. It will improve. Yeah. Win yesterday for the 99 racing crew of Ahmad Al Hati, Nicky Mazapan, and Louis Delatraz. Uh, they'll be reasonably happy with the second. After oh the, no, I think the that they will be. They, they will be really very, very happy with that second but spot a great, from where they were. A great win, um, and a, as we said, a full team performance from the number four crowd strike racing by APR car. George Kurtz, Colin Brown, and Melta Jakobsen take the win in the number four Orica, and we'll wait for the national anthem of the winning team. And now please ride on the national anthem of Portugal. And now we gladly invite Mr. Lachapit. So the national anthem of Portugal becoming quite familiar in LMP2 with the triumphs of Algar Pro Racing. It's certainly one we've been hearing quite a lot in the Asian Le Mans series in recent years, as well as in their drive for the European Le Mans series 
uh, this year. Could this be the first step on a championship run from that squad? So I'm just watching Colin Braun there on the podium. He's already got he got the trophy in his hand and he's put it down and he's like priming his priming his champagne. He's played this game before, he hasn't has, he? He knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's been hard work for these guys this afternoon. It is stiflingly warm. It and is again, very, that very humidity. Hot. You can see on the faces there's real fatigue there. This has been a four-hour race, which is a long race anyway. It is. Add in the weather conditions, the prevailing weather conditions here in Malaysia, and trust me, that's been a, a day of endurance for everybody yep, concerned. Malta is very fit, Colin is very fit, and they are feeling the heat, no doubt. But uh, that's the podium for what has been an excellent LMP2 race uh, for race two here yeah, in Sepang. Here we go with the champagne. Champagne starts. Oh, there's George Kurtz. He's opened the champagne bottle before. Yeah. You can see that. Well done, George. <laughs> Great to see. We like a happy podium. And uh, the great thing as well, Ollie, is there were three or four other teams in contention for that podium. This is yep. an 11 car deep. So um, any, uh, you know, whether, you, whether you're looking at the 83 car, the 3 car, the 55, the 30, the 90, you know, the, the 25 and the 44 and maybe the 24 have just been a little bit off. 43 points then for 99 Racing after a win in the second place here. 33 points, just 10 points behind for CrowdStrike Racing by uh, APR. AF course is 83 in the hunt there with 30. D-Car Engineering and Proton Competitions 22 car with 25 and a race win away from the top of the points uh, scoring for the 55 Proton Competition car. It is Ahmed El Harty, Louis Delatraz and Nikita Mazapan who top the points uh, with 10 points of a gap over the winners today. Colin Brown, George Kurtz and Melty Jakobsen. It is all to play for. Yeah, completely. Remember, it really is. There are 78 points still to come. Yep. Well, that's LMP2's podium done and dusted. Well, let's go down to Claire, who's got this time the LMP3 winners from CD Sport, and I've no doubt a very happy winning crew there too. All right, we have car number two, CD Sport. Congratulations, guys, for the MP, uh, LMP3. Well, what are the emotions running through right now? I mean, you've had a pretty clean weekend. Well, utter relief. We've had such a tough season, and to come here and to be so competitive and to win the second race, we're absolutely stoked. Fabio Laverne is the man who's done all. He's done all the heavy lifting. He's been absolutely peerless. He's coached us really well. So thanks to him and the whole CD Sport team who've given us an excellent car. Fabian. Yeah, it was, uh, was amazing. I mean, uh, Michael and Nick did uh, an amazing job. No, no mistake. And then in the end, I had a, a good gap, and then I lose everything with the safety car, but I was ready to fight, you know. There was no way I was not going to have this win, so I'm so happy. I'm, I'm, I just want to send uh, I love you, Ambre and uh, Lynn, my two daughters. No, just thanks to the team, they gave us a brilliant car. They worked so hard the whole week, and uh, we're really, really happy with the results. So, yeah, thanks to CD Sport. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see. Yeah, happiness there, and, and great to see them all recognising the team effort that goes here. So in third place, and I've no doubt disappointed yesterday's winners from Cool Racing, James Winslow, Alexander Bikansov and Danielle Frost. Again, very quick today. Great result for Breton Racing in their first weekend in LMP3. Dan Skostopola, uh, Hulan Gerby and Vinay Stefan. But the winners, as we saw there, uh, Michael Jensen, Nick Adcock and Fabian Laverne. And that was good fighting talk from Fabian. I like yeah, to see that one. Exactly. Yeah, he's a feisty character and it's good to see he's, you know, smart, but, uh, you know, that right amount of aggression. I was ready to fight. Yeah, exactly. That's what we like to see. We got used to hearing that uh, national anthem uh, from Spain last year. We're hearing it again now. So both the Iberian nations uh, are already topping podiums. Yep. We're going to have a brand new anthem for the final podium, but it's Stefan Mattel that gets the honours to hand out the LMP3 trophies. Great to see Stefan here. Yep. He's got a big race next week in Abu Dhabi with the Golf 12 Hours to come. I was uh, saw him earlier on today, actually, Stefan Mattel. Yes. Do you know why I saw him? Go on. In the gym. Was he really? Yeah, you weren't there. 
Oh, I see you then. Oh, is that uh, oh, oh, this morning? Of course. Four o'clock yeah. this morning. I forgot you go there early morning, don't you? The problem is I need so long, I've got to get up there much earlier. Okay. I don't get this toned without effort, you know. It's, mainly, it's amazing the stuff that comes out of your mouth. It's a mainly biscuits. Mainly the stuff that goes into my mouth. That's the problem, <laughs> to be honest with you. Mainly biscuits. But uh, a happy, for the most part, uh, LMP3 podium. I say Cool Racing will be disappointed with the uh, the penalty at the end. But we saw it happen. There was no doubt in my mind that was an unsafe release. They need to they need to work on their champagne game here. These guys need to look at the uh, the P2 podium. Quickly, they got things going. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid beat for the punch there as well. Cool racing. There needs to be some kind of in-house training with yeah, Nicolas Pierre. Yeah, absolutely. He sprayed some champagne this time. No doubt. But uh, yeah, joy for CD Sport. Pleased for them. Yeah. And Breton Racing. Always good to see a debuting team and a debuting driver, indeed, doing as well. CD Sport. Three points is the, the the gap then. So it's next to nothing out of Cool Racing. Breton Racing in the hunt as well. High class racing, it's just not gone their way. No, it hasn't. Them. But with cool racing, I think that they'll be sitting there thinking, okay, is, it has not been great today, but we've still scored well. Yes. Uh, what we've got here is a championship fight, mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt. So 43 points to 40 to 33 in the team's trophy, in the driver's trophy, of course, Fabian Laverne, we heard from him, Fighty Fab, I think we'll call him, Michael Jensen and Nick Adcock lead the championship. Uh, Alexander Bikantsov, Daniel Frost and James Winslow, second, and... Uh, Skoshtopoli, Dan Skoshtopoli, Julian Joby, and Malia Stefan, third. Let's go down uh, to the pit lane again. Claire has got uh, Joel Sturm from the winning team Pure Racing at GT. We're here with car 91 Pure Racing. Congratulations on that. Now you guys came through with a strong finish. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty good race for us. Uh, after yesterday's disaster with the uh, safety car, we had a bit more luck today. Um, so yeah, it worked out for us and uh, we're really happy. Congratulations. Thank you. They should be delighted with yeah. it, uh, and it's it's great. What's always good to see at the start of a season and a, and a race that sometimes deals you those blows is a bit of a shake-up in the order. And we've already seen what's happened there with LMP3. We've got a really open championship. It's pretty open as well in LMP2. It's just one good or bad result away yeah, it from is. a turnaround. There is uh, Rob Bell. Looks younger every day, I think. He sure does. He certainly looks like he's he's done a stint. He does, and yeah. uh, that was cracking stuff from Rob. Yeah, had it was. To fend well off, done. Had to fend off real quality at the end of that race. Holly Milroy, there we go. Another podium for him in the Asia Le Mans series. It's uh, he must be getting up there with his the amount of podiums he's racked up. He might, he, uh, you know what? The, the old time front. You're absolutely right. Team AAI back in the day, uh, he was a regular with, and now with Optimum. And by the way, big up Mark uh, Ratcliffe. That was a great effort from him yep. to keep them in the hunt in what was Kept a it clean. feisty, feisty race. It was. Santalot Racing, great run again from them. Uh, slight lack of discipline cost them, uh, cost them a win potentially. Yeah. But, uh, Mr. Ferruti really, was very quick again. He was. Christopher Harzer and Shield Magnus. Uh, all played their part, but no doubt about it, it's the win for Pure Racing. Alex Malikin, Joel Stone, we heard from, and Klaus Backler, uh, the Lithuanian team, uh, take the win. And that is the national anthem we are going to be hearing. I didn't think we were going to be hearing that one. But there you go. But there we are. So we wait and, and hear the strains of the Lithuanian national anthem. I'm not sure I've heard it before. We're about to. <laughs> I do love it when another nation joins the, joins the party. <laughs> It's the same when we had uh, Team Tour and uh, Iceland coming to international sports car racing. It's just something nice about new. it. Because it introduces it to a new audience, and I like that. And yep. I'm sure that, uh, you know, there will be sports writers in Lithuania thinking, we've won what? Uh, and that's <laughs> that's great. That's really good to, to see. In pure racing, I think we're going to be around a lot of them. Yes, we are. Uh, like you say, they've uh, already got a place on the long grid through their... 
uh, class win for the Bronze Cup in the GT World Challenge Europe. They will get a second place on the long grid, courtesy of their collaboration with Monsai Racing and the WEC. Could there be an opportunity for three cars at the Lithuanian flag? That would be uh, um, unbelievable. Well, that would be a national story at their home. It certainly would. No doubt about it, the biggest race of the year. We, we all have to get them to explain why he's carrying a dinosaur. <laughs> because he is. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All these questions. So many, too many. So, so little time to ask them. So happy, great. happy, yeah. happy. And that was a great GT race. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Lots of bumping and boring. Uh, it certainly wasn't boring, though. No. Uh, so, and lots of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action right through uh, that, uh, that grid. And the biggest surprise for me, have we, did we have an AMG on the podium? No. No. Yesterday? Yesterday, no, because it was all Audi. All Audi. All Audi lockout. Coming into this, we thought AMG were going to be right there. In fact, the best they could manage was fourth place. Well, they've always been kind of in the hunt, and they've been there in the sort of top three, top four, top five, but then towards the end, they've just faded. 44 points then for Santa Lock Racing. That second place does retain the lead in the championship for them. Pure Racing back into the hunt and straight into second place here. Almanar Racing by Get Speed. First of the MGs, 24 points. Tempto Racing 66 with a retirement today. 18 That's going to hurt them. It is 27 uh, Optimum Motorsport McLaren and the 43 Santa Lock Audi on even points. It is Alban Vruti and Christopher Haza, Gilles Magnus that lead this championship from Alex Malikin, Joel Sturm, Klaus Backler with Alphaz Lanzabir, uh, Martin Conrad and Fab Schiller in third place at the end of our trip, our return to Southeast Asia. It's, it's been great fun coming back here. It's been inspirational to meet some old friends again and make some new ones at Sepang Circuit. It's been action-packed, hasn't it? Really it has. Right fabulous. from the start, lap one, turn one. It's really phenomenal. Eight hours of racing done, 12 hours of racing to go. The Asia Le Mans series is fully alight again. LMP2, LMP3 and, L uh, and uh, GT3 providing the thrills and the spills of racing here in Sepang. Dubai Autogrome to come, Yas Marina to come as well. And these guys will and girls will be regrouping and with additions to come in the UAE, more cars to be added to this grid uh, across the classes. Well, that's it from Southeast Asia for this season, for this year, uh, for the Asian Le Mans series. We've thoroughly enjoyed your company online and on the broadcast. And thanks very much to the entire prediction team, to the Asia Le Mans team, to you, Ollie Jarvis, uh, Jolly Jarvis, Ollie wow, Gavin, Ollie Jarvis. to Claire Jodek. I'm Ben Graham Goodwin. We'll see you in February. <laughs>